Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're calling this the chat slash possible listing show tonight, even though it's supposed to be a listing show. We will see how things go <laughs> and how everybody's doing. If you just want to talk for a bit, open book tonight. Anything anybody wants to talk about uh, reselling related is on the table. Hope everybody had a good week. Hope everybody's settling in for hopefully a very nice weekend. Uh, Beetle quick beetle comment because we usually start with that is i have a big show tomorrow in a town called sea isle new jersey it's a seashore town big outdoor thing like literally right on the beach we played it last year it was several thousand i think four or five thousand people show up it's uh very hot and sunny down there right now and it's supposed to be tomorrow too so it should be a really cool gig and then tuesday we're up in woodbridge new jersey which is uh another outdoor festival thing but it's kind of on a big like grass field community day thing we've played there like three or four times already um, always a really good turnout for that one too. And then next weekend we'll be down in Ocean City, Maryland. So there's a quick update on the coming week or so. We got three shows in the next several days and I'm looking forward to it. But before we get to any of that, it is Friday night. We are here to chat, to talk reselling, to list, say hello, Johnny, 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 welcome. I had the pleasure of, uh, taking part in Johnny's show this morning. He does a fantastic thing for the whole community. If you guys don't know about Johnny and his channel. I highly recommend you go out there, check him out. I will put a link in there as well, Johnny. But um, he does a wonderful thing. He's on every morning. I believe it's 8 o'clock Eastern. He comes on. I watch just about every day. It's just kind of a gathering of resellers. It's a great community. He had over 100 watches this morning, I believe it was, right? Like 105 people or so in the house. And he kind of opens it up. He, he um, helps people promote their channels. Really nice community. And uh, I had the pleasure, like I said, of, of checking in. And I said hi to a few folks and gained some subscribers, which is really wonderful. I'm very appreciative of that, Johnny. So thanks again. And I will throw a link to your channel in in a moment's time as I pull it up. But um, again, great. I know that and Johnny just got monetized recently, too. So congratulations on that. And this is his second go around on YouTube. I know he had a pretty big following um, and left and came back kind of brand new from scratch, I believe, at the end of last year, like December or January. But let me uh, just quickly put a link up there for Johnny. And I definitely recommend you guys check him out. It's just, it's a wonderful idea to go out there and, you know, put yourself out there every single day, every morning. And then I think you do some auctions and things in the evening. Is that right, Johnny? Let everybody know in the chat as I search for your, uh, your link here. I should have had that ready. Sorry about that. I didn't see you were in already, but um, it's really good stuff. And again, I just, just kudos to somebody who, you know, wants to promote other channels and build a community. It's a great community, as we all know. Us resellers are good people. Okay. Bear with me one second, folks. I'm sorry. I'm gonna pull this link up. It also has a phenomenal new, um, what do you call that? Like a icon or whatever, the uh, an emblem for your channel. I think it's outrageous. It looks really cool. So anyway, let me put this in so everybody can check out Johnny over on YouTube. There you go. Go check him out. Uh, how I recommend if you just want motivation in the morning, it's a great thing. It's just overall phenomenal idea, phenomenal concept, phenomenal execution. So thanks again, Johnny, for having me this morning. I really appreciate it. Deal finder, what's going on? Welcome, welcome. Andrew, how you doing? Actually, did you just write me a short time ago saying you found me on Johnny's channel? I think you did. And I'm very happy you're here. Thank you so much for showing up. Hey, Kim, how are you? Good vibes. Yes. Hello, hello. Good vibes. Kristen. What's going on? How you doing? Listing hats. Oh, that's interesting. What kind of hats? Like big fancy hats or ball caps? What, what do you got? Indeed, absolutely. I, I just threw the link in there, everybody. So click on that. If you aren't already subscribed, please do subscribe to him. And um, eight o'clock. Uh, again, Johnny, just if you're still there, I hope you're still there. Just let everybody know. Is it just Monday to Friday or is it seven days a week? I'm not exactly sure, but I usually do check it out Monday to Friday. He's on with a cheery disposition, 8 a.m. every morning. It's just a great place to kind of get your day started and get pumped up and talk reselling. So thank you very much. I appreciate it, Andrew. Yeah, we do these. Uh, it's funny. I don't know if you, you see the little thing going below my where I said, let's do some listing maybe. In recent weeks, it's been kind of an ongoing joke. I Conceptually, I have two shows a week. Monday night is the chat show. It's usually at seven o'clock Eastern. It's a proper chat show. Usually goes about an hour and a half to two hours. I have a co-host with me. 
Um, Mr. Travis Griffin, who has been unavailable for the last several weeks. He is confirmed for Monday, though, everybody. Good news. Travis is back on Monday. But uh, anyway, the times that Travis has been out, I've basically been doing a listing show on a Monday and a listing show on Friday, which is my other staple. Every Friday at 7, Friday Night Live listing show. So I have those two kind of in stone, more or less, shows, Monday and Friday nights. I'll even sneak in a Wednesday night, you know, whatever's going on. Most of the time I'm listing. And of course, I'm interacting and talking with people. But most of the time on Friday, it's an actual listing show. But the last, I don't know, how, what has it been, guys? Last two or three, we've done very little listening. <laughs> we did some listing on Monday night, which was refreshing. But uh, we wound up just getting into really great conversation with everybody. And that's totally fine. Uh, I'm always ready to list. And um, I know when I watch other people list, I kind of get inspired to list myself. And that was sort of the uh, the idea here when I was coming up with this idea of doing these live listing shows. Yeah, check them out. You'll find they're absolutely really cool. 50s vintage hats. Beautiful. All female? Male? Like fedoras? What kind of, Talk to me, Rosco. We want more information. 8.30, Monday to Friday. Okay, gotcha. Thank you very much, Andrew. Monday to Friday. You're snoring at 8.30. It's all right. He's on for like a solid, I, I think I was on until what, 10, 10, 15? So he's on for a good period of time. Yes, you did. And we saw the video too, which was really cool, Crystal. Uh, Crystal. Kristen, sorry. Yeah, we saw the video and I uh, put a link to it too last time. He will be back on Monday. Get a bunch of stuff going on on Monday nights. And I felt terrible because he always feels so bad. He's like, I'm so sorry if I could squeeze in a half an hour. I'm like, it's summertime. Don't worry about it. I know his kids were in town last week or something. He was going to spend some time with his kids. I'm like, perfectly acceptable. We'll be here. So he will be back on Monday. Can't wait to have him back. But yeah, that was a really cool video, uh, Kristen. All you guys were in the bins. with the and, uh, Travis was riding me. It was kind of funny. He said he had to put gloves on <laughs> before he dove in and touched all that stuff. You know, I've only been, I told, I don't remember if I told you guys on a show, but I was talking with a few people. My experience with bins is a one time, three and a half minute experience. And I'm not speaking to every bin out there, but the one that we decided to go to, which was the only one anywhere local to, to my wife and I, you know, where we live. Um, the second we walked in the door, literally the second my wife came in, we were ready to roll. The overwhelming odor of just kind of like a dank, musky, whatever other adjective you want to throw in, just a nasty smell, very uninviting smell. The second we walked in the door, we literally walked over to like one of the bins that were getting ready to wheel them out. My wife said, nope, grab me by the ear and we left. So that's my bins experience. I didn't even get to dive in. She was just so <laughs> turned off by the, the smell in that place. And again, I don't know if that has, if it was a one and done kind of thing, or it's just that place is awful. But um, we were so turned off by that. Unfortunately, we never returned. But I've heard a lot of people that absolutely love those places. Like Kristen does tons of videos and she's a bin diver. Uh, extraordinaire. So I think we just found a really lousy one personally. But I have no idea um, if that's, you know, a common thread out there with these other ones. Yeah, check out some reruns. Absolutely. Hey, welcome back, Johnny. Yeah, I was just... Uh, Introducing you to my group here. I'm sure most of them know about you, but I uh, wanted to make sure everybody, I threw a link in there for your show. I was telling everybody how we were on and it's 8.30. I'm sorry. I think I said eight, but 8.30 every day, Monday to Friday. Um, he's built up a wonderful community there. It's, it's a very, um, very positive place to be. And, you know, the fact that he encourages people to promote themselves, good people to promote themselves. And uh, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing he's got going over there. And congratulations on recently being monetized on the new channel. It's outrageously cool. Yeah, I mean, you're, you've are you probably been to dozens of them throughout the country, right, Kristen? But is it a common thread, sort of, that they're all kind of a little bit eh? Like, you're not walking into a you know a department store, obviously. But my wife, and it really was kind of dank in there. I don't know how to describe it other than saying it was a dank kind of, I don't know. It just hits you as soon as you open your door, the door to the place. And it's, you know, it's a turn off for whether you're going to somebody's house or a restaurant, right? If you smell something, it's just like, ugh. It's hard to get past that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they, I'm sure they do. Unique. Yeah, isn't that awesome? And he had just started. When did you start, Johnny? December, January? Right around the same time as me, actually. I started in um, February doing the show. So we're actually close to six months already. It's unbelievable how fast it's gone. You're quite welcome. Thank you. Probably don't want things that are low or touching the side. Yeah, I, I don't know. I When I tell you I didn't have a second, you know, she was... 
she called the shots and just said, no, we're not, we're not staying in this place. And it wasn't crowded or anything either. We were there pretty early. It wasn't like a mob scene. You know, I know a lot of those places, it could be a little competitive to say the least with people all trying to kind of grab the same stuff. And I mean, I've been in regular Goodwills and it's kind of the same thing, right? They, they almost smell like somebody's basement, like old clothes, not necessarily a bad smell, just kind of a, you know, experienced odor. Let's say, let's put it that way. Whereas this place bordered on repulsive, like as soon as you open the door. It was also summertime. It was very, very warm in there. I don't think they had the air on or it wasn't working properly, which obviously added to the aroma. Uh, well, enough of that. Anyway, I don't want to rip on these places, like I said. I, that's my one and only experience, and it wasn't a good one, unfortunately. But uh, not to say that there aren't tons of them that are fantastic. And if there are, Crystal. Uh, Crystal. Why do I keep saying Crystal? Kristen. I'm so sorry. Kristen. You should do a best of the bins video or something like that where you show different bins throughout the country because she is a traveling gal is Kristen CJ welcome welcome CJ CJ another person I have to thank from the bottom of my heart here I it's so funny you know when you see uh I put out my basket every morning or baskets and the postman comes and picks up my packages we've talked about that actually on Monday we had a whole conversation about that I am lucky enough that we have a decent postal team uh, that supports my neighborhood. We have one girl who's absolutely extraordinary. She's fantastic. And even when she's not in, which is rare, but if she goes on vacation, she'll drop me a note and say, look, uh, Julio is going to be filling in for me next week, whatever. I told him to come to your house. So knock on wood, we've had for about a year now, we've had wonderful experience with the post office as far as picking up packages. Well, uh, what was it, CJ? Yesterday, I guess, you know, they came at like three o'clock. There's a window, two to five, I'll say. They usually come and pick up my packages. So yesterday it must've been, I don't know, 3.30 or something. And usually my dog will bark, you know, when they, which dogs have a tendency to do. And that's my little alert. Up, oh, Poston must be here. Well, he didn't bark. And I was like, what's going on? So anyway, I go upstairs. Basket's empty, but there's one really small. I'll show you the box. This <laughs> looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? This guy is sitting in my basket where I wore all my stuff to be shipped. And my first inclination was, oh, my God, is it a return? I was angry. I never get returns. I mean, I just don't get returns. I know a lot of people do, depending on what you sell. It's 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 almost commonplace. But the stuff I sell, I very, very, very rarely get in return. So I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Had no clue. Turns out it was good old CJ sending me a gift, which was incredibly appreciated. It's a simple little dish. Do you remember on was it Monday, CJ? We were talking about this. That um insignia or whatever it is is for Piedmont Airlines. I was talking on a previous show about I used to fly Piedmont Airlines uh, down to Florida when I played baseball. We went to a, a like a spring training camp thing. And uh, I thought that was really cool and thoughtful. So thanks again, CJ. Incredibly thoughtful, incredibly unnecessary, but really cool. And I appreciate the fact that you thought of me. We had a, a brief conversation about it and CJ chimes through. But yeah, my heart, when I saw this other thing, I'm like, well, actually, my first thing was, oh, no, they forgot to take one of my packages because I use the same boxes. And then part two, when I realized it wasn't my box, I'm like, oh, man, a return? you got to be kidding me. But anyway, a million thanks, CJ. Thank you very, very much. We did the same thing, ex exited fast. Yeah, mine was, uh, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago. I don't really remember. I don't. It might have been the summer before last. I don't remember exactly. We tried to block it out. But it was, uh, it was, that's for sure. November 28th will be three years since you had your first channel taken away. January 14th of this year, you started this channel. Yeah, I remember you saying to the day, six months, 11 days. Congratulations. That's good work. That's dedication. That's what it takes, right? You don't give up. Yeah, top 10 bins. You're very welcome. Just tell them Jiminy Flip it sent you. It is a good idea because you have a lot of experience. And I think it would be a wonderful opportunity for people to follow you. You know, to see like your best uh, location. Not that you want to give away honey holes, as they say, but just, you know, overall aesthetics, you know, uh, which ones are the cleanest, which ones are the most abundant, stuff like that. Oh, I know for a fact he has, Deal Finder, because I, I watch every morning, pretty much every morning. Yes, you did. You mean, yes, you have. No, it was totally unnecessary and greatly appreciated. It's always fun. To, you know, I get a surprise gift like that was really cool. Thank you. And I will use it. 
Yes, I read that. Uh, this, uh, read, excuse me. I heard you mention that this morning, Johnny. You're going up to Connecticut. When is that taking place? This weekend or next week sometime? And guys, here is an early plea. If you wouldn't mind just hitting that thumbs up button for me, I'd really appreciate it. We are, thanks to Johnny's help this morning, I gained about 20 subscribers, which was greatly, greatly appreciated. And welcome to all you new folks um, joining me. Tomorrow, 10 o'clock, you're leaving? Oh, awesome. But please, if you wouldn't mind, just give a thumbs up. It does help the video. Helps, uh, helps you to push it out to other people that might be interested in this sort of content, as they say. That's awesome. Safe travels. Are you flying up? Driving up? What are you doing? I didn't hear the, the detail. Hey, Barbara, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Actually, Barbara, I think I saw you this morning in Johnny's channel too, right? But welcome, Barbara, again. Barbara is a frequent flyer here on the Jiminy Flippet Airlines. That's what I <laughs> Jiminy Flippet Airlines. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. So any uh, tales of woe this past week with eBay? We usually talk about eBay, but again, anything Etsy, Discogs, Amazon, whatever you guys sell on. Any tales of woe, any issues, any snafus, any system problems, any, you know, we don't always want to dwell on the negative, any good stories, any great sales. Talk to me, people. Talk to me. Save my voice. I got a big show tomorrow. Got to sing for a few thousand people. Who paid nothing to see us, so it's a free outdoor concert on the beach, which should be really fun. We had a, and last year we played, it was a 4th of July weekend, so it was especially packed, you know, because it was 4th of July weekend. They had a big uh, fireworks show afterwards, a lot of fun. Summertime is so much fun. Although I will admit, the outdoor shows can be, uh, you know, heat stroke is, is part of our uh, vocabulary, unfortunately, every summer. We all have to kind of monitor each other. You will meet them at 10, and after that, those who go live in Connecticut will have us go there to the honey hole. Oh, yeah, very cool. There you go. You were on vacation and had 10 sales. Cool. Over uh, what sort of a time period? Kristen, not Crystal. It's crystal clear that she is not Crystal. But 10 sales of vacation mode is impressive. <laughs> do you you ever get out east Kristen? you seem to mostly uh travel out west or maybe the midwest as far as you come you ever get uh, east of the mississippi it'd be cool if you can come out here maybe we can meet too do a little east coast meet up speaking of which my buddy travis is actually coming out to i believe he said boston uh very soon a week or two he's going to be out here so I would love the opportunity to go up and meet him. It's going to really be based upon my show schedule. We don't have any shows in New England till the fall. So it would be great if uh, we could do something. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting down there tomorrow. My wife and I are sneaking down a little early. We don't have to be there till like 2.30 or something, but we're going to sneak down early in the morning. Not early, like 9, 10 o'clock in the morning and try to just get some stroll along the beach action in. You know what I mean? Kind of take, soak in the atmosphere a little bit which will be very nice and relaxing. And then she could hang out. Uh, one of the my band members' girlfriends at her are pretty good friends, so they're going to hang out and just kind of camp out on the beach for a couple hours while we do all the grunt work on stage and set everything up, and then they can saunter in when the show starts. It's kind of nice. She deserves a break, that's for sure. My darling does. Yeah, that would be very cool. All right, CJ, thank you for letting me know. CJ is our uh, Secret Service agent here on the channel. One of several. Winna Crow also. Hopefully she'll make it in. And uh, Dawn Wright, another one. Hopefully she'll make it in. I'm sure she will. Well, aside from Kristen's great news about the 10 sales, anybody else have any, uh, like I said, I keep saying tales of woe or tales of grandeur they want to mention? Please let me know. Let the group know. Uh, here in my world was, you know, kind of mediocre as far as sales volume goes. It's okay. Nothing to write home, home about. Nothing to give up about. Somewhere in the middle. 
it's one of those uh, times of year for me personally where it's like, you know, the skies are going to clear up in about a month's time, probably early September. I think the reality, like especially after Labor Day, even though summer still goes on really until the 21st, but most people consider it fall already in the early to mid September and school starts up and all that stuff. And people kind of get back into a, you know, a more uh, at home regime sort of where they're not going to be out traveling to beaches and whatnot. So I'm hoping for a, uh, an uptick uh, come next month. And thank God, I mean, that's the one real huge benefit of having all these shows to do. If sales do take a little bit of a hit, financially, it makes really no difference for us because we're kicking butt with the Beatles show. So it's good timing for that. When sales slow down a little bit on online selling, I have the Beatles shows to kind of fill in that gap, which is very grateful for. Northeast is quite a trek for us. You were in Indianapolis. Okay. Well, Florida, there you go. My wife and I go to Florida multiple times every year. So if you do go to Florida, maybe we can uh, arrange something. If you let us know when you're going to be down there, I'd love to come down and say hi. <laughs> yep. Hey, Kelly, what's going on? Sales were slow this week. Had a glimmer of hope on Tuesday. But it was... Yeah, that's – I don't know if uh, – you're talking about the same thing as me, but I'm, I'm kind of banking on early September, especially post Labor Day, which is still uh, about a, a solid month from now. Right. I don't know the exact date, but it's usually like the third or fourth, something like that. Whatever Labor Day is. Um, so hopefully after that. Yeah, it looks like the fifth. Exactly. So a month from today is Labor Day. I'm hoping that starting September 6th, the proverbial uh, floodgates are opened over on eBay, Amazon, Etsy. And anything else you guys might sell on. But welcome, Kelly. Kelly, I uh, hope you enjoy it. The, the CDs went out this morning, Kelly. And there's a tracking number on there for you, too. Hopefully you get in a couple of days. But uh, Kelly was in my Whatnot auction the uh, day before yesterday, I guess it was. Was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? Yesterday. I keep teasing this video, which I still haven't released. I apologize. But long story short, like I keep saying, um, if you get a chance to buy compact discs out there in the wild, pick them up. And pick them up by the bushel. Because they do sell... I mean, I was auctioning off the CDs I auctioned off the other night were all just my own that I've had forever. And I have thousands of them along with tons of albums. And um, I just decided to, you know, I was looking at some interesting articles over on Discogs, which is a favorite site of mine. And uh, basically all the trends seem to be pointing towards a sort of a resurgence of CDs. It's one of those everything old is new again kind of things. And as each generation comes on, it becomes almost nostalgic, which is kind of funny to me. But you know, so now CD, and again, bottom line is they sound spectacular. You know, they really do sound outrageously good and they're portable. And my Jeep has a CD player that I take down to all these shows. So I'm always bringing like tons of CDs for the road trips. So anyway, go pick, that's my tip. Go pick up some CDs. They're so ridiculous. I'm sure Kelly will, will agree with me on my whatnot thing, but seriously, you can get them for a buck or two or less. And they're available almost everywhere you go to source. So pick them up by the bushel. Uh, make sure that they have not scratched up, obviously, and damaged. But don't be turned off by a scratched or cracked uh, plastic like these guys. Of course, I can't find an example. But you know how sometimes the uh, the case will crack? I have like 100 CDs right here. Anyway, sometimes the case will have a crack on it. The cases are so easily replaceable and they're very cheap. And a, a trend nowadays too is to get away from those plastic cases. They sell these like vinyl, uh, not vinyl, like a Mylar sort of a bag that accommodates a CD and the marketing material, like the cover and the back cover. And they fit, you know, the footprint is like one-tenth of a disc. So really good way to keep them uh, clean. And they'll last forever if you, if you treat them right. So go get your CDs, everybody. Andrew asked if we ever played near, you're near Quakertown. Oh, very cool. Um, we're playing in Allentown, which isn't that far from you. When am I playing in Allentown? September, I think. I'll give you the date. September 16th. We'll be in Allentown. That's probably the closest to uh, Quakertown, right? We do a lot of Jersey and Maryland and Delaware and Virginia, like shore towns this time of year. Um, we'll be in Woodbridge. Uh, that's that's too far from you. Woodbridge, New Jersey. On Tuesday this week, next week, excuse me. But yeah, check that out if you would. Uh, we're going to be in Allentown, Andrew. Love to see you. I think it's like, I don't even remember. I don't know what the venue is, but I will get back to you on that. I don't remember where it is. I just know, hey, Cameron, what's going on, man? Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> yep. A lot of fun. Good to see you, man. 
he bought 100 vintage hats while at lunch. No video of it, but you'll be selling them already on whatnot tomorrow. Oh, very cool. Now, just like we just had earlier in the show with uh, Kristen, Royal Squirrel, who's listing vintage hats as we speak. Hers are uh, uh, from the 50s. So, Cameron, tell us uh, the lowdown on yours. When you say hats, are they like ball caps? Are they women's ornate hats? What kind of hats are we talking about? And just how vintage are they? See if you can beat the 50s. You guys ever sell fedoras, like old fedoras? They sell well. We've had a couple of those come through. Oh, you're very welcome, Kelly. Cool. Yeah, it should be hopefully by Monday or Tuesday you'll get them. And Kelly is uh, just buying them to have them and listen to them. So I I love that. I love sharing. Uh, music's my life. Or a big part of my life. So I love sharing the music with people that appreciate it. Yes, yes. Karen is good people. I haven't even talked about whatnot yet, by the way, Cameron, but we'll get to it. <laughs> I brought it up this morning on Johnny's show briefly, but we will get into it a little bit. Always pick them up and they sell fast. Have the disc cleaning. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely, Johnny. See, Johnny knows. Now, if me and Johnny both say it, you could take it to the bank. Go buy CDs. They are they will never be cheaper than they are now. I've not it's shocking to see how unbelievably cheap you can get a, a really good quality compact disc nowadays. They were very expensive for many most of the most of that time since they've been out. And um, it's a sin. Like, I mean, not for nothing, the whatnots that I was doing the other night. I mean, I bought all those discs myself and they were like 15, 20 bucks a piece easily. And you're giving them away at an auction for two or three dollars. That's kind of hard to swallow sometimes. But like I said, in my case, these were just ones that um, I'd listened to a million times that I have and I have them all on record anyway. And I was like, time to uh, test the market. I, I, it was my first time doing CDs on whatnot. I've done multiple vinyl shows. I've done ephemera shows, but the CD thing was really cool. Oh, you can't? You loaded Deal Finder? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, uh, I will get back to you, Andrew. Um, shoot me an email, if you don't mind. I, if that sounds old-fashioned, I apologize. But an email, GeminiFlip at gmail.com. And I'd be happy if you just say hi, and then I'll give you the specifics about that Allentown show, because I, I, I apologize. I write this minute. I don't remember where it is. I don't know if it's like an outdoor thing, if it's an indoor thing, but I will absolutely let you know because it's not that far from Quaker Town. 80s, 90s, yeah, so that's not very old, but that's cool. Snapback hats. Look at this with the cool little graphic afterwards. Impressive. Those cat, I know the cat stuff is very popular, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't you talking about that last time, Deal Finder? Loaded is right, huh? Yeah, media is uber popular. If you ever got on whatnot, it's it's a great place to uh, it's a great place to to uh, get rid of some merchandise if you're literally to the ceiling with some of that stuff, and provided you didn't pay anything you know extraordinary for it, you can you can sell all sorts of media really really well on whatnot. Of course, you could do it on eBay and everything too, but maybe you cherry pick and pick the the ones that you think are more valuable. And you throw them on whatnot. Uh, excuse me, on eBay or Amazon or wherever you sell. And then uh, kind of give away some stuff on whatnot. You could bundle them up too, which is a good strategy. But I was happy. What uh, Kelly could probably tell me better than I remember. I think I had, I initially had 50 uh, records up, 50 CDs up. We only got through what, 20 or so? Because it was like an hour and a half with just 20 discs. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm not going to stay on for four hours. Unfortunately, I couldn't last night. But uh, it was really cool. So I'll definitely do a part two and a part three. And they're so simple to ship. They, they go media mail, even though Whatnot doesn't have media mail. But uh, Little Birdie told me they might have it as soon as next week, media mail. So look out for that, too, if you're on Whatnot. That's a game changer. If you can start shipping stuff media mail like you should be able to do, like CDs and DVDs and uh, records, it would be a huge savings for the buyer. Hey, Kim, when you sell off your own stuff, do you assign a cost? It goes, no, not really. Because I have no, I mean, I'm, especially it depends on how old the stuff is. My CDs and especially my records, but the CDs are 25, 30 years old, some of them. A lot of them actually older than that now. No. Who is me? <laughs> are you saying me? I'm definitely not killing it yet, but I'm doing shows and I'm doing multiple types of shows. And we're going to have a beautiful segue courtesy of, Chris, of uh, Kristen right there. Yeah. Go through them, Kim. Collectibles and comics, beautiful. Everybody loves comics except me. 
no offense to anybody that likes them. I just don't know anything about comics. I never got into comics as a kid, and I know it's such a ridiculously uh, popular genre right this moment. So if anybody does have comics, get them up before that bubble bursts. Unfortunately, there's a lot of ebbs and flows and, and everything, and uh, comics are kind of at the top echelon right now as far as uh, value and popularity, where CDs are way down. So it's a buying opportunity. Buy low, sell high. That's the philosophy, isn't it? I love sheet music. Absolutely. Cameron, I have a video on that media mail. Yep. Yeah, it's a good call. It's just, um, I mean, they give you a little discount. You know this, Cameron, right? And um, I'm sure uh, Kristen knows this. It's not like they're paying. If they, if somebody buys, like in Kelly's case, he bought, I think, 11 discs, 10 or 11 CDs from me. So his shipping wasn't outrageous because the first one they get you for whatever the price is. And then every other one, I think, is only like $250 a piece. And unfortunately, whatnot. Us as the whatnoters or the auctioneers, we have no control over the shipping costs. Like I can't, you know, on eBay, if you put up um, a certain shipping amount, right? Let's say it's like, it turns out that it costs a lot less and you want to pass on a little bit of that discount to your buyer just to be in that, well, combined shipping. You don't have that option on whatnot. You put in a series of, of uh, items, you have to put in a, a, a weight and a size and you go into these pricing buckets, which by the way, you never see on whatnot. I don't like that either. All the, the shipping stuff gets kind of paired off behind the scenes and whatnot probably always wins. They keep any overage. But anyway, I'm not ripping on whatnot. I love it. I just wish their shipping was a little more transparent. Their shipping system was a little more transparent. But I agree, Cameron. It's a, it's going to open the floodgates with records, certainly, because records are a lot heavier than a CD. Um, almost any record, if it's packed properly, a regular LP is probably going to be right around a pound, if not over. And then it's putting people into that priority mail which is like eight or nine bucks it's expensive which is why it pays to buy uh, you know if you're gonna go and whatnot buy a bunch of stuff don't buy one thing you don't because it is no as free something you had you mean um your old merchandise is that what you're referring to like your own personal merchandise true that's true and I have, I mean, again, knock on wood. You, every time I say something, I always like cringe because I'm like, if I say, oh, I never get returns, you know, I'm going to get a return tonight, right? If I say something like that, or I never get this. Well, anyway, with I've, I've, had, I've had all really good feedback so far and whatnot. And I don't want somebody like leaving negative feedback off a bit on something because they got reamed with shipping. It's, it's completely out of our control. It's completely in whatnot's control. So I think that media mail thing would be almost revolutionary over there. If you ever consider... If you're ever considered with the shipping cost as a buyer, just factor into how much you bid. Yeah, that's a good point too. And in your case, Kelly, you're selling the majority of the stuff you're selling as postcards, from what I remember, right? Concern that that reads better as I considered. The person that does your taxes say you have to do the actual cost I paid or the current market value for cost of goods. It's just a mess and really good stuff. Yeah, that's that's good advice. And that's always at the end of the day, especially if you're making any kind of money on these platforms, go get yourself an accountant. Unless you happen to be a CPA yourself, uh, the best way to keep any, any keep the feds away and keep, keep yourself out of hot water and not make any mistakes and also even potentially screw yourself because there's a lot of uh, things you can claim as a reseller. But anyway, I highly recommend you go to a uh, accountant of choice. Do some research. Most of the guys will give you, or gals, excuse me, will give you, accountants are usually, like lawyers, they'll give you like a free 30 minutes or whatever to kind of talk about your specifics and see what they can do for you and shop around like you would do for any other commodity or product. Hey, CJ, welcome back. Anything, CJ. I mean, I have, this is just the, the ones I sold uh, the other night were just my personal collection. It was mostly for me rock. It was some blues records, even though I didn't even get to them but rock and blues, but I know just about every genre sells. I know uh, classical, believe it or not, does really well. There are some scarce CDs, believe it or not, too, that, that just weren't like produced as many as other ones. CJ, if you're interested, go to, uh, I don't know if you've been on Discogs, discogs.com, D-I-S-C-O-G-S.com. I sell on that platform, too. I also buy on that platform, and I have a uh, library of all of my own personal music kept within Discogs, which is a really cool feature of that, that site. But um, if you want to Go out there and just do a little research research, excuse me, on CDs. You can kind of sort by, you know, the, the highest price and see what the markets are. But that's a really long way of saying anything, at least in my belief, anything on CD is uh is good to find. And they're so dirt cheap. You know, just grab anything you can. I would do a high level overview, make sure that they're not, you know, remember I was saying like don't be too concerned about the uh if the plastics crack. 
with that said, make sure that the crack didn't damage the, the liner notes or anything. That That's something that could be a deal breaker potentially. Um, and maybe just a quick gloss over on the CD itself. Just make sure. they. The wonderful thing about CDs, unlike records, and I'm a record guy, but records require a lot of maintenance. They get dust on them. They get scratches on them. You have to really baby them and uh, keep them with great, great care so that they play at their optimal you know, ability at all times. CDs are a lot more robust. They can take a little bit of a licking and keep on ticking. Like if you see a scratch, not really a scratch, but like some smudge, some smudges and fingerprints and marks on a CD, nine times out of 10, it's not going to actually affect the playability because the out, outer portion of a compact disc, all of a sudden I'm giving lessons on a very common product everybody knows about, but what the heck? Like this guy is pretty much brand new. Look at that. But this plastic coating right here, it can handle some stuff. It, the, the music, the, the the series of ones of zeros and ones, the digital portion is protected by like a plastic coating. So that plastic coating, like I keep saying, can take a little bit of a licking and it'll still play really well. You don't want to see any like obscene scratches or anything in them. But most CDs, like I said, they, they really have a tendency to be in these. This is, by the way, go get this. I think this was like five or six bucks. I got a brand new sealed. Mr. Sinatra, live at the Sands, January of 66. He had just turned 50 with Count Basie and his orchestra. What a phenomenal record this is. Phenomenal. Brand new, five bucks. Anyway, there you go. There's the CD portion of the show. But go get them because, I mean, just think about if you had picked up a bunch of records, and maybe some of you have, I certainly have, five, six years ago when the vinyl market, maybe a little longer than that now, it's been resurging for like five or six years. But let's say, I don't know, around 2010, 2011, you couldn't give records away. People were melting them <laughs> or putting them up on the wall. They'd melt them and make candy dishes out of them or make clocks out of them. You couldn't give those things away. And now the, the market is just skyrocketed for vinyl, for vintage vinyl, for new vinyl. Well, you never know. You know, nobody would have ever predicted that when CDs came around. It was it was the opposite. CDs were the, the death nail for, for records, as I'm sure most of you remember. That follow me anyway, I certainly remember. And uh, you would never dream in a million years that they would come back, and not only come back, but basically spell the end of CDs with the streaming nonsense too. I'm not a big streaming guy. I don't even, I can't even tell you I really know what that means when people say they stream. I don't even know what that means. Like I just, I listen to whatever I want to listen to. I don't put it on the computer and stream it though. The only streaming we do in this house is like we have an Alexa in the kitchen kind of. So like if I'm cooking or whatever, or if my dad's in the, and we just, I'll play Alexa, play Neil Diamond radio. Cause my, my dad loves Neil Diamond. So if that's streaming, that's the extent of our streaming. But when I listen to music, you know, I grab myself a record and I put it on the record player. And I go, that was great. And then I put it away. <laughs> uh, and now I just screwed up my entire collection. But CDs, folks, CDs. Go get yourself some CDs. They're available in estate sales. They're available in antique malls. They're available everywhere. And they're, they're giving them away. You could buy bushels of them for nothing. Somebody I follow, and I, I really apologize, because if you're in the chat, I'm going to feel awfully embarrassed. But somebody just did a video recently I saw picked up a ridiculous amount of uh, 500 discs or something for 10 bucks. or maybe it was more than that, which is just ridiculous. Um, I don't remember who it was, but I watched a video recently about that. Somebody picked up a boatload of CDs for, for dirt cheap. And it's a great, I mean, even if you sell them for four or five bucks, you know, you're four or five times your investment. So, and they're super simple and much along the way, like Kelly and a lot of postcard guys out there that, you know, they, one of the best things about postcards, even though they're definitely long tail, is the storage element. You know, they're so tiny and they such a small footprint in your room or whatever. Whereas uh, CDs are kind of similar. You know, they're what? I don't even know what they measure. Actually, I should know that. They measure six by, like six by five. And they're pretty much flat. So you could pile a ton of CDs. They ship cheap. They, ch they ship media mail if you do sell on um, anything other than whatnot for now anyway. So... Anyway, CDs. I mentioned that Monday. I mentioned it again today. See, CJ, you ask a question, you get a 20-minute diatribe. Yeah. Make sure the CD is in the case. What's up, Rootin? Yeah, that's that's a great point. Sometimes you'll open up the case and somebody put a different disc in there. That's a good point. But it's one of those things, like if you're going to buy them, buy them in bushels, and maybe you'll get a couple of those, but hopefully the lion's share will actually be accurate. But it doesn't take much effort to just go bloop, bloop, like Rootin said. Just open it really quick, eyeball it. Just don't be turned off by the crack case. It's so easily replaceable. It makes the whole thing look like new, provided that the crack doesn't rip into the liner note. Be careful of that. 
him started collecting mid eight ladies. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Mid eighties was college days for me. And I didn't want, you know, it's one of those things where I had already had a heck of a record collection. I love music my whole life. So I've, I had hundreds and hundreds of records. CDs come out. Everybody's talking about them. Everybody was hyping them up too. You know, I, I thought it was going to be like a case where you could hear like the, the vocalist breath and you could hear these intricate details in the music that you've never heard before. And that was all a bunch of baloney. It's not true. It was just a really clean, neat sound, which is a little bit tinny to my ears initially. But the big thing was that you never had any of the, the record noise, the hiss. So that was kind of cool. And they were super durable, but they were also very expensive. But it was one of those things when I got one, I'm like, oh man, here we go. And I wound up having to rebuy everything I had on record. I wound up buying sort of on CD. <laughs> So I'm sure that was all part of the ploy. People would rebuy the same stuff. Lonnie's short. I'm sorry. I don't know what that means, CJ. Uh, no, I don't believe so, deal finder. No, it was just kind of a statement that, oh, I bought this, you know, ton of CDs for, for dirt cheap. Oh, uh, Lonnie's shed. Is that what you mean, CJ? Maybe it was Lonnie. Is that where I saw it? Maybe you meant to say shed. Um, I don't even know what his channel is called. Shed, shed flips or something. It's a husband and wife team in, um, I think they're in Louisiana. Shed flips. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, CJ. Perfect. Yep. That's what I saw it on. Yep. Yeah. Lonnie. Hey, Diverse Ventures, how you doing? Amazon seller app is probably the best for CD value. Yeah, that's a great point, provided they have, and most of them do, have a um, scan. Also, I want to talk about a great item to pick up. Do you guys have these things? It's just a barcode scanner. It works on just about everything. Amazon, 10 bucks, 12 bucks. You go into eBay. If you use the website, which is what I do, and you just go into the search field, click, 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 click. You go through a thousand of these things. You could also have them all put onto a spreadsheet if you want, and then go in and uh, look up each individual ISBN, not SBN, what is it called? Each barcode. Highly recommend that if you do any kind of business with stuff like that, with CDs, with anything with barcodes, books. What about a sealed CD that has a crack in it? Oh, without question. You mean the oh, the case? You mean the case, right? Not the CD itself. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, CJ, thank you. Friend of yours sold a Spanish CD. Yeah, uh, foreign CDs. Great point, Andrew, by the way. Remember uh, CJ was asking what you look out for, and I was saying there were some scarce ones. A lot of the foreign ones do very well. Um, you Again, do your research, but I know on Discogs too you could do that. Um, there are certain genres of music that are just scarcer and more sought after from a collectible uh, point of view. That's really cool, though. This was a short video. Yes, hey, welcome, Puddings. How you doing? Speaking of postcards, Puddings postcards. Oh, you, want, you saw it on Facebook. There you go, 500 discs for 10 bucks. I mean, you got to be kidding me. Oh, that's the one. Then he found 200 bucks in cash, right? Yeah, he's he, you know, and everybody was ripping on him. I don't. Why would he lie about that? He was like, he was going through a bunch of things, and he's like, you know, not only did he get a steal for getting CDs for a, a nickel, right? But he uh, was opening one of them, and in the case, he he went like this, and there was like five twenty dollar bills or ten twenty dollar bills that somebody stored in the case, which is actually probably uh, a common thing. People hiding money, you know, used to be under the mattress. Now it's in CD cases. So God bless him. Yeah, it's a great thing. See, look at look at Johnny. We're on the same page. Love this thing. And it's dirt cheap. I mean, seriously, I, look it up. This is mine is this is what mine is called. I own I've only had this a few months. Need them, net them. Little thing. Beep. You hit it once, it makes that boop boop sound. I zapped you. It's so cool. Hopefully I didn't blind anybody with my laser beam. Laser. But it is a great uh great product. 24 karat gold. Yes. Remember the gold discs? The dark side of the moon I had on gold. 24 karat gold. Yeah. What are the SACDs? Could you explain that to verse? It's like a, a higher end CD, right? I've heard the term, but I don't know what it stands for. Yeah. The cash in there. That was a nice little. 
So he actually made whatever the math is, $190 and got 500 discs. So it's hard to uh, top that. The uh, wing CD was uh, what on gold on a gold disc. I remember I had dark side on that. Did you just forget everything like men in black? I haven't seen that movie. Uh, the more you get to watch me, Cameron, you'll realize I don't watch movies. It's not intentional. I just, I'm not a fan of movies. So almost any movie reference that people make, it's embarrassing because I have no idea. People will put little quotes in unless there's exceptions. The Godfather. I'll go line for line with anybody on the planet. Um, a handful of other movies that I've seen multiple times, Christmas movies and things like that, but just not a movie guy. So I don't know. I don't know movies and people love movies. Super audio CD. There you go. Is it just a higher bit rate or something? Diverse ventures. Yes. <laughs> Johnny in the house. And thanks for spending some time here tonight. I appreciate it. 8.30 every morning, Monday to Friday. Go visit Johnny occasion. I put a link if you guys want to scroll up a little bit to the beginning of the chat. I have a link to Johnny's channel. He just recently crossed over that thousand subscriber, mythical, magical thousand subscriber mark, subscriber mark and he is being monetized. Congratulations. I hope to follow shortly. Oh, you need a special player. Cool. Karen. Uh, Janet, what's going on? I was like, Karen, what's going on, Janet? What's shaking? What do I always say when you say, let's see who knows music. If somebody says to you, what's shaking? What's the proper answer? What's the rockabilly answer to that question? Rockabilly records sell really well. Gene Vincent, stuff like that. I definitely don't know a Raymond in black either. I know ramen noodles. But yeah, please do hit that thumbs up. Thank you very much for pointing that out, Cameron. I don't want to beg all night. Sounds silly. But I, I do appreciate it. If you guys are having fun and enjoying the conversation, because I sure am. If you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up. Ramen. Yeah, like, Raymond noodles. Are... <laughs> Everybody knows Johnny. Everybody certainly knows. Jan uh, close, close. The response, again, for uh, for a free subscription to the uh, Jello of the Month Club, what's the answer? When somebody says, what's shaking? You're supposed to answer. I'll give you about two more minutes. I, I actually answered this to her last time she wrote that. <laughs> a whole lot of shaking going on, but that's not the answer. Shake it like a Polaroid. <laughs> that's funny. Shaking all over, great song, but that's actually not the answer. I knew Rootin would have a sophisticated musical answer. Bacon, what's shaking bacon? Not rhymes. Don't, 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 don't. Nope. Grateful Dead Disco, ladies and gentlemen, avoid it. Now, the answer is ain't nothing shaking like the leaves on a tree. Look it up. Great song. But good to see you, Jan. Back to this, I'm, I am intrigued by this uh, Super Audio CD. How would one distinguish a Super Audio CD in the wild, if I might ask? Does anybody know? Do they look any different? Do they have like some sort of um, designation on the case or anything that says SACD? I don't know if I've ever seen one in person. I've heard of them, though. And I definitely, unfortunately, don't have a sophisticated enough player right now to play one. I have a Memorex looking to upgrade my CD player, but I'm not really sure there's that much of a benefit unless you have like a really super hi-fi system, which I we have upstairs, but down here, which is where I spend most of my day, I just have some really nice speakers, CD, record player. Uh, we hit a nerve with some, some Grateful Dead fans. How can you not like Grateful Dead disco? Yeah, interesting era, that's for sure. Did you ever see them, Deal Finder? I got to see them once. The full, the real band with Cherry and everybody. Your wife plays the BJs and you play Grateful Dead. BJs are acceptable, man. Especially for me personally, early BJ, early BJs, BGs, early BGs, Brothers Gib, pre disco. I don't mind some of the disco stuff. I'm, it's like anything else. When it came out, it was like, ah, this is garbage. And then time goes on, and all of a sudden, it's like, wow, those are some nice songs. But I liked when they were trying to be the Beatles early on. 
beautiful music, great songwriters, incredibly successful. And tragically, only Barry remains, which is just shocking. He was the oldest brother, too. He got to watch his whole uh, family get wiped out. Uncle Johnny. Yeah, uh, I, th I do believe this was brought up in a show previously, too. But um, Grateful Dead, again, no offense to anybody. I wasn't a huge fan of the music ever at any point. I was like, okay, yeah, sure, some mellow stuff. And I was coaxed uh, into going to see them at Giant Stadium. It was the... Shades of Touch of Grey. I was going to say Shades of Grey. Touch of Grey tour, whatever it was. And I will survive. I will get by. So anyway, we saw them at Giant Stadium that, that summer. The atmosphere in the parking lot, the atmosphere in the stadium was exceptional. It's tie-dyes and smoke and Frisbees and people blowing bubbles and beads and, you know, very 60s retro kind of thing. And it was a cool experience. But then when we got in there and it carried over to, to walking into the, the building and everything, but just musically, at least that show for me, I'm not trying to be snobbish because I'm a musician, but I just, I didn't, um, I didn't fall in love with it. Like they did, they did a cover version of Tomorrow Never Knows, which is kind of cool, a Beatles song from Revolver. Not very well, but they did their own little take on it. It's a tough song to, to reproduce. What else did they do? They did a lot of cover music. The only Grateful Dead song I really like is called Ripple, which I'm sure Dale Finder would know. But um, they're just a jam band. They're a fun jam band. Um, Jerry was a character for sure. I just never got into this. People that are fanatical about them, I know, but I, I almost believe that it's more of the whole overall aura of them and the experience and the the people in the audience that kind of make the trip more exciting, if you will. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, without question. Get out. Are you really? Congratulations. Maybe in the fall, Jan, if that's possible, only because uh, if you've watched, I'm, I'm on this ridiculous tour schedule. We're playing like three, four shows every week. And I just can't get away. And and my wife is is not done, but she's um, taken a step back from the whole cookie business thing for and she started in the middle of June. And she's just don't doing like piecemeal orders, one one or two at the most a week, whereas we usually do like ten or fifteen a week. So uh, maybe in the fall, Jan, if that's okay, if you have some time, I'd love to. We we definitely want to get together and hang out. I can't wait to see. And oh, that's funny. I was just gonna say, what about the magazines? You got them all moved. All right, they're safe. Oh, I don't know all their music at all, Rootin. Not a not a big fan, so I don't really know. I like Ripple. That's a song I know I liked a lot. And Sugar Magnolia, is that the other one? That's kind of the two I know. Aside from, you know, Trucking, like, you know, everybody knows songs. October. All right, perfect. So maybe sometime um we still have shows on. Maybe in November, tentatively, if that works, we'll we'll write. Sugary goes farther back than a GD. Cool. Again, yeah, no disrespect to anybody that likes them. I'm just making my own comment. I'm sure everybody has comments about every band. That's just my now. But I, I'm glad I saw them. I've also talked about this. Speaking of Mr. Sinatra, I was lucky enough to see him live, too. Also in Jersey at the Garden State Arts Center in 90, I think it was. He was already kind of on the decline, unfortunately. And you know what's messed up? You think about that now. It feels like yesterday, but it's 30 years ago, right? And he was uh he was only 74 when we saw him in 90, and we thought he was ancient. And now I'm seeing 74 as a kid, like uh compared to you know with the musicians that we love from the 60s and 70s, like that's that's young still. My boy McCartney just turned 80 years old. Like it's ridiculous to think that he's six years older than Sinatra was. Sinatra just gave this appearance of an old man with a tuxedo and all that stuff, but it was another case of like I real I've always loved them all my life. I love Dean Martin too because my parents loved them, like my mom especially. And it was just seeing saying, "My God, I saw Frank Sinatra was amazing." But he, like I said, he was kind of on the decline and he was forgetting lyrics and stuff. It was there was an element of sadness, but it was a wonderful thing to to have seen somebody so legendary. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, let's shoot for that tentatively. Okay, then, Jen, and, we'll, and we will be in contact. I appreciate it. It's a Jerry tune. Okay, cool. The reason you're surprised of an East Coast accent? Not sure what that means. Caught them live a dozen times. Nice. That's well. That's a great point. A lot of uh, the Deadheads, as they called them, they would literally travel all over the, to see their band. You know, which I love. I love that kind of camaraderie and everything. You live near Seattle, rarely did the West Coast. Yet they were. 
cut their teeth in San Francisco, right? Hi, Jiminy. How you doing? Ah, oh, thank you, Pretty Little Pennies. Thank you so much. And thanks again, Johnny. I uh, had a great time. I was on with him for a few minutes this morning. It was a great time. Great community he has over there. Really nice people. So welcome aboard. I'm so happy you can make it tonight. Johnny is in here. He's been uh, chatting it up with, I think he knows virtually everybody in my room right now, which is a beautiful thing. And everybody certainly knows him. Welcome aboard. Pretty Little Pennies. That's a cute name, too. Well, what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Would anybody like to do a little bit of a listing together? You want to take a look at some of this stuff? Oh, before we do that, shameless plug. No, this isn't a shameless plug. And it's not from me, actually, necessarily. We have a great event. I, I touched on it on Monday, but I have a little more detail for everybody. Next weekend, August 13th and 14th, over on Whatnot, there's an event, uh, John from Popeye's Postcards Brainchild. It is called Paper Palooza. It is a two-day event. It's about 12 hours each day, which is a, quite a time commitment. I know that. Everybody gets an hour, Everybody that's in participating in this thing gets an hour spot. Mine happens to be Saturday from 1 to 2 o'clock Eastern. Everybody's going to do an hour long on uh, whatnot, a show, and they're all going to run consecutively. And they're all paper resellers, ephemera, postcards, photos. Um, in my case, the print. I'm going to do some print ads on there, giving away lots. Not giving away. Auctioning off. Um, lots of print print ads. Um, so it's a great opportunity for you guys who do follow me or like the genre and maybe you don't have enough um, inventory. It's a great way to get started with it because the stuff I am auctioning is already like pre-cut, pre-selected. They're going to be in beautiful shape. They're going to be shipped to you uh, very professionally. So hopefully I'll see everybody there, but I'm really pumped about the event. I love the concept of it. It's a great way to bring exposure to our little uh, ephemera community over on whatnot to get more people involved in ephemera. Um, and it's, it's like a marathon, like I keep saying. It's almost like a, a telethon, actually. Jerry Lewis telethon where he would go on for the whole Labor Day weekend. That's going to be us. We're going to be on, it's literally 12 hours. I think it starts at 11, the first show, Saturday morning. And the last show, uh, Popeye is closing out at 10 p.m. So it is like 11, 12 hours of nonstop ephemera goodness for not one but two days. It became so popular that we, we put in a second day, Sunday the 14th. So anyway, you'll hear a lot more about it. And then I'm very, very excited to announce that you know, I, I started my show saying that, for, especially for you new folks, Monday and Friday are my usual days. I'll do a chat show on Monday. And tonight, it's supposed to be a listing show, even though we're an hour in. I haven't listed a thing, but that's okay. And now what I'm going to do is on, let me get the date right so I don't say this incorrectly. Yeah, on Thursday, this coming Thursday, which is uh, two days before the event begins on Saturday, Thursday, Time to be uh, determined, probably around this time frame, 6 or 7 Eastern. I just have to make sure. I'm going to have at least five guests confirmed right now here on my channel. And we're all, uh, including Popeye, including Ben. Uh, people might know you guys. Um, new to you provisions. He's a big player in the whole postcard and all that stuff. Well, anyway, John's the king of postcards. They're going to be on my show. And we're all going to talk about it collectively, five or six people. I think I could fit up to 10. So I'm still accepting... Uh, applications as they say now but we have at least five confirmed plus myself paper boy is going to be on for million dollar peddlers great friend of the channel this should be a lot of fun so we're all going to be on together on my show on an off night for me anyway thursday um time to be determined six or seven p.m most likely will be the start time and it'd be a great opportunity for you guys to to meet all those folks and we could all talk together about our love of ephemera obviously we'll be promoting the event itself um hoping to get a lot of people interested in it and going over there onto uh, whatnot. Should be a lot of fun. So anyway, mark your calendars, folks. Thursday, put down six, but I'll let you know. It's either going to be six or seven start next Thursday. It should be a lot of fun here on my channel, which I'm really excited about. Tell your friends. Um, East Coast is where they seem to like to play. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw them at Giant Stadium. I don't, I don't, I don't remember like what their tour schedule, but it was when the, remember the, I will survive or whatever, touch of gray tour. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I really do. Thanks so much. Pleasure to have you. Time for some to load up on sellables. Sure. Uh, to what, to the, to the whatnot event? 
No, it's it's open. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. It's really important. If you go, if if you go on, well, first of all, if you're not on whatnot already, that's fine. If you'd like, I have a link below this video. Um, if you click on, if you want to join whatnot, you get a free ten dollar um, credit posted to your account immediately, which I really recommend everybody do. When I got into it, I I took advantage of that too. It's a great way to just kind of kickstart your whatnot career from a buying perspective. Ten bucks can get you some stuff on whatnot. You'd be, I mean, Kelly could have bought four CDs for me for ten bucks. So. <laughs> It's pretty cool, and it's applied instantaneously, so as soon as you sign up. If you haven't signed up yet, if you go into the search field within whatnot and just type the term Paperpalooza, which I'll put down here for spelling purposes, but there's a keyword in, and it will automatically bring up everybody. I think uh, John said it's 22 or 23 people right now that are participating. So you could go in now and just kind of bookmark the show. Again, mine is... Uh, Saturday, 13th at 1 p.m. But please go ahead and uh, bookmark everybody. Everybody's doing a little something different, but it's all going to be ephemera based. That's the whole or paper, you know, all paper. A lot of cool stuff. Um, I can't wait for it. So go into whatnot and search that term that I just put down. You can do a little copy paste action. Paper Palooza. We tested it with a few folks and they all said they were able to, to pull up everybody's show with that keyword. It's kind of cool. We're also going to be having kind of like a universal marketing banner for this event coming out very short, probably over the weekend latest Monday. So we'll start posting, you know, all of us that are doing this, we'll probably post on uh, Instagram and our YouTube channels and everything. And then Thursday night is uh, the get together with some heavy hitters in the uh, ephemeral world. For sure. I'm really looking forward to that. I want to pick their brains and again, an opportunity for everybody that watches, tell your friends about it. Uh, come on in. You could ask questions to all these great guys, you know, somebody like uh, John Popeye, if you want to know about postcards, he's the guy to talk to. So I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, 10 on them. Exactly. And that's what I had thrown out. We have a little um, a group that we've established on Facebook that's just for this event. And I said that there was a, you could have up to 10. So I threw it out there. People are shy, Johnny. I don't know what that's about, but there are people that actually probably would do a great job, but they just kind of, they're sheepish, sheepish about getting over on YouTube. They shouldn't be. It would be a, a fun event. Palooza. Hey, Bartomania, what's going on, man? Welcome, welcome. Roll Pennies is watching Throwback Wrestling. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, so I'm really excited about this event. And, uh, you know, I'm assuming most of the people that are watching are probably at least mildly intrigued, if not really into Ephemera. So it should be, what a great idea. It was, it was uh, Popeye's idea. It was just like a simple message. Hey guys, anybody interested in getting together and doing like a marathon session? I'm like, yeah, sure. And it's kind of really taken on a life of its own the last couple of weeks. And um, all the prep work is is almost done. And uh, by the time we do get to Thursday night and on my show, it'll just be a 48 hour away from uh, showtime. It's be a lot of fun. Yep, part of mania alive and kicking. God bless you. Part of mania also just recently became uh, was it a week ago or so became um, monetized over on YouTube. So congratulations to both you and Johnny. Johnny Mock two. I'm sure you were monetized uh, quite a while previous to what what did you say it was two or three years ago. All righty. That's why that is why I offer others to join me in the morning show to get their feet wet and feel good about being on my show. That's a very phenomenally excellent point. If you do have any uh, reservations about being on YouTube, maybe you've never been on a show live and you're a little nervous, which is natural. Great point, man. Johnny, it's a great way to uh, kind of introduce yourself. You'll feel at home. That's for sure. Speak from experience. He makes everybody feel welcomed and comfortable. It's a very relaxed early morning cup of coffee, hang out, Talk with some other people, like-minded individuals, all into reselling. So what a wonderful, it's a service you're doing, Johnny. I, I consider it like a service to all of us. So again, highly appreciated. Thank you very much for that. Hey, Susan, how you doing? A lot under that name and whatnot. Oh, really? Welcome, Susan. Welcome, welcome. Another new person. Very exciting. Hope you have fun. Make yourself comfortable. You, uh, you did it back in January. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal which really ties back almost to the day. I, I had a YouTube channel for a couple of years, I think, but I only did 
a, a year, a year and a half ago, let's say now, right? A year ago in January, I did like one or two videos from estate sales and that was it, like two seconds. I didn't really, I didn't have this name then. I was like, ah, I'll just throw some videos up. My wife got me a GoPro and I got all keen on going out and doing, you know, the usual stuff that everybody does. Like, well, let's see what I bought at the estate sale. And so we did a couple of those and they didn't catch on at all. And I was just like, ah, forget it. You know, I didn't care. And then for whatever reason, um, around Christmas time or New Year's, I came up with this idea of Gemini Flip It and I changed the the name and everything. I'm like, I'm going to start doing some videos. I really like doing this. And um, I did, I don't know, a handful in January, two or three in January. And then February, uh, after an appearance, I was on with Don, uh, the auction professor on his channel, another great friend of mine in the community, good friend of a lot of people, great mentor. He had me on along with a couple of the, and he was on, um, on a round table thing with him. I guess it was in January or February maybe. And that's where I met um, my buddy, <coughs> excuse me, Travis Griffin on that show. And he actually reached out to me and said, Hey man, well, you should do something like that. I said, do something like what, you know, get together. We'll do a YouTube show. I'll, I'll help you out. So he did. And we started the chat show in February. So we're just about at six months now. Anyway, there's the, the abridged version of my illustrious six month career on YouTube. Yeah. That's the other thing. Again, just to, just, to speak highly of Johnny and his whole concept here. There's no pressure whatsoever. He also has sort of like an open mic format, if you will, the StreamYard equivalent. He does a little due diligence, make sure that you're who you say you are, make sure you have a, a channel and stuff. But you go in, you say hi, whatever, and he'll, he'll throw you up. You get an opportunity to plug your channel and say hi to people and meet new people. It was a great experience this morning because I've been watching for a while, so it was nice to actually say hi to everybody. You had a nice crowd, too. You had over 100 people this morning watching. I think that's exceptionally good. Oh, yeah, and then he has the bingo. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Your first recorded video on Thanksgiving in 2019. There you go. Oh, yeah, he is. Absolutely. Like I said, a big mentor of mine personally. Really good guy. Not that you're counting, but 105 this morning. Yeah, it was really cool. It's a nice crowd. But for anybody who's a little timid about that or not sure, again, it's easy for somebody else to say, don't just go for it. But really, it's a great opportunity. And, he, and Johnny brings up a great point, a chance to get your feet wet, get used to doing it in a very low pressured situation. Nobody's going to judge you or say, oh, my God, did you see so-and-so on John? It's not like that. It's just a conversational thing. He makes everybody feel very comfortable and very welcomed. Um, you're not obligated to stay on the whole show. You can come in and say hi and say goodbye. You know, there's no, it's a really great opportunity to, to test the waters, if you will, of YouTube. Phenomenal idea. Hundred fourteen for bingo. <laughs> That's cool. Would you mind just, is it literally, I haven't seen the bingo. Is it literally a game of bingo? Is it like, is there a theme around your bingo? Is it just good old fashioned bingo? Susan says, not yet. Not yet what with uh, getting out there? That's okay. I just hope you enjoy the content. Keep watching. Um, and this is the truth. I'm always open to any ideas, comments, criticisms, bring them on, you know, comments in, the, in my YouTube channel. Because anybody could ever send me an email. I have a lot of people email me, jimmyflippit at gmail.com. Anything, anything you want to talk about? Any suggestions? Like I said, any, uh, I've had a few people, which I really appreciate as a content creator is a couple of people make suggestions about future videos. Hey, can you do a video about this? And I, I love that because I mean, you could ask Johnny, ask a lot of people in this room that have channels. Like that's one of the hardest things is trying to come up with ideas for content. And in my case, trying to come up with original ideas, you know, there's, there's a formula to a lot of this stuff and there's nothing wrong with that. There's, I was joking before about the, look what I found at the estate sale video. No, that's an absolute genre that people like, you know, um, Kristen does it all the time, you know, in the, in the bins, here's what I found. Here's what I found. Of course, there's a dreaded what sold video that people seem to like too. There's just like a formulaic approach to some of these videos and being creative in that space is uh, challenging as they say nowadays to say the least. So when somebody comes through with a, a really good idea for me, it's like, it's like gold. So again, welcome Susan. So excited that you're here. Yes, it's fun. Bingo. Okay, cool. 
pudding. You know what? That's not a bad percentage, man. In one week, they are not. I, I, I'm going to say this again. Uh, if you want to look at sell through rate, look at postcards. These are long tail items, as they say. You're not going to list. Um, you're not going to list a print ad tonight. It's going to sell tonight or tomorrow or a week. Now you might, because if you have, we've talked about this, but I'll reiterate. If you have volume, and it kind of goes for almost anything, Kelly could definitely back me up on this in the postcard world. But volume rules the day because when you have items like this that can sit on a shelf for three years potentially, or sell tomorrow potentially, there's no real rhyme or reason. Right person online at the right time, blah blah blah. When you have volume, you're always going to have a quantity of sales every day that can sustain you. That's really what it comes down to. If you have a good amount of volume, and again, I have, as I look over to my ever-growing uh, pile of magazines that still have to be processed, easily 100,000, easily, probably more than that, 100,000 ads I could list. And if I had 100,000 ads up, I'd be sitting pretty. I only have about 2,000 right now listed, and I'm still making enough. And again, I have other, just so everybody knows, truth in advertising here. Um, it's not all I sell. I have plenty of other items in my eBay store. I love vinyl. I have lots of vinyl. I have Disney stuff. I have everything. But uh, the niche that I'm passionate about right now is this print ad thing. And I like turning people on to the idea that weren't aware. I hear that all the time. Wow, I had no idea that you can make so much money. Because I, I, uh, a lot of people sell magazines, you know, the whole magazine. Nothing wrong with that, again. And you'll see those all the time at estate sales. Piles of them that they're giving away for nothing because people think they're worthless. And they'll try to, and again, it's a good, if you buy them for, I don't know, make up a number. If you buy 50 magazines for 10 bucks, you know, and you spent 50 cents. Is that my math, right? You spent 50 cents on a magazine. You go on eBay and you sell them for 9.99 or whatever. That's that's good money. It's a great return. But I found out rather quickly when doing that that you could sell uh, the ads within these magazines for you know 10, 15, 20, 50 times more money than you could get for the whole magazine. And that's what I wanted to kind of teach people and show them the potential. And there's so many. There's just like postcards, like a lot of other products. There's just so many of them. So it's always exciting when I hear people like, um, you know, say, oh, I just listed my first whatever amount of postcards or excuse me, of uh, print ads. And thank you so much for telling me this. You know, uh, I had several people and this was the most comforting thing to me. I had a bunch of people. It wasn't just one or two. It was like 10 or 15 people write me, emailed me or wrote comments that said I had this magazine up on eBay for three years. It didn't do anything. I pulled it down. I ripped out, you know, whatever, 10, 15 ads from it, put them up and sold three ads in, in a week or whatever and made 10 times more than I had the magazine list for. Now, that is really a good feeling. And that's that was my hope that I could just show people and make them aware of the potential profit out there. Paid $1 for the magazine, got 62 ads. There you go. Not bad, huh? I mean, without getting too deal, you know my pricing structure. Do, is it comparable? Like 10, 15 bucks an ad, right? Probably most of them. Just do the math there, guys. It's a lot of money. You're not going to make it overnight. But if you get thousands of ads listed, or in my case, tens, tens of thousands of ads listed, you're going to uh, you're going to sell enough every day. Whether it was listed last night or it was listed two years ago, it won't matter. You won't. And then you suddenly, it takes a lot of pressure off too, whereby you don't care if something sits for a while. You know it's going to sell eventually just based upon the volume that you have of listed. It doesn't matter if it was listed last night or three years ago. It's going to sell at some point. And as long, again, as you're selling enough on a daily basis to sustain things, then you're ahead of the game. You copied. That's okay. That's awesome. Yeah, that's just mine. And by the way, it's not. It's a fluid situation, the price. And you obviously have to, like any commodity, uh, you know, there's ups and downs, markets change. So just kind of go with the flow. Keep your eyes, you know, out there for changes in the market, but it's, it's served me well. I've had this, this strategy in place for a bit, but I will tweak things. Like I think everybody, every savvy business owner needs to tweak pricing um, with some frequency too, based on time of year, based on if it's dead as it's been, you know, relatively so recently, you might want to drop things or put things on sale or do the coupon option is a nice thing now on uh, eBay. Susan, you're not alone. Have you checked out the uh, video? You probably haven't if you're brand new. I have a whole video series, seven parts, I believe, six or seven parts, devoted exclusively to print ads. Soup to nuts. It starts with your statement. I have a magazine. What do I do? And it kind of takes you all the way through. So check that out if you have not uh, checked it out. I hope it helps you out. Oh, no problem, Kelly. Oh, my goodness. Work. 
Kelly is a, a young pup, at least compared to most of us in this room. <laughs> and that's not a slight. God bless him. He's a grown man, but he's, he's younger than a lot of us. And my hope, Kelly, is that you don't have to keep having a job shortly, the way you're kicking butt with your, your postcards. Why reinvent? Oh, yeah, you're very welcome. And again, always feel free to reach out to me, email, or just write comments in the videos when you see them if you have any questions. I even put links to like some of the, and they're not affiliate links. I don't get paid. It's just to help people. I go into detail about the types of scanners I use because I scan all of my ads. I have three different scanners I use. And based upon the size, I use a different scanner. Um, I go into details about some of the products I use for shipping to make sure that they're shipped safely. Um, but I hope you enjoy it, Susan. It's And it's not going to kill like a whole night. It's Every video is only like maybe between five and ten minutes at the most. So it's pretty quick. But it's fairly comprehensive. A lot I've got a, a lot of great feedback from it. And I certainly hope it helps. All right. Anybody else have any uh, thoughts before we open up the eBay screen and maybe get a couple of listings? It might be good, especially for the benefit of some of you, you new folks that are in here for the first time with me tonight, which again, I thank you very much for. We do live listing shows haha, every Friday <laughs> and we're an hour and 17 minutes and haven't listed anything. But usually when I do listing shows, I say hi for a couple of minutes and we just get into listing and I list the print ads. I mean, that's what the listing shows have been based upon primarily is uh, print. I think, did we ever do a music? Uh, I was going to do a, a sheet music show. I don't know if we ever did one, but we list print ads and you kind of, it really can be helpful for somebody uh, like in Susan's case, who's brand new to it and doesn't really know what to do. So let me know if you want, even just for a few minutes, we can kind of start together and I'll show you the nuts and bolts, if you will, of how I list them anyway, and feel free to copy like certain other people have done. I encourage it. I don't mind at all. I don't have a patent on this stuff, you know. We try to have a listing show. Usually we are a chatty bunch. Kelly, you see, the thing is, if you go back in my the annals of my, uh, the annal of my channel, how's that sound? That's the rhythm in me. But you'll see the listing shows are listing shows. I mean, I, I do three, four hour. I, I did a four hour show one night, right? But at least like two or three, usually on Fridays, at least last few months have been listing nights. I'm always listing. We list a bunch together. But yeah, we've gotten into some uh, good conversation with these, uh, with you fine folks that chime in on Friday nights. I don't know if it's because it's Friday and you just want to relax and hang out, but whatever the case, it's fine with me. I'm, I'm fine either way. But the listing shows are kind of cool because especially for people that are new and want to get into this, we talked about sheet music. All right, Rudin, and I owe you a sheet music. Would you enjoy, would anybody enjoy a sheet vintage? I have a video out there about vintage sheet music. Check it out on my channel. But that's another thing we sell with some decent frequency on, on my store, my eBay store. A lot of this stuff, you know, and this is a, it's everybody's choice, what they, what their business model is, what they want to uh, specialize in, what they, if they just want to be broad minded and sell everything on, there's a lot of resellers that are successful doing that. They just sell anything. You know, if they can make a profit, they're going to flip it. God bless them. I think it's a great idea. There's other people that like to niche down as they say. And there's other people like me that are kind of in the middle that have a niche or two that they specialize in. But if they see an opportunity for profit with things that are completely outside of their comfort zone or whatever, they'll go ahead and do it. And for me personally, the sheet music thing fell into our lap. My wife was on Facebook marketplace probably about a year ago. And uh, an, an old lady that lives a, a mile from our house had put up a thing about sheet music, vintage sheet music. I don't remember the exact number, but it was ridiculous. It was almost like uh, the shed guy with his uh, 500 discs for 10 bucks. It was like, I think she billed it as a hundred sheet, pieces of sheet music for 10 bucks, something like that. So my wife goes down, she gave her 20 bucks because she was such a nice lady. And she's like, oh, big bag. It wound up, there was like almost 300 pieces. So she completely miscounted. I'm glad we gave her some more money. But anyway, suddenly I said, oh, I have 300 pieces of sheet music. Did a little research. Auction professor had talked about uh, his appreciation for sheet music and how a lot of people buy them for the artwork that's on the cover. Much like my print ads, they'll, they'll frame them and put them up. And then there's a handful of people like me that might be musicians or interested in the musical aspect of it. But I think the majority of the people I would imagine that pick up the old sheet music. And when I say old, by the way, mine are like 1890s through the forties or so, I think is what we have. Um, most of the people probably buy them to frame them or display them in some fashion, but I really enjoy it. And um, I don't know how many we have listed right now, 150, maybe it's not a long tail thing. But what I was going to say before about, you know, everybody has a different approach and a different um, business model in their head. At least they should. 
and I have a lot of long tail stuff. So again, it becomes, you need a lot to sustain. If you have a, a, a long tail model, but you only have a hundred listings, you're, you're going to struggle most likely on eBay, unless your items are just so exceptionally priced that if you sell one or two, you're good. But in my world, you know, the combination of these print ads, um, I dabble in postcards, but I have nothing. I probably have 20 postcards or 50 postcards listed, maybe 100 something pieces of sheet music. And then I have more uh, stuff that kind of, that helps a lot. The, the bread and butter stuff that just kind of, you list it and it sells usually within a week or so. I have a handful of that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm all over the place, but I always want to make it clear to the people that do follow me, like, and, and want to get into the print ad thing. It's a wonderful genre. It's a ridiculous return on your investment, which is a great plus. Um, when you watch the video series and you see how easy, quote unquote, they are to um, process, when, by process, I mean scan, provided you have the good equipment. Uh, they ship very cheaply. They're only seven ounces for one. And I can, I've, I've spoken about this. I think I can get almost 20 sheets into my thing and still be under a pound. Uh, so they have a lot of benefits. You know, they have a lot of benefits. But one of the downsides, if you will, is they're not the kind of things that are going to fly off the shelf. You're not selling an iPhone that you're going to have 5,000 views in 10 seconds and some scammer is going to buy it from you. You know, they're, they're collectors, the people that like the stuff, the product, um, the brand, whatever, and they collect them. So just like anything else that's a collectible, usually that kind of stuff is not going to fly off the shelf. So you want to have volume in something like that. So if you want to get interested, if you're interested in this genre at all, I suggest you pick up. And again, they're usually dirt cheap. Pick up a bunch of magazines, just kind of dive in, rip them up, you know, watch my videos if you'd like to try to get some ideas, watch these listing shows for sure to get ideas about. Uh, common themes when it comes to certain products that are very highly sought after, like Coca-Cola, obviously. Car ads we always talk about, very successful. People collect that stuff. Last week was 70s, 80s. Oh, yeah, exactly. In the chat shows, we wound up talking about, yeah, TV shows. Uh, what kind of candy did you like when you were 10? What's your favorite cereal? Um, who remembers Mickey Mouse Club? You know, things like that. They always seem to devolve into something like that later on, but. Hi, Mom Knows Treasures Market. Welcome, welcome. New subscriber as well, right? I think I saw your name earlier. Welcome aboard. Pleasure to have you. Oh, you like that, Kim? Okay, cool. Yeah, we can definitely go through it. I have a video on it, so check out the video if you wouldn't mind. And again, ask questions if you like. It's not a very long video. It's another three or four minute video, I, I think, about um, sheet music, kind of like where to source it, high level overview of what they are and where you can find them. Nice sellers though. And, and uh, Every once in a while, and then this happens with print ads a lot, but every once in a while you'll come across a collector who might have been looking for eons for something that you have, something obscure, something common. It really doesn't matter. And sometimes they will just go on a tear and pick up like 20 or 30 ads in one, in one doing because they're like, I've been looking for Sprite ads from 1961 for 30 years. And you, they go into your store and they see that. It's amazing. That's like such a charge when you see that. And they buy like every Sprite ad you have or every, you know, car ad for a certain brand that you have. That's a real kick. You're going to hit you're going to hit on those once in a while. And that's a great feeling. You have some sheet music. Awesome, Susan. Well, if you don't know anything about it and you just want to or you just want to check out check out my video on my channel about vintage sheet music. If again, have any questions, let me know. Correct. Well, Brian's song is great. Yeah, it doesn't have to be old. That's very true. I also believe that the newer, quote unquote, newer, I say like like him, like maybe 70s to now, more contemporary music and stuff. Um, I don't know that a lot of those, we were just talking about earlier about collectors of sheet music will primarily collect them to display them, frame them, whatever. I think the newer ones, there's actually more of an interest in the musician. Like I sold, an, it's interesting you brought this up, Root, and I sold a, a Neil Diamond songbook very recently, and I sold a Beatles songbook. Songbook can be either just lyrics and guitar tablets or a piano, something like that. But the, the Neil Diamond one went for like 40 bucks, which was really good. My Beatle one went for like 30 bucks. It was like from 89. You know what I mean? It was new compared to this other stuff. So great point about that. doesn't have to be old, but the turn of the century, the, you know, the, the type of music becomes very appealing to collectors, old jazz, old ragtime stuff. You know, you're going to find a lot of people that dig that and want to display it, but that is a good point. And it doesn't have to be old. Yeah, that's a great point. Absolutely. Your own museum. All right, Puddings. Dinner's here. Go manj. Enjoy. Thanks for coming in. Oh, you're very welcome, Kim. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed it. I've been teasing this too. I, I'm not sure, but I. what is it? Seven? I should know this, you would think. I made them. Seven parts, I believe. 
Uh, there might be, if it's six, then I apologize, but whatever the next number is, be it seven or eight, I'm, I'm tinkering with the idea of doing one more uh, video in that series. And I'll let everybody know that watches. It would really be about, you know, let's do some listing. But when you list the main ads that you pull out, right? You, I think most people are going to open up a magazine and look for a full page. I keep saying Coke because it's probably the most popular. Coca-Cola ad from 1933. Great. Coca-Cola. You know, old tried and true brand. Everybody knows it. A lot of people collect it. You're going to look for that. Then you're going to look, oh, here's a car ad. And most of them are going to be full pages, right? That most people look for. Those of you who have been on my many, many listing shows where we've actually listed, you'll see that often you'll find quarter page ads, half page ads, little slits that are like three inches wide, but they're 12 inches long, really micro ads that are literally a square inch. Any one of those are fair game and any one of those can sell. And the size of the ad does not always uh, translate into a higher price. In fact, on the contrary, some of the smaller ones, especially the really like turn of the century ads, we've we've done a few 1905, 1906 magazines, I believe is probably the oldest that we've done so far on a listing show. Some of those things, just because of the scarcity of the type of product that's being sold, whether it be like the horse and buggy, I keep bringing that up, but we, we listed a horse and buggy ad from like 1905. You know, cars were still very new. A lot of people still had horses and buggies. Well, there was an ad, a square inch ad, inch by an inch, inch by an inch, small guy, a little bigger than a stamp. So for like 30 bucks, you know? So anyway, that this last video in the series is probably going to speak to that. Like what to do with the, the, the skeleton that remains or the skeletal remains of the magazine. Once you've carved up all the, what you consider to be the good stuff, you'll see there's a whole bunch of other things you could do. Even if you don't sell the ads, you could actually sell some of the articles contained. A lot of these magazines obviously have articles within them and you'd be, uh, surprised how many articles can sell if it has a famous person if it's about a president um i have like a four or five page article about elvis from uh 1955 life magazine which i'm selling just by itself uh, there's a lot of things you could do so that'll probably be the last part in that series i'm going to do a little everything else kind of video you have to catch up on listings what a bunch of postcards cool yeah man get them up Proudly, what do you have? I don't want to give the number away. Proudly write your number of listings into the chat, if you would, Kelly. Here's a guy. And how long have you been doing this, Kelly? Not very long, right? This should be motivating. Kelly, I think, primarily deals in postcards. We talked about niching down. Hello, Mom. I could postcard to the Costco's home. I just found two lots I bought. You know what? I have a question for all you guys who, especially Kelly, uh, John, if he was on, but he'll be on next week. When you guys list postcards you know i know what was it a year or so ago when they changed ebay changed the entire postcard world tore it upside down they made it like two categories it used to be like 10 now it's like two topographical non-topographical something ridiculous the thing that frustrates me with postcard listing yes uh, i have a, a duplex scanner so i can take pictures front and back of a thousand postcards in 10 minutes you know whatever really it's really fast and swift great um, again, being a novice in postcards, I would have to look up some comps on some of them so I don't give stuff away. But aside from all that, the listing, the specifics that you have to put in recommended specifics for postcards are outrageous. And I was just, I wanted to know if you guys actually populate all that or if you roll the dice and just put bare minimum, you know, the, the mandatory ones and just let the other ones kind of stay empty. Because that's a turnoff for me, the fact that I have to enter so many ridiculous extra specifics for postcards. It drives me nuts. Anything, something brand new, deal fun. It's always fun also to just dive into something you've never done before. Just try it. Got to mix it up. All the postcards, trade cards, 8x10s, yeah. All of which you'll be seeing on Paperpalooza. No, it certainly doesn't come seriously. It doesn't. The smaller ads can be worth, you know, twice as much as the bigger ones. It all comes down to the product and, you know, the, the, scarce, the scarcity always helps. Scarcity drives value in most things in the world, actually, doesn't it? Supply and demand. Need to figure out ad prices again? Check out my video, Susan. You can get an idea anyway, a template to, to work with. If you're just starting from scratch and have no idea. Okay, cool. Yeah, look for that. I'll make one. Won't be home tomorrow. As we've mentioned, I'll be down in beautiful Sea Isle City, New Jersey, performing for a large enthusiastic, enthusiastic crowd. Maybe Sunday I'll put a video together or Monday. Sunday, I'll be licking my wounds. And then Tuesday, I have another show. 
Who so so sell a tore out article of magazine and not whole magazines? Correct, Susan. That's my whole philosophy. And when you check out the video series, you'll see that. Um, I'm not saying don't sell magazines. Far from it. I mean, there's people that make a career out of, of selling magazines, and God bless them. I've just found out that the lion's share of magazines you're going to find out there are going to be relatively cheap. Like so, certainly the source, and even when you list them. I mean, how many really valuable? And I guess it depends on how you define valuable. How many super valuable magazines are out there? Most of them are kind of dime a dozen and I don't know. Well, what I found out several years ago was if you take a magazine, a nondescript issue of, um, again, for me, Life is the, the magazine that I have the most uh, ads and the most actual physical magazine. So Life magazine, right? Just pick out a 1951, March 1951 issue of Life magazine. I'm just making this up completely. but And it has Joe Blow on the cover. Nobody really knows who it is. And it's... 200 pages, right? You could sell the magazine maybe for 10 bucks, maybe, because they're very, very common life magazines. But what I realized was, hey, in this one issue of March 1951 magazine with Joe Blow on the cover, there are, out of the 200 pages, 56 of them are advertisements, which is probably conservative. Unfortunately, most of the magazines are all advertising with a couple of uh, articles <laughs> speckled in. But, um, you know, I started saying, hmm, and I would, and I'm certainly not the first person to do this. There are many people doing ads way, way, way before me, but I did some comps. I'm like, oh my God, this Coca-Cola ad or something comparable is selling for $15 just for the ad or $10 just for the ad. I'm like, oh, and I started thumbing through and I did the math in my head. I'm like, oh my God. And it's, it's, it's not an exaggeration to say you could easily, easily, if you get, uh, let's just be very conservative. Let's say you get 20 ads out of a life magazine. And you price them each for 10 bucks, that's two hundred dollars when those ads sell. That's on the extremely low end. I'd be willing to bet a lot of money that you could get a lot more than 20 ads out of most magazines. And I'd be willing to bet a lot of money, depending on your pricing structure. If you want to start off at 10 bucks, God bless you. But you can get more for 10 bucks an ad. So you're talking two, three hundred easily on an average, probably more than that, per magazine. And now go out there and go on eBay and search magazine sales. How many magazines as a whole sell for two or $300 a piece? Very, very, very few. Whereas I could take the most boring generic magazine ever made and make that kind of money every day on them over time. I'm not saying you're going to list your 20 ads and then we're all going to sell tomorrow, but you just build up an arsenal of listings from all these different magazines and list them in the right category. And you're off and running. You also need to be very organized, which again, I speak to in that series. So check it out if you guys haven't checked that out. I'm getting very behind in this. I apologize. 29,000 active. Look at that, Kelly. 95% postcards, comics, trade cards, 8 by 10 trading cards, hard goods. That's phenomenal, man. 29,000 listings. Now, what would you say? Again, I'm not, you don't have to give specifics, but like roughly what's your sell through rate on postcards? They're going to sit a while, right? But he has 29,000, 28,000 of them, let's say, folks. So when you have 28,000 of something, you're going to make money. Yeah, year of manufacture. There's so many crazy specifics on there. And I, that's, it's a turnoff for me. Uh, and this good. Kelly's answering. You don't do any. It is pointless. But I always worry. And if you're selling them, you're going to prove me wrong. But I always worried about, you know, you'll get that message from eBay. You have 400 listings that need to, uh, you know, to have, um, what is it called? Suggested, recommended specifics. You're going to keep staring at that number. I was always afraid because I had heard some people mention the fact that if you leave that bucket of items untouched for a period of time, they basically get hidden in the searches. But if you're saying that you don't do any of them and you're making money, that might be a complete uh, myth. I hope you're right. Not selling postcard, but scan copies. I'm not sure what you mean, Susan. Hey, Dreamy Buys. What a cool name. Welcome, welcome. I use 6-bit change city put in pick change title. So in other words, you, uh, I guess talk about postcards and you don't put any of those recommended. That's good to know. Because, I mean, you could list till the cows come home if it's just a matter of putting in the, the recommend, uh, excuse me, the required. There's not a lot. All right, CJ. Hurry back, hurry back. Jimmy, I finally carved, caved, <laughs> carved. Started using it last week. Listing takes less than a minute. Uh, you're talking about um, a duplex scanner? 
You can customize it to make it more efficient. Watch their vids. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the what's that overhead scanner? The Acer, what is it called? Caesar. Memphis, how dare you? But I'm glad you came to your senses. Welcome, welcome. Just kidding. Memphis, a fine chap, major contributor to the show. We still haven't listed anything, Memphis. Hour and a half. Yeah, well, that could be said for probably everybody, Dreamy Buys, right? If only I had more time. You're not the first to say that, Susan. You probably won't be the last, but hopefully you get the uh, gist of it. You watch the videos. Maybe you could turn on some other people to the channel and to the genre. I'm all for it. I hope it builds and builds and builds. And any of you who are interested, come. I mean, I'm going to do a lot of these auctions, but on whatnot, I do uh, auctions, and some of the auctions I do are exactly these print ads, um, and they're already pre-cut out for you, which saves a lot of time. So you'll get, if you're interested in getting started in it, you could... Uh, Come into the auction, possibly pick up a whole bunch of them, and launch a career in vintage print ads. I missed something about these templates. I'm not sure what you guys are talking about. I apologize. Yes, absolutely. That's very true. Or uh, scrapbooks, or there's lots of uses for this stuff. You've been testing with cheaper cards, and you could do like 30 to 40 seconds if you push it, but yeah, way easier than dealing with eBay. Oh, you're talking about, what are you talking about? Somebody write and tell me what you're talking about. <laughs> I must have missed it. Hey, Kathy's World, welcome, welcome. You came over from Johnny's too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great to see you. Welcome. Make yourself comfortable. Hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, let me know. We're supposed to be listing right now, but we haven't listed anything. Maybe we'll get to it if you hang out for a bit. I'd like to show everybody, especially all you new folks that are in tonight. First of all, welcome. I'm very glad you're here, but... We usually do a listing show on Friday night, and the listing usually consists of vintage print ads, which I talk about a lot in my YouTube channel. But it's great to see you, Kathy's World. Yeah, it, try, it drives me nuts, the specific stuff. But my fear was, it wasn't so much like, not only is it a pain in the neck to have to do it, but I was really genuinely worried that, oh my God, if I don't do it, and they sit out there, and there's 400 or 500, you know, you people, this guy's doing 29,000 listings. If he has... Like Kelly, if you go on your home screen, does it say you have 28,000 listings that you should have recommended specifics on? I was always afraid that they would, that eBay would just kind of blow off those listings if you don't handle them. Because otherwise, why even mention it? Too bubbly. Hi. We're talking about scanning things. Yes. And again, check out the video, Susan. I go into detail about the types of scanners I use. Um, it's really based upon the, the footprint of the ad itself because this, I mean, I just talked earlier about literally a square inch. I mean, that's, you could scan that on anything you want, obviously, but some of the bigger life magazine is pretty big and there's even a larger one than that. What is it? Collier's it's called Collier's weekly, I believe is like 16 inches tall by 11 or 12 inches wide. So obviously a little duplex scanner or most flatbeds will not accommodate something like that. So I have a very oversized flatbed that I use for those big ones. Makes a little difference in the world, though. Like anything else, presentation, it's huge. And I, I get into that in, in the video series as well because you want to stand out. It's a it's a field that there's a bunch of people that sell ads, but you'll see. It's, it's scary. Some of them are literally like just on the floor, on a rug, like all tilted with lousy lighting, and they take a picture. It's just awful. Mine are scanned. High resolution. Neatly trimmed because I think it's important for presentation. If I was out there buying, I wouldn't want to see somebody's foot in a picture with a twisted wrinkled piece of paper on the floor that they're asking 20 bucks for not happening six bit is a listing program oh, okay cool six bit, six bit i'm not familiar with that one yes if they ever do yeah then everybody's screwed if they make it all required yes i agree yep that's true by the way if anybody any guys uh over on whatnot that auction on whatnot they just uh, rolled out, it's in beta mode, but it works great. I can tell you from experience, um, you can now upload a CSV file to to list items for your auction, which is a huge time saver. My God, instead of going in by one by one, you just choo, took 10 seconds. The CDs I did the other night, Kelly, I did that all with a CSV. It was it took five seconds. So cool. Memphis just watched a what an auction of Star Wars go for 801. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, Legos, yeah. I believe it. Cool. 
Cool. We'll have to check out what six bit is. Oh, was that the question, Kelly? I wasn't sure what she was asking. Yeah, I, I would think that's frowned upon. You're going to get yourself in trouble because I don't think it's technically illegal or against eBay's policies, but the buyer's going to think they're getting the real thing, and you're going to say that you had little a little line that said, this is a photocopy, and uh, you're going to make people upset, potentially, anyway. Use some, not all. Yeah. If Obviously, I mean, common sense, logically, if they apply to the card, great. Yeah, put it in, but some of them are really nonsensical. So anyway, honestly, that's keeping me away from listing postcards. I don't have that many, but I could have a, at least a couple of hundred maybe listed, which is not a big deal, especially compared to you guys that do postcards. But I'd, I'd be happy to get them up. You know, I didn't buy them so they could sit in the drawer, which is what they're doing right now. But the whole the listing process for them stinks to me anyway. The RS total will drop as you complete. Get out of it. Really? Required? Uh, recommend, excuse me, recommended specifics, right? You're talking about? Will drop if you start selling stuff? Kind of showing the filling amount. There's no harm. Well, if that's true, then um, Kelly should be the poster child because he doesn't do any of them. And he has 25,000 plus postcards listed. I also know John talks, uh, Popeye talks about that a lot. He doesn't fill in any of that stuff too. And obviously he's selling well. You scan the ad and sell it, but not the ad. No, you sell the ad. You, you scan the ad for the purposes of your listing on eBay, Susan, right? You take a nice high quality scan and you present that as the other thing. I just want to mention this. You only need one picture. So forget all the things that say, you know, you should have six pictures. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Postcard people, how many pictures do you take? It's like front and back. Same thing with my ads. I do one photo. It's a killer photo. It's in really good quality, but there's no reason to do multiple photos for it. So it's one scan. You scan your ad, and then you place your ad somewhere safe. I have, again, you watch the video. I have a, a series of um, file cabinets where they're all stored and organized. And then when one sells, you just reach in, and you take it, and you ship it. So you're not selling the scan. You're just scanning the ad itself to present as a listing for, for your potential buyers. And I give specifics about which, you know, we got, we have to get a listing done here because we have so many new people and it would really probably be very helpful. I have specifics recommended 28,000. There you go. Yeah. The nightmare would be if they have it like turn on us and say, now nah, you, that, you know, even if, a, even if one of those become required, suddenly you just have to, you have to go into 28,000 listings, CSV or not. That's a pain in the neck, but hopefully they never do that to you, Kelly. Yes, the ads sell. No problem. Susan's brand new. There you go. <laughs> welcome to the show, Omnipresent Dawn, out of Canada, folks. Welcome, welcome. Poking a little fun at some uh, stuff we saw last night, but salute. Welcome, welcome. Yes, the almighty dawn, omnipresent, omnipowerful, omnibenevolent. Yep, she's waking up again for this third time today. Thank you, CJ, very much. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> nah, you're just getting warmed up. We got to get a listing for, for, for no one else but Susan. I want her to see this thing. You have 420 listings, required specifics. Recommended, I keep saying required, on the dashboard shows 200. If it was really required, it would not sell anything. No, I get it, totally. But you're saying the number will actually reduce, like the algorithm or whatever we want to say, will um, recognize the fact that you're selling a decent quantity of these things despite the fact that you don't you haven't included these supposed recommended. Is that what you're saying? And that the number will actually come down? That would be wonderful if it's true. You're kind of proving eBay wrong that you don't need to put in, you know, what was the field that you said before, Rutan? Like a year, year range or something stupid? Paper type, you know, it, it's it's ridiculous. It, like I said, it's a big turnoff for me personally. And that I could see for sure, up Memphis Blazer. If you want to highlight a certain element of the card, absolutely. Well, I don't know. How, where do we start counting from, Dawn? That's the question. At least the second. Yeah, some of it, but a lot of it is malarkey. I'd be willing to say, Delvina. All right, everybody, we're going to list. Susan's here. She's ready to roll. She's got questions. 
let us show her what we do. We start by sharing our eBay screen. That's what we start with. So let us do that. Because without that, this whole exercise is pointless. And then we add the screen to the chat. There we go. And then we get rid of this comment thing at the bottom, uh, the banner at the bottom, because it's taking up valuable real estate. So we do this. Thusly. There you go. All right. For the benefit of Susan and everybody else joining for the first time, again, welcome. I really genuinely appreciate you being here. Tell a friend. I got to get to my thousand. Got to get to my thousand. I'm at 730 something subs. Well over the required hours. Everything. Three of the four things were blown past. But this uh, subscription thing still eludes me. So I would really appreciate it if any of you new people, especially reach out to your friends. Let them know if maybe they're interested in this kind of content. Welcome. You know, tell them to come on in. They will be welcomed as friends. And I really mean that. Just ask anybody who's been here constantly, like CJ. CJ's listing. You can list something, Kelly. This is a, it's also inspirational. A lot of people, I've heard this from a bunch of people, and I've fallen prey to this myself too. You watch somebody doing a listing show, it kind of gets your juices going and you start listing yourself. So trains, planes, and automobile, absolutely. Transportation sells, CJ. Little Popeye. <laughs> Sometimes use a couple of zoomed in images, but yeah, no, I, I definitely get that. But I think that's pretty much the exception. You definitely don't need to. That's for sure. I know they used to preach all the time on eBay. I forgot the exact number. You should have at least this amount of pictures on every single listing. Clothing sellers have to do that a lot. They have to populate like, what is it? Up to 12, I think you could do. Thousand listings, but none of this. Susan, I welcome. Lynn on a real point. Well, that's, everybody tells me the RPPC stuff is what you want, but. If I could get past the the fear I have or trepidations that I have regarding listing them because of all these stupid specifics, maybe I would get more into the genre. By the way, speaking of John, what inspired my series on print ads was watching Popeye has a phenomenal series about postcards, kind of a very similar thing. Uh, you know, the Postcards 101, his is an extensive series, like 20 pieces, I believe. Really goes into detail about what to look for, where to get them, you know, everything. Soup to nuts, as I keep saying on postcards, so. I recommend that I rewatch that because I did watch it, but I saved the whole series and I want to get into postcards. I really do. Cause there's kind of a parallel with the print ad stuff. It's sort of, so it's definitely both ephemera. All right, let's do some listing guys. So for the benefit of Susan, anybody else who's new and just the rest of us who dig doing this, what we have today and Susan, again, this is a, you see, I have cell similar, right? Because I do these day and night. This is a, a template that I've kind of just built. And we'll go into some of the, the details on it, but I'm going to pull in my first ad and then we'll go into each step. Let me just take a second. I just, what I do is I just take all the scans and I save them on my computer. I do everything on the computer. I don't do anything on phones at all, but to each their own. I like nice, big, vivid screens. I like the functionality that the website provides that the, the app is like a weak pale comparison. All right. Um, what would be cool for the first ad to show new new people? <laughs> no pressure. Um, oh, we did this one. I have to delete one that I think we did already. Um, sorry. I'm looking at a, a bunch of ads that I have pictures. All right. We'll do this one. Here is the ad itself. We're going to start with that to show everybody again, for especially for people who are new like Susan, anybody else that might be new. This is an advertisement for Lux Toilet Soap. You'll see this all the time. Lux, a very popular brand, especially back then, Depression. This is pre-Depression. This is 1929. So there's the ad, just for everybody's initial look. But let's go into some details. This is the format that I use. Feel free to borrow it. Or feel free to steal it or whatever you got to do or tweak it to your, your own tastes. But it's a good it's a good idea to have like a little template going for yourself, right? Especially if you're first starting. My format is thus, thusly. 19, I always put the year first. So 1929, vintage print ad is automatic in all the listings. The exception would be if the ads are over 100 years, we have collected collectively during many of these shows agreed that we will use the term antique print ad. So we're in 22, right? So theoretically, 1921 and prior, you could put antique print ad. But most of the stuff we've been listing anyway has been in the vintage 
the vintage arena. So 1929 vintage printhead. This is a standard for all of the listings that I'm going to do with this specific magazine. This custom skew field, again, you'll see all this in the videos, is just my own little personal method of keeping things seen and organized. This issue, this magazine is June 1929 edition of Good Housekeeping Magazine. You can see I put the dimensions of the ad so that the people know what they're getting. Because some of those bigger ones that I alluded to earlier, the 16 by 11s and stuff, they're literally like small posters. I've said that a thousand times, but it's true. And a lot of people love those things. They look fantastic framed up um, on somebody's shop or somebody's home. This one is kind of a standard eight and a half by 11 sort of thing, like a standard book. June 1929. So I tell everybody, I, and maybe that's going above and beyond. I don't know that I have to get to that level of minutia, but I like to do it. June 1929, Good Housekeeping Magazine. There's the dimensions, okay? This stuff will go into the little categories. We'll go into, these are my individual store categories, which I just released a really quick video on how to create store categories because I had a, a one or two people request that. Um, it has got a lot of views because I figured most of us that do this know how to do store categories. But if you don't, check out my video. I just did it a day or two ago. But I have my own internal store categories where I keep, again, just keep the uh, volume organized. All these are considered used, even though none of them have been used. They're just sheets of a magazine that's been sitting there forever. But I still put the word use because it's not like it's a new shiny object. My own little thing, perfect for framing, light age toning. Age toning is that brownish hue that can uh, occur over time with paper. That's the term I use, age toning. That's the photo. Speaking of specifics, you'll see that depending on the category that we put the ads in, there could be as little as like two or three specifics and there could be as many as like 10. It really depends on what category you're in. So with that said, we know we have a product called Lux Toilet Soap, right? So after my year, I'm going to put the brand, and this is Lux. Soap de toile, toilet soap, right? So that's my product, 1929 Lux Toilet Soap Vintage Printed. Once I have the brand in there, I'll hit category, change category, and 90% of the time, eBay will come up with a suggested category that applies to your listing. In this case, you'll see as soon as I hit enter, right out of the gate, Collectibles advertising, which is where all these ads live. Collectibles advertising, household soap and detergent. Bam. We select that. It does its thing. And now what I said earlier, depending on what your title is it's and depending on what category you go into, now when we go down to our specifics, it's going to come up with a custom list of required specifics and recommended specifics for this specific. How many times did I just say specific? For this uh, item. Recommended. Interestingly enough, they're all recommended, right? Now, the color for what I do, again, if you want to change it, this is a black and white advertisement, so I write black and white. If it's a color ad, there's a field right there. You see it says frequent multicolor is what I put for every color ad. So it's either going to be black and white or color. It's black and white. Okay, we just populate that because it doesn't come pre-done. Now your buyers can find your items. All these are originals. I have no reproductions. The brand. The brand is the name of the product. This is Lux Soap. Type of advertising. This is a print ad. Data creation is 1929. That's where the magazine comes from. The ad has not been modified. US of A. And the theme, which usually is whatever you put the category in, will be there. Soap and detergent. Do I see Carl? Welcome aboard, Carl. We're going through a structured how-to here. But I'm glad you're here, man. Welcome. Another Canadian. Hold on. See, you know, you go to list. This is the problem with doing listing shows, folks. Then I get 5,000 comments that I have to try to scroll through. Mm. Cool, cool. I see. Sold a postcard today. Hold on. Memphis had a sale. Celery. Oh, I hate celery. Child labor sold a card. Interesting. Very, very good advice, by the way. This is where I said there's a parallel between ads often and postcards is, is like Memphis just said, putting a keyword like that in can make all the difference. You could take a very boring blase advertisement for, you know, peaches or something stupid. But if you see something interesting like that in the background and you use a keyword, it can make all the difference. The huge benefit of doing all these listing shows for these five or six months has been the amount of stuff that I've learned from all of you. And hopefully we've passed on some stuff to you guys. Uh, we all look at these which we're going to do in a minute. We look at the ads in kind of some detail. We look for um, if there's an artist signature on an illustration, we'll dive in and we'll look at the artist. We'll get into detail about the type of clothing the people are wearing, 
that could be a key element too. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of research, but it's, it's all in the name of uh, education and fun. Dawn. Krylov, for any of you new guys. Krylov, how would you define Krylov, Rutan? He's sort of indefinable, but Krylov is the, um, some say God, some say demon of eBay. It's the eBay algorithm has been affectionately named Krylov. You'll have to watch a lot of old shows to, to see the origin of that term, but we've been using it for months. 3,000 real photo. I know ships, people dig ships. Trans as CJ said, transportation, ships, trains, planes, and automobiles. What a great bit of advice right out of the gate. You think Chrome so well because they have detailed images constant. Everybody's talking postcards as I'm sitting here listing. The second best Canadian. No, it's not a competition, man. That sounds like another video, possibly. We're going to rank our Canadians. What do you think, Memphis Boys? Let's do a, let's throw a video together. Top 10 Canadians. You got Wayne Gretzky, Call the Lazy Reseller, and Dawn all in a three-way tie. Yukon Cornelius got to be up there. Up, oh, Carl just sent a neutral feedback revision request issue with the size of the item, not your fault. Do elaborate, sir. Do elaborate. How is the size of an item not your fault? Is it clothing? Is it hard good? Yes, sir. Kelly, next. Uh, sorry, I know a lot of I spoke about that early. It's um the 11th, this coming Thursday, which is not a typical night for me. But again, I'm flexible. Thank goodness. Everybody that's coming on uh, was available that night. So Thursday night, we don't, we haven't nailed down a time. It's probably going to be six or seven start time. Eastern uh, Popeye will be on um, a bunch of people. I think we have five signed up already. I'll announce the full list once everybody signs up, but we can fit up to nine guests, including and, and myself. So it's up to 10 on StreamYard. So I'd love to have uh, nine people right now. I think we have five or six, but it'll be kind of cool. We're all going to basically be talking about the big whatnot event. Next week, call Paper Palooza, but it's a great opportunity for everybody that you know comes in, uh, just to ask questions to a great bunch of individuals, ephemera gurus. We'll all be there. I'll be asking a lot of questions, that's for sure, and I know I'll be learning a lot from everybody, including Popeye. So if anybody has any questions about postcards, do tune in next Thursday. You'll hear it from the King. Not many killing on whatnot today. Oh yeah. Great cards in a uh, blind card show. Yeah, that's cool. Can be, Dawn. You like that? Yukon, sure. <laughs> Jim Floyd, welcome aboard, man. Neil Young, great Canadian. I agree. I saw Neil Young several times. Awesome, Kim. So hang out and... Uh, let me just get through these couple of last things. We'll continue listing this thing. And hopefully once you see a few, you'll see the repetition and stuff. It becomes really um, a pleasant experience. It's, it's an easy thing to list. Give everyone to show off some of what they are selling. You mean in the roundtable thing? Yeah, it's going to be just an open thing. Like I said, the primary reason for this specific show is going to be to talk about the um, the big event, the Paper Palooza event, which will just be a couple of days after that, because uh, we're going on Thursday night, and Paper Palooza starts promptly at 11 a.m. on Saturday. But it's definitely an opportunity to, you know, for everybody to ask questions, show off their uh, tchotchkes. All right. So anyway, back to the listing. Hopefully, I haven't lost anybody as far as uh, the rhythm we were getting with this listing, especially new people like Susan. Susan, but hopefully you see, right? You're putting your title. Excuse me. Year. This is my format. Year, uh, brand, type of item, vintage print ad, and then after that is really the creative portion of the title. You can see we still have 43 characters to play with. We filled in all the specifics that are necessary. Simple, black and white, original, the brand, print ad, year, not modified, country. Nine times out of ten with magazines anyway. No offense to Canada is going to be United States, and the theme is in parallel with whatever category. So soap and detergent. So now is the fun part where we take a look at the ad itself. We look around, right? You have 
It's lux. It's soap. It's an appetizer for soap. A smooth, exquisite sin always skin always brings an answering thrill. Thirty nine Hollywood directors find. So we have some twenty starlets in these two pictures, right? Which unto itself could be a kind of cool little keyword. Um, and I know some of this is kind of tough to see because it's small on YouTube, but it's even small for my eyes. You can see there's a photo credit by C.S. Bell in Hollywood. So sometimes like just something as simple as that photo by C.S. Bell Hollywood. Um, depending on like how deep you want to get into the um, details of your ad, it might be worth taking a second and looking up who the heck is C.S. Bell. Maybe he's some renowned photographer that did, you know, the first ever photograph of some famous movie star, something like that. Sometimes it's worth putting them in. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just like, okay, it's just some, you know, general run-of-the-mill sort of a photographer who's not really famous. So it's always worth like looking at names. You can see right on the left side, for instance, Eleanor Boardman in a garden light bathroom, which is one of the most charmingly original scene in Hollywood. Does anybody know who Eleanor Boardman is? She might be an actress from the 20s, maybe a silent film star. I don't know. Um, there's another starlet down there. So that's like just at a high level of certain things we're looking for. Is like, is that is that Joan Crawford in 1929? If so, that would be worth mentioning for sure and could add value. So you look for things like that. You just take a high level overview. Here's the ad. What do I see? I see a picture of two Hollywood starlets. Um, a lot of times the ads, like if, if you're at a loss for anything like significant, like in this case, these two Hollywood actresses, sometimes just literally writing a smooth, exquisite skin always brings the answering thrill. You could just do that in your title if you want. If you're kind of at a loss, if there's nothing spectacular in the image itself or anything that jumps off the page, you can get away with just kind of copying whatever their little tagline is. But let me go back to, uh the chat for just a second to see if anybody had any thoughts on this, but this is where we, this is the fun part of the show where we kind of collectively think about and discuss uh, the ad itself. And if there's anything anybody wants to mention, like, Oh, I see that's Joan Crawford. Or, oh, her hairstyle is called a Bob or, you know, things like that. All of which um, add marketability, if you will, to your advert, to your uh, ad. If it's a local brand, do you put the name of the city in the title? Uh, I would have to think of a good example for that. Um, if it's something pretty like obscure, I guess I would. Sure. If it's like known for a, a, a special product in a special town, I might. Which I think is what Dawn just said. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, we have finally moved into our downsized little house. Oh, only allowed to sell ephemera. There you go. Awesome. Congratulations on the new place on downsizing. Yep. You will. You will. Art. There we go. Root and chiming in. Art Deco Bathroom. What a phenomenal point, as always, Ruben. But uh, again, for Susan, anybody else new or anybody that hasn't seen the videos or anybody who's interested in this field a little bit, what a phenomenal point. Art Deco bathroom. Uh, styles are huge. Movements, uh, artwork, um, building architecture type things we could bring up too. Um, if, if that's like a porcelain sink, you can mention that. If that's a, I don't even know what's going on there. If that painting on the wall is something specific, you can mention that. It's actually a very cool looking sink. Almost looks like an opening of a flower or something. I'd love to see what that looked like in color. But, you know, there's lots of elements. Most of the ads have lots of things to pull from. And then it becomes a matter of determining what you think your buyer would be attracted by. What, what sort of keywords will attract the most people? You'll also find sometimes an ad like this, right? Lux soap. Not the most exciting thing in the world to borrow soap. But you might be able to bring in collectors of other things into your soap ad. Like if people collect art and deco material of any kind, they're suddenly going to be interested in your soap ad. The, the product becomes secondary. I've said that many times, but it's true. Sometimes the product is secondary. Uh, an example I use all the time is dogs. If you see a dog, a German Shepherd, a Collie, or whatever, a Cocker Spaniel, in an advertisement of any kind, reference that it's a Cocker Spaniel, reference that it's a German Shepherd. There's people that are just avid collectors of German Shepherd stuff, and they'll buy anything under the sun that has a German Shepherd on it. That's just an example, but a good one. If you see dogs, if you see babies, if you see uh, Uncle Sam, you know, there's so many things that just stick out. Um, it could be in any advertisement, but you want to say that this has um, one of those kind of key things that other people could. That's the whole idea. You want to get multiple eyes on your ad and multiple collector groups interested in your advertisement, not just the people that want Lux soap, you know, 
You want to attract uh, Hollywood, just Hollywood in general. The fact that they mentioned Hollywood four times, obviously people collect old Hollywood stuff. They don't care that it's a soap ad necessarily. They care, oh, this is really cool. It has some old actress on it. Uh, art deco. So anyway, with that said, yes, Rutan with keen eye saying it's an art deco bathroom. CJ is saying, is that a sink? Yes, it looks like to be a bathroom sink. Good question, Kim. Have we looked up his name? Exactly. A trumpet flower. Yeah, it looks like a floral. Yeah, it looks like the end of a trumpet too. That's cool. Good looking. Eleanor. Yeah, I'll pull that name up again for you. Do I only have one, what, eBay store? Yes. Whatever furniture style the sink exemplifies. Yes, exactly. And cats are popular, Susan. You're right. Cats, dogs, pets in general. Uh, everything is. Parrots. I mean, it sounds silly, but um, animal... Animal groups as a whole, frogs, people just collect frog stuff, elephants. I mean, there's just, you name it, people collect it. That's another thing you learn the more you do this. People collect the wackiest stuff. But when you find a collector that's into that stuff, you have a fan for life, you know? And that's what I was saying earlier on in the uh, program. Um, sometimes you'll find one guy or gal that comes in and loves, you know, let's say that's called a trumpet style sink. I have no idea. Oh my God, I collect trumpet style sink heads, right? If you happen to have 10 of those in your store, they might run the table and buy all 10. So that's kind of cool. You'll definitely see that with uh, much more so with like what I was saying earlier, like dog ads or, you know, an ad with a collie in it. There's people out there that collect everything with a collie. There's people that collect any cat related item. Um, like I said, for some reason, uh, frogs are very popular and elephants. Trumpet bell, flared sink, all sound appropriate. You forgot her name? Eleanor Blair. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me pull the name up again. I thought I said it, right? Not Eleanor Rigby. Good call, Memphis. Let's see. Is that the right name? I'll make the picture bigger again. Uh, last name is actually Boardman. B-O-A-R-D-M-A-N. Eleanor Boardman. We can see if Miss Boardman is a... A uh, actress of any renown, and actually, I'm gonna put on the glasses. You could, that's the main one with the sink, but you see at the bottom left, there's a lady with like going like this with a spotlight on her. That would be exquisite, uh, Paramount star Mary Bryan. So, we have two actresses to look up right now, and I'm sorry if my voice is very loud, I'm right up against the microphone. We have Eleanor Boardman. And we have a Paramount movie star, Mary Bryan, at the bottom left. So we have two actresses that potentially could be, you know, at the time might have been famous. Silent film actress. Which one? Boardman? So right out of the gate, as always, Dawn Wright, we are going to put silent movie actress. And it might be actresses, depending on both of them. I'm sure most people understand that silent film, silent movie collectors, there was a, a rabid group of people that love that stuff. Another instance of where the fact that it's a toilet, uh, <laughs> toilet, a Lux soap ad is irrelevant. They just want um, silent movie stars or silent movie memorabilia. All right, so we got Boardman is dead. Married the both, both of them. Is anyone more famous? I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to make everybody do all this legwork for me, but it's just what I'm listing. It's really cool when you guys look this stuff up. It just speeds along the process. Um, you know, are both of them equally famous at the time? Is one more famous than the other one? The second lady, they, they mentioned the fact Paramount Star. All right. So she got into the talky era a little bit, Memphis, right? Thanks, Susan. Yeah, this is where we get into the, the weeds a little bit, but it's often very, very helpful. And whereas the average person just thumbing through a, a magazine might just say, oh, it's a, a soap ad, you know, next. But all of a sudden, you're like, oh, wait a minute, there's two silent film stars in there, and you definitely want to mention that. So I have silent movie actresses. We may be putting both of their names in here, which would, if we could fit them. Anybody know who, who would you say, based on your research, anyone who's looking, is more famous of the two because if one of them is more famous than the other i would uh want to you know put their name in there prominently 
Boardman has a star on the Walk of Fame. Get out. All right, we're going to go Eleanor Boardman. It's up the rice. Look at that. Just by filling out Eleanor Boardman, we're left with a measly two characters. So we've the goal is often to try to fill as many of those characters in as you can on your title. Take advantage of the, what's the number we've, we've discussed? It's 40 or so. Whatever they give you, try to take advantage. Oh, she had a much longer career, CJ. And there's ways around this. You know, we can't fit both of them in the title. However, we could put, you know, in a series of places, we could actually, in the description even, put, if we wanted to, if it was somebody famous, maybe put both of their names in the description. That's up to you. I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm just going to put, I think just the fact that we have silent movie actress in there, which now we can make actress singular, if I can spell. Spelling is not included in this lesson. No demerits for spelling. That's why we have spell check. But anyway, seriously, um, in this case, I'm just going to put Eleanor Boardman. And the fact that we have a silent movie actress should attract some people to the listing. So that's hopefully this is helpful, especially for Susan, because she's been the one that's been the most uh, pronounced in her um, desire to learn about this from scratch, kind of. So hopefully this makes some sense, Susan. We'll do a bunch of them. I usually do you know, a whole two or three hour show just doing this. Paramount is not a bad idea at all, by the way, Kim. Um, but again, when you look at what I have in there, like there's really isn't that much wiggle room to put that in, but that's a great idea because you're right. People could absolutely be collecting stuff from Paramount Studios, but hopefully everybody gets the idea here. You know, this first one for all my regulars, I know this is redundant to an extent, but we always go into this deep dive into the photos. That's for sure. Into the listings. Also, Susan, do you see the difference? Like that's one of the, you know, I, I scan this. Now, this is only 8.5 by 11, so it fits in my duplex scanner, which I have right here, which is an Epson ES400, by the way. Um, I think it's like three or 400 DPI in this one. You don't have to go crazy because I know eBay does, unfortunately, uh, cap sort of your DPI limit. I don't know what it is exactly, but it doesn't really pay to go super, super high because they're still going to uh, compress it to fit it into their... Um, whatever their programming is. So, but with that said, it's a nice clear vivid ad. It can be blown up. Another really important point I want to make for especially anybody who's new into this is the fact if you list anything in collectibles, which this certainly is, right? We have collectible advertising uh, through some trial and error and some confirmation and the fact that I've never been billed for it. Your photos, you see this little field right here, display a large photo in search results with gallery plus fees may apply. There are no fees in collectibles. I have 2,000 something of these. And trust me, if there was a fee, it would be like, I think it's a dollar a piece. So it would be a $2,000 bill for me, which I've never had. So do feel free to use this feature. It's very nice benefit of doing uh, postings and collectibles, listings and collectibles. So make sure that's ticked. I keep that on everything. And it really does present a huge vivid image for your potential buyer showmanship, all that kind of stuff. Marketing, right? It's important. That's the name of the game, especially when you're in a fairly competitive field. I'm not the only one doing this, obviously. And you want anything you can do to stand out, maybe go that extra mile and pull Eleanor Boardman out of the out of the annals of uh, movie history and feature her here on this ad all of a sudden, 90 years later. Yes, that's true too. See, it says fee zero. Good point there, Kim. But yeah, I, I've done this so long. I know there's no fees, but that's a great point. You could see if you were ever going to have a, you know, if there was a fee to be charged, like if you selected, what's the other one you could do at the top? Um, a second category, something. Oh, subtitle is two bucks. I don't know who uses that and why you would use it, but there's certain things that have automatic fees. All right. So when we're done with this, hopefully it gives everybody that's new a high level overview of, of what we do. We hit list item. And then I just keep this going because it's it's always going to be the same basic stuff for me. And I just do create similar. And we get rid of everything except for 1929 and vintage print ad. And we take out the picture. This one. You see, just one photo. Okay, I see a lot of comments coming in. I like the idea of Paramount, though, Kim, absolutely. Great success for Boardman was the crowd, 1928. Awesome, man. Thank you very much. 
So hopefully, you know, I'm not saying that she's going to have like this huge fan club or anything like that, but it's, it's an actress that was very famous at the time and you never know. And silent film, uh, the whole genre is popular. So that's what we're going to try to appeal to is people that are not just going to be collecting soap ads. They're going to be collecting, um, in this case, this individual actress or the whole industry of the silent film industry. Dawn made a funny. Where's Dawn's funny? Oh, Dawn, Eleanor Broadman, over her trumpety sink. She did lean. At least it was clean. <laughs> it's funny. It's another t-shirt, Dawn. Marketplace, Jody, how you doing? In a walk, listening with dog. Oh, cool. Very cool. Have you been listening all night and you just decided to say hi or did you just chime in now? Either way, welcome. Um, yeah, that is the actual ad, Susan. That was the advertisement. Yep. I'm listing physical pieces of paper. So I'm just scanning that physical piece of paper. That's the picture you just saw. I keep the physical piece of paper in a drawer labeled with that skew field that I showed you. So I know where to go get it when it sells. So yeah, the, the ad is actually, that's the, uh, the scan. Yep, and Kim brings out the point. Absolutely, check at the bottom if you have any of those stupid things accidentally filled in, like bolding and subtitles. And and in most cases, if you're not listing collectibles, I think it is a buck to do the uh, blown up image that the uh, image what is called Gallery Plus. Kelly's saying bold four bucks. My God. Yeah, I know. I just went up and caught it. Sorry. Yep, exactly, Susan. Great point. Yep, absolutely. Theater people would like it. It's a tune of Ellen Rigby. Yep. Just up from a nap. Pulling a dawn right and waking up at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Good for you. Get some rest. I see, Dawn. I see, I see, I see. Hey, Europe, they nap every day, right? Siesta? But it's not at eight, 7, 8 o'clock at night. It's like lunchtime. All right, so again, for Susan and everybody else, let's do another one. And you will definitely start to see some patterns and things will become less mysterious as we go on. Who was on my show? A lot of you guys were on Monday. Do you remember if we listed an ad for a refrigerator? I think we did, right? Where it was like a lady was sitting in front of a refrigerator and using it as an air conditioner. Do you guys remember that? I am jealous, Don, because I don't sleep at all. So God bless you with your siestas. Anybody remember if we listed that ad? I'm pretty sure we talked about it. It was like a picture of a, a guy and a lady sitting in front of a, um, a very small refrigerator. I just don't want to pull it up if we already listed it. I'm pretty sure we talked about this, but for some reason I didn't leave it from my folder. So please chime in if you remember. It was a, a refrigerator ad with a lady in front of it cooling off. Let's go to another one. Here's a kind of cool one. So we'll present the image quickly. Same magazine. And Susan, again, yes, this is an official piece of paper. This is the ad. So this is the a scan of the entire advertisement. This is for a hot point range, a stove, I guess, right? This electric maid frees the electric maid frees the modern mother from her kitchen. Now are the glorious days when all nature is calling you outdoors. So anyway, it's an advertisement for a hot point um, range. Very common. Here's a cute stove. I agree very much so. Kim. All right, so this is our next item up for bid here. Take a give it a quick gander, and then we will go through the nuts and bolts of getting the basic stuff uh, listed. You do okay, Jody. I thought we did that one. I don't know why I forgot to delete it. Once I list the uh, advertisement, like we just listed the previous one, I go in and I delete the photo from my, you know, my uh, my folder. And for some reason, that one was still in there. I'm like, I could have sworn we listed that. All right, so there we go. Hot point. Again, just repetition. It's the best way to learn. 1929, hot point. Just by putting hot point in, in this case, I want to say, go down to the category and hit change. Bam. You see it says, again, we're always going to live in collectibles and advertisement. And the, the chain here, household appliances. Perfect. Click on that. Oh, you know what I did fail to mention? I'm sorry. What was the last one? Soap, right? All right. Well, uh, these are my proprietary my my store categories right i have two of them 
all of the ones for this magazine are going to be print ads 1920s. So I have a whole category uh, set up with 1920s print ads. And then the top one for this one is household items. I don't have an appliances category. I mean, you could get lost. I think I have like 25 or more categories within print ads. I don't have everything under the sun. So some of them like this, like um, I'm trying to think, there's another example. I have one that's called like personal care items or something, which can encompass, you know, 20 different types of things. Uh, this, this all goes into household items in my store. So I forgot to mention that last time. The soap really should have been personal care products. But anyway, I can fix that. There's, that's just my own bookkeeping sort of. GH19, always going to be a standard. That's this magazine. It's my, and just, I don't think I mentioned this. It stands for Good Housekeeping, GH19, which means this is the 19th Good Housekeeping magazine uh, that I've listed ads from. All right, so we have Hot Point. We are in the appliances category. So let's fill out some of these basics here again. You can see in this case, it filled out the brand for us. Cool. This is a multicolor ad, even though it's really kind of a um, black and white which definitely has some age toning, as we alluded to. See how the brownish hue that the paper takes on? Age toning. It's almost like, what do you call that? Uh, sepia, almost. But it does have a, a smidge of orangish, reddish. So we're going to go with multicolor. Again, it's original. Every single one of my ads are original. Hot point. It is a print ad. It's from 1929. It's not been modified. It's from the US of A. No offense, Canadians. The theme would be appliances. All right. So that's it. That takes care of the, uh, you know, the specifics for this guy. Now we'll go back to the picture, just kind of like last time. Let's look around. Um, I do want to mention the fact, what are we calling this? World's largest manufacturer of electric ranges. So we're going to say range. Hot point electric range. I want to put stove as well. Feel free to, Jody. Age toning. It's uh, it's an actual term. The brownish hue that paper can take on. All righty. Um, electric range. Let's take a look at the picture. Oh man, look at Kim. Kim Kim is getting into some details. Hold on. Let me uh, go back. By the way, thank you, CJ and Deal Finder. Yes, I did list that one. It is a cute stove. I agree. You remember the fridge ad. Thank you very much. Susan, reason why you ask about scan picture is you sell vintage patterns and some may have yellowed or stained and cleaned, scanned and not real. Yeah, that's uh that's not cool. I would I mean I guess I, I get the point with that one, but yeah, these are all just individual actual sheets of paper that I'm scanning for the purposes of getting a listing up. And I'm not selling the scan. I'm selling the image, the actual uh, piece of paper. What's kind of cool is a lot of these ads, I mean, you don't see it on this one, but if you flip it over, sometimes people get two for one. They'll have another ad on the other side. And that can come in, again, watch the video and you'll see about that when we pull the magazines apart. But anyway, sometimes you have to make a decision what you th think is a more uh, marketable like, let's say, I, for whatever reason, I determined Hot Point. If this page had, like, um, an ad for string beans on the other side or something like that, you know, I probably said, well, I think Hot Point would be more popular. So, But it's always nice to uh, for a potential buyer that they, they make it two ads, and it's their choice. If they say, hey, wait a minute, I love string beans. I want to put my string beans up. Go for it. Wouldn't worry too much. Yes, we all sadly deal with it. Yeah, well, I know. Most people... Without question. And I also have that little caveat in there that every single ad might can, and that doesn't mean they all do, but I always say may have age toning and stuff like that. You kind of cover yourself a little with that. And I totally agree with Kelly. The, the, it's a good group of people that buy these kind of things, these old collectibles. Then you're not going to, I mean, again, I say this and then I worry about jinxing myself. You're not going to find many scam artists trying to find, you know, an 80 year old sheet of paper for a kitchen stove. It's just not going to happen. You know, the people that want this stuff really do want them. They're interested in it. They see it. It's definitely, um, it's extremely transparent. That's the ad. You see on the left side of this one, you'll see those little staple marks. Sometimes when I, if it sells, I'll go ahead and I'll trim that. And you'll see it in my video too. I have a very nice trimmer that I use. I'll trim off that edge if they would like, and it just makes it more presentable. But, um, you know, what you see is what you get. I, that's why I do the scans. It's not some lousy image, like I said, from the ceiling of a squished up piece of paper on the floor with somebody's toes in the picture. 
It's not what you're getting with me. You get a nice vivid scan, a high DPI scan. So they know exactly what they're getting. And often the physical item looks better than the scan. Like a little, like the browning that you see here, the age toning, it might be amplified slightly by the scanner because it's such a, a high res scan. It might not be that brown in reality. So some, it's always a case of uh, the expectation is there and sometimes you exceed expectations with the actual product, which is kind of cool. You definitely want, don't want to do the opposite. You don't want to hype up your thing and then you give them a piece of joke. With the one, the furniture style period needs to be mentioned. Is that right, Kim? Art Deco, yes. Queen and details. Wonderful. I like that. So if that was your ad, that's what you would put in. I would definitely do that too. It's just we had so many other things. to. I, I decided to go with the uh, the silent film element. But that's a great point, Kim. Absolutely. And then we, we do this on all these shows. We look at things like that. Furniture, art styles. You'll see probably soon clothing, fashions. Um, all that kind of stuff. Some people will alter the scanned image to hide imperfections. That's a foolish move, by the way. Yep. Exactly. Amen, Kelly. I mean, look at this picture, folks. Is there anything to hide in this? It's also a little bit off center, which I'm not happy. See how it looks like it's slightly tilted to the right? But there it is. You know, it's in really good shape. I, As a general rule, I won't. if it has a tear on it or anything, I'm not going to list it. And the good thing about my... my uh, paper cutter is I can uh, remove some imperfections. You usually have a lot of wiggle room on the border. Like just look at this example right here, right? Those staple marks, which again, I say could be in there because it's, they were all stapled into a magazine, right? Um, at my discretion, I might cut this off. Like I might just cut like right down here. You still have the, as long as the image isn't impacted, obviously, right? Or the, the heart of the ad, most of the magazines, you have like a nice little border to play with. So if it's a little bit wrinkled or something, do not despair. You can uh, use one of my handy-dandy paper cutters, which I mentioned in several videos too, which one I use. It's huge. Um, we'll take care of that really quickly. And on my WhatNot auctions, August 13th at 1 p.m., part of Paper Palooza, you'll see I'm going to be giving, uh, I'm going to be auctioning off a lot of these ads in bundles like this, and they're all going to be trimmed for you and everything. So it's, it's really dummy proof. You're just going to get these things be able to throw them through a scanner and list, list, list. So I'm a big fan of quality. I don't like to give people junk. I don't want to receive junk. So I don't give out junk. Retro pink. Is that a, is that the uh, color you think? Yes. Jody can steal my term. Good call on the legs. I agree. Elbow call. <laughs> Oh, big time. You know, I always scan. Yes, I do scan. You don't have to. And a lot of the phones nowadays have, um, I know iPhones certainly have uh, within the notepad app, there is a scanning function within that. So you can get away with that. I don't recommend everybody go out and spend hundreds of dollars on this equipment. I always talk about that too. If you get to a point where you're making some good money on them and you see a, a future in doing these things in, in a large volume, then I definitely recommend because it'll make your world a lot easier if you have the equipment. Uh, the scanners, like this duplex scanner for this guy. I mean, I listed, how many did I have? We listed, let's say like 30 ads I got from this magazine. I threw them in my duplex scanner and had all 30 scanned in like 30 seconds, 45 seconds. So it makes a world of difference instead of standing over each one with a phone. But again, I would recommend you get to a point where you where it justifies buying a more high-end uh, piece of equipment. Don't go out and buy all this stuff and then say, oh my God, I'm in the hole $1,000. I better start selling some ads. Yeah, I definitely scan. Dawn Wright. Yeah, she knows about the. You got if any of you guys buy um, items or go to source on Facebook Marketplace, like Dawn and I see every day, it's unbelievable how many times people will take pictures. And I know Dawn, uh, not Dawn. Facebook Marketplace usually isn't going to be like us, you know, re pro resellers or anything like that. It's usually just people trying to get rid of stuff in their house, so they're not. Maybe they're not as uh, meticulous about photography and and presentational, but we have this ongoing joke with Don and I with people with their feet in the pictures, like all the time, just all the time, like just sticking there. It's just so silly. Drives me nuts. One of my pet peeves. Kitchen Frito, Fredo, it was you. Electric made in the body of the copy. Read the little. I okay. I'd be happy to. Kitchen frame. We're going to look into all this when we look at the picture. I'm just trying to catch up with uh, with some chat. You think she's talking about this one? 
Yes, because that's don't put all that effort on the front end. Put it one once they sell, trim them. I mean, it depends within reason, right? The beautiful thing about scanning, and this is actually a poor example, truth be told. I should have you can electronically trim them really easily, you know, just go in and, and trim it, trim the image, you know, where you could crop it and you could crop out like in this instance of this picture, you could crop out the staple marks if you want. But I, I don't recommend doing any of that stuff until the thing actually sells. Just try to scan them and getting up, get them up. And then if they sell, same thing goes for me with records. Like I, I have a professional record cleaning machine. So I always clean the records, which again, just so everybody knows, when you say clean the record, it gets rid of fingerprints and dust. It's not, if it has a scratch, it has a scratch. So, uh, but I'll always clean them, but I'm not going to clean them before I list them because that's just a, t a time suck. A lot of effort. And, and oftentimes you're going to have to redo it anyway when it sells because depending on how you store them. So this is kind of along the same lines. I'll, you know, I'm not going to put up a, a scan that has like a wrinkled, ripped, tattered edge. Obviously, I'll trim that one. But um, the good stuff, like the really fine detail trimming, I'll do that once they sell before I ship it out. It's just, I just think it's a, there's a time benefit to it. Because you could conceptually, I might list this tonight. It might sit in my drawer for a year or two and not sell. Goodness knows how many, how some junk on whatnot buys. So don't put up with report. Oh, you've gotten some junk on whatnot. Really? Not from me. I promise you, Susan, if you're interested in this, you could ask a few people in here have bought multiple items from me on whatnot. I'm a big fan of that. Sincerely, like quality. I'm not going to, why put up junk? I mean, nobody wants your junk. <laughs> Photographer feet. Was that a new uh, term? Just bought a bunch of life off Facebook dollar each. Yes. Good job, Jody. Um, you'll see it in my video. For all of you who haven't seen the video, I think the first, very first episode of my video series about printing, as I talk about how we got into this, it was probably, it's a little less than even Jody who got a great deal. We got a, I don't remember the numbers anymore because I keep saying it, but it was, it wound up being 650 magazines, I believe for 300 bucks. I think something like that. So it was like less than 50 cents per, but that's a great, you know, a dollar each needless to say you sell one ad and you'll make 15 times your investment. Just think about that. Everybody. That is really exciting. Get them up, Jody list, list, list. All right, guys. Um, let's go back to this groovy hot point range. Give a gander. We're always looking for, like a bunch of people have alluded to already, the styles. Um, if you see any, like there's a really small image up here to the right. It looks like, you know, the, the thing was a electric maid frees the modern mother from her kitchen. Now you can go outside and play. So there's a little boy playing with like a sailboat in a, a fountain or something like that. And mom's sitting there reading the paper, watching. There's so many little nuances you could find. Um, the electric made for modern mother. That That's their tagline. The electric made for modern mothers. GE Appliance says Kim. Very good. Actually, at this point, it was called Edison Electric. It wasn't GE. Oh, yeah. Down below, it does say GE. You're right. Edison Electric Company. And then there's the GE emblem. So very good call there. Might even want to put Mr. Edison in there. Tom's a fine guy and, and collectible. But at a high level, we have this hot point electric range, finished by that. So now it's a matter of do we want to talk about the style of this room? Do we want to talk about, you know, put GE in there? Do you want to put Thomas Edison in there? Do we want to put the electric made for modern mothers in there? Yep. Well, Con Edison is the uh, electric company in New York I grew up with. So Edison's been highly involved and still is, even though he's long dead and buried or cremated. I don't know how his final disposition was. But. So what do you guys think? What would you put in? We always have the fallback of the, uh, the electric maid for modern mothers, which is actually very cool. Because really, that's the theme of this entire ad, the fact that it frees mom from the kitchen. She can go out and watch her son play with a sailboat. Now are the glorious days when all nature is calling you outdoors. Con Ed was around forever, Kim. Ugh. 
Many of you know who watch channel. I used to work in the World Trade Center and in the 93 bombing, the first one, I worked on the fourth floor in five World Trade Center and everybody thought when it first happened that it was a Con Ed plant that had blown below us. That was the first rumor that a Con Ed plant blew. Turned out to be wrong. Very good point also. Memphis, absolutely cool tagline, but who's going to search for the electric maid? That's a very valid point. So I'm throwing it out to the group. Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry you had some bad experiences too, Susan, on uh, on whatnot. It's the Wild West right now over there. I've been very lucky. I mean, I've had really, and I've sold multiple, you know, the vinyl stuff. I did a CD show. I've done ephemera shows. And every time without fail, I've had really nice people in there with me. No idiots. Nobody's like screaming and yelling. No spam. Again, I'm jinxing myself. But so far, so good. I think I've done seven or eight shows now. And everybody's been very nice. Just like all the people in my room here are all very nice. All right, so any ideas um, regarding? Let me just check something really fast. Um, regarding some key terms, keywords that we can use in this one. I'm wide open for suggestions. I was, in fact, on. Yes, I was. I was. So after two, I was like, I'm out of here. You're about $400 over all of my whatnot purchases. Items coming in either missing because the box was there. Hey, Mother's Mustache. Welcome aboard, by the way, Ansley. Welcome, welcome. Um, it's in the appliance category, Memphis Places. So I don't know if it's redundant to use the term appliance again because it's in the category. But it's not a bad thought. I'm sorry, you guys have had bad experiences. See, I haven't the I haven't bought much at all, honestly. You know who I bought from? I bought from I bought uh, two or three lots of postcards from Popeye, so I know who I'm buying from. It's not going to be junk. I bought uh, two records from Auction Professor. I know them. I know I'm not going to get junk. I haven't bought anything from somebody I don't know, um, and that shouldn't have to be the case. Truth be told, you should be able to buy with confidence. But uh, I haven't had any bad experiences from a purchasing perspective at all. Thank goodness. Hot point electric maid. I like that too. It's pre-depression. Well, yeah, this one's pre-depression by a couple of months. Retro pink, huh? You've used that term twice. Retro. Pink. There's a term that's well known uh, is 50s pink. You'll see it a lot. It's an actual color. 50s pink and there's a, let's say like a baby, baby blue, baby pink kind of color. You'll see a lot of homes still now. Um, when we go to estate sales, so many of the bathrooms that we go to there in 50s pink, the tile, the bathtub itself. It's very cool. Always do a test purchase under 20. That's a good idea. Hey, Tommy, welcome back, man. Ansley is running a multi-million dollar whatnot scam. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's hope not. She's crafty. Ansley says, or broken because ceramic plant is required. Because well, is that and you know the thing is, um, I'm I think it's fair to say that most of the people on whatnot, from selling and buying perspectives, are resellers. A lot, I think it's the vast majority of people out there. So you would think most of the people that pass that highly scrutinized uh, application process, haha, coughs and elbow, as somebody else wrote, for whatnot, you would think that they would have. Um, you know, a decent background in reselling and know how to ship things properly. So it's hard. It's sad to hear that people are shipping lousily like that and carelessly. Not cool. Heavy hello back. Sal's Mercado. What's going on, man? Ciao. Yeah, it's awful. Uh-oh. Here we go. Hang on. <laughs> Did we have a big one? Drum roll required, Ansley? If remember, can we... I agree totally, Memphis. But it's another, you know, feather in our collective caps here with the ephemera thing. Again, while we're doing this um, paper palooza, I guarantee you the 23, I think it's 23 right now, 23 people involved are all reputable dealers. You're probably going to know almost everybody by name. Um, and trust me, they will be crucified. If any one of us, uh, you know, wound up selling shoddy stuff or shipping it badly, we will be crucified. So, Pressure's on kind of with everyone amongst each other. We're keeping each other in line. We want to make sure. Another cool thing about this that's interesting 
I don't anticipate any problems whatsoever, but like my show's at one o'clock and then whoever's on after me that starts at two, I'm going to be a moderator in their uh, auction. And then the person that goes on at two is going to moderate the next chat. So like we're all, it's to keep each other, it's to keep every show right at that one hour. We all promised together that we would only do an hour each. We have a t an hour time slot. Don't want to get greedy and keep it like, let's say, I know it's going to be tempting if you're selling up a storm, you're going to want to stay on, but it's a, it's a one-time event for two days. We're going to stick to the one hour, hard stop, and kind of introduce and recommend to anybody that might be in your room, hey, go check out my buddy Sal. He's coming on at 2 o'clock. So it should be a lot of fun. And you're right. It's all ref it's very reputable people. Congratulations, Sal's. Sal, Sal's. Salvatore, way to go. Make us all proud. Do a good job. What do you sell, Sal? Biggest loss, the antique sterling that isn't even silver. Yeah. Oh, my God. Really? Holy cow. <laughs> you call that one of the postcard deals for not turning the cards the right way before shipping. <laughs> Who would that be, Memphis Blazer? Yeah. You don't want to be a snobbish buyer either. Let's be honest. Come on, people. Well, there you go. I think you got uh, Dawn is going to be your first buyer, right? Dawn's a big fan. When times get desperate, why not? They messed up on purpose. How you doing, Ainsley? What is one is famous husband wife team sells teas, vintage hand hides behind mystery lot and hypes up hundreds in there and people raise prices then stops. Oh my God. That's yeah. That's just awful to think that people would be doing that kind of stuff. You're going to sell all the postcards you have in your headquarters. Oh, that's awesome. Good luck. It's a, uh, it's definitely a, um, who was using the term last night? I was watching an auction professor and he was saying that uh, somebody put a, a comment in that the postcard market is flooded and he kind of shot that down. I agree with him. It's not, there's a lot of postcards for sale. Certainly millions of them, 6 million, I think Dawn, right? You looked up last night. Um, but that doesn't mean there's 6 million like postcards. I mean, most postcards are a, a decent amount of them are one of a kinds or, you know, relatively scarce. Sure. There's some, um, overly produced ones, mass produced ones, but, it's not like there's 6 million of the same item. That would be flooded. Like if there was 6 million blue ballpoint pens on, you know, then that's a different thing. But the postcard marketplace, there's a lot of items, but I wouldn't say it's a flooded marketplace because there's a lot of original items within there. Uh-oh, who's lurking? Yeah, that is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll all tune in for that. Can you just speed on a credit card? That's a good point. Can you? Yeah, I don't know. I, I certainly don't want to speak for whatnot. I'm pretty new to it too. I'm only uh, about two months in now. But I don't know what their, um, you know, say what you want about eBay, but at least they have some um, mechanisms mechanisms in place to deal with stuff like that, to, you know, with scams. I mean, again, say what you want because it's, it can be tough, but. I know they always side with the buyer 99.9% .9 of the time, but at least they have some, you know, restrictions in place and they have some uh, methodology in place to handle this kind of stuff. I don't know what whatnot has. I don't know if you do get truly scammed or get shoddy stuff sent to you. I don't know what your recourse is. There's no, I don't think you can return something. You know what I mean? I don't know what whatnot's. Uh, it's also relatively new and I'm sure they'll come up with stuff and evolve from that aspect, if God forbid they do get a lot of people like this that are scamming others and hopefully they'll be dealt with swiftly and it won't be a black eye for the whole community. He's trying to dump bad cards on whatnot. Is that right? I don't know. Yeah. Dell camp. Isn't that incredible? 40 million listings. Where is that? They're out of, uh, I'm probably wrong. Like Denmark or something, right? Aren't they like in a Scandinavian country or something? I might be wrong about that. Yeah. Don't bash anybody. That's not cool. Except me. You can bash me. I'll just delete you. Pulling Kevin. Whatnot has rules for unhappy. Oh, do they? Okay. Do you know what those are, Ansley? Like any kind of level of detail? 
People still showing their goods in order to sell their goods. Showing off their goods in order to sell their goods. What do you mean by that, Don? You filed a claim with whatnot and sent back to whatnot, so they saw it immediately. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it's not awesome that you had a bad experience, but it's good to know that they uh, they handled it like that. That's wonderful. No, I know. No problem. Got emailed them with pictures within 48 hours. Okay, so they... I'm sure we could find something um, out there in their little bylaws. Or, you know, eBay has their, uh, what is it called? Terms of sales or whatever thing that you acknowledge when you sign up with eBay. You agree to play by their rules, their ever-changing rules. I'm sure they have an equivalent or whatnot. But that's good to know that at least they will uh, take care of you if you do get screwed like that. Poor innocent Marty. <laughs> Your mail is delivered two times a week. If she leaves the pink slip to pick up at the post office, she's marked as delivered. I talked about this earlier on the show. The only thing I'm not thrilled with on whatnot um, is the whole shipping piece of it. It's a little bit fishy because it's all behind the scenes. You don't see anything. It's just net money. You build up a shipping profile. You put your items into a shipping, a predetermined shipping profile that they provide to you. And uh, your buyer pays a boatload of money for shipping, depending on what you're selling them and how much it weighs and how many things they buy. And you print off your label. That's it. There's no ability, like I said, at least eBay, if you um, if you overcharge inadvertently or whatever, if you get a huge discount, and let's just say you want to offer a discount to your buyer as a thank you or whatever. You don't have that ability and whatnot. It's cut and dry, and it's all behind the scenes. You just print your label and ship it. You don't know what your label cost. It's just gone. There is a little bit of ease in that, too, because you don't have to worry about it all. Just print your label, you know, but I don't like that. It just it opens the door for some shenanigans, and I'm not a fan of that. But, again, they're still pretty new, extremely popular, and I'm sure they'll evolve and come up with um, creative solutions to any of these Potential problems. Oh, get out of here. Really? You know, they have that little button you could tick on whatnot that says uh, warning this. You, you, it's up to you to select it or not. That says you, you're uh, basically that you might curse or something like that. This might have adult content. So I guess they don't really care about girls stripping on whatnot. Who knows? If you, if you check off that thing, you might say, hey, I said there might be some shenanigans going on. You never looked at postcards and email before you said five point. Yeah. Yeah. Long tail items uh, personified right there, Tommy, I would say. But you look at guys like actually like Kelly, who's killing it with 28,000 plus listings of postcards. You look at somebody like John Popeye and a whole bunch of others that sell postcards. They have insane volume. So even with that lousy sell through, they're still making good money. Yeah, that is. That actually, I mean, all jokes aside, that is really trashy and disgusting. You shouldn't be doing that. Give me a break. If you have to resort to that, your items might are probably pretty lousy. <laughs> Do what you will, sir. They were selling themselves. <laughs> a lot of people use the out-of-stock option, which won't show until they're completely sold out. Yeah, he, he talks about that all the time, actually, Kelly. You know, everybody has their own strategies and their own business models and whatever. Whatever you want to do. Whatever works. You have a seller put in something extra when thinking too much shipping? Oh, just as a thank you, sort of, because because the shipping was so expensive? That's very cool. I've done that. Have an I, Jody? I gave Jody a couple extra things than she bought because she bought so much for me on one of my whatnots. That's all here to say. Yeah, exactly. I guess so. Yeah, Tommy's the shoe maven I learned recently. <laughs> Yeah. Well, again, that just speaks to the lack of class within a, a whole bunch of people. All of these things, all these new sounding boards that we all have suddenly with YouTubes and Facebooks and all these things. It's a 
pathetic uh, reflection of what people are really like. That's what's sad to me. You know, it's always been around. It's just never been able to be everybody. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry can go out and, you know, and uh, present themselves to the world. And ever since that's become a thing, you kind of lose faith in humanity a little bit. You realize what idiots we're dealing with. Most people, sterile, most people really are idiots. Self-absorbed. Just saying, it's true. Two or three percent. So, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Very long tail, absolutely. But what's two percent of twenty-eight thousand? It's all about volume. We talked about that many times on this show. I've heard it many times on other show. Oh, you're very welcome. Good. I hope it sells quickly for you, Jody. It's nice stuff. Yes, Popeye is still definitely pop, uh, the go-to. There's another big dealer who lives close to me. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah, he knows this stuff, right? Yeah, it's awful. Oh, jeez, God forbid. <laughs> A space diaper? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to do, let me just finish this listing. Um, in case anybody doesn't know. There, I don't know what the number is, but these things time out after a certain period if you don't, um, if you don't submit them. So let me just get this in really quick. I like what was the uh, the pink term somebody kept using? Not vintage pink. Um, retro pink was that the color that we were going to use? I'll go with that, not knowing what it is. But as a as a, a space saver for now, but we're going to go with that. We're going to go with I liked the. Electric maid term. But then we have electric twice. So let's go rid of that. The electric maid. I'm going to put the word stove in there because it's kind of synonymous with range and people would certainly search for stoves. And I'm going to put sailboats. Takes us right to zero. Excuse me, my nose is suddenly stuffed up. Yeah, it will, Susan. That's true. But I just don't want to lose all this stuff and have to start from scratch, especially live on the air. But you're right. And it's a, it's a pretty decent. I think it's like 10, 15 minutes until they, they do that to you. But um, and another, for Susan, and again, for anybody else new to this, and it, this doesn't just go for print ads, it goes for everything. Always try to remember. It's hard. To, it was hard for me to, to wrap my head around this a little bit too, but you're not looking to write a sentence in your title. I say this often. Because it's a natural inclination to want to kind of do that, but you just want to have a series of effective keywords and you want to have the most important ones theoretically to the left because people are lazy and they only read the first couple. Excuse me one second, as I very unprofessionally blow my nose, but I will mute, mute this. Man, oh man, sorry about that. Oh can't even talk anymore because I'm so stuffed up. But uh, yeah, don't worry about trying to create like a, a coherent sentence up there. Like sometimes it's just a hodgepodge of, of words. But as Memphis Blazer alluded to earlier, you're just looking for words that people want to search, that people would potentially search. So you don't have to go in and try to write, you know, a thesis on everyone. Yeah, and um, that's very true, Kelly. And you know they're only going to get better with time and with uh, the... I, I give a lot of kudos to them for handling this insane amount of volume that they've suddenly experienced, which I think they had no idea was coming and probably didn't account for or anticipate. So all things considered, I think they do a great job. I've had no bad experiences yet. I had one glitch one time on one show, and it was a short-lived one. So kitchen freedom. Yes. All right. Uh, let's list this one. You can see we used every available character, which is always a good thing. But for Susan and for anybody else new, it really is as simple as that. Now, this is just obviously the listing piece. There's a lot that goes into the point where you're ready to list, which, again, I have itemized in some detail um, in my series over on my channel, Finish Print Ads series. I'm going to create similar again. Whether we list or not, I just want to I keep this ongoing thing so I don't have to keep rewriting the same stuff over and over.
But again, just for the benefit of anybody who might have chimed in recently, next weekend, 13th and 14th, over on Whatnot, just search the term Paper Palooza. I am participating in that. Popeye is participating in that. A whole bunch of really good people. Um, uh, Paper Goy from Million Dollar Peddlers will be on. Um, ben, new to you, Provisions, really good guy, is on. In fact, kudos to Ben because it was John's brainchild, this whole idea, but Ben is really run with the technical aspects of it. Like he, we created a private um, Facebook group where we could all interact with each other, an Instagram thing, and he's he's producing spreadsheets and all that stuff. He's really been phenomenal uh, with all the details, whereas it was John's like kind of process. He's like, go with it. And Ben chimed in and says, hey, I'll take the reins, and he's done a great job. So, And you will see Ben and... John and um, Paper Goy will also be on for sure next Thursday on the 11th on my channel. We're going to do a a nice little uh, live chat show similar to this, except we won't be listening. It'll just be five or six or potentially hopefully up to 10 people all talking about the event and answering questions and just talking ephemera. So that should be a lot of fun. I can't wait for that one. Personally, I can't wait. I expect to learn a lot. All right, so I'm going to save this draft. There we go. Hold on a second. Sorry, the reason I keep tilting my head, everybody, is my phone is my camera, and it's blocking half my screen. So I have to keep looking over when I have to do something on my uh, computer screen. Ben and John are also doing an introductory show. Yes, they are indeed, indeed, indeed. And that should be uh, exciting stuff. We're also going to have a, um, I think I mentioned this earlier, we're going to have like a banner or something, like a marketing banner that Whatnot has actually um, been kind enough to put together for us for this event, Paper Palooza. So you'll probably see all 23 of us or whatever the number is um, all advertising. But it'll be uniform, which is kind of cool. Like we can put our specific times in, but it's a uniform banner. I think the consistency is kind of crucial to make it an event. It's not a bunch of individuals necessarily, even though, of course, it is. It's individual sales, but... Everybody gets exactly an hour. We have a uniform. Um, the name, just the name Paper Palooza was, was really funny and cool. And uh, if you go on to whatnot and just search that term, Paper Palooza, you should be able to pull up everybody who has their show already scheduled, which I do. I think everybody does now. I didn't load up any items yet, but I will. I have the bare bones up there. So anybody who wants to go in, you can uh, bookmark it. My show, everybody else's shows. It's going to be intense. It's two 12-hour days of shows such so real life you guys are interested in ephemera want to pick some stuff up let me just tell you that's that's the place to go to it is a paper palooza it should be a lot of fun like i have 33 bookmarks already on my show that's pretty cool with uh a little over a week it's a week from tomorrow so it's going to bring a lot of attention, not only to the individuals doing the auctions, but I've, I've mentioned this too. Like, I love the idea that whatnot, um, which is kind of right now, I mean, people sell anything, people sell junk, people sell great stuff, you know, but the sport cars, the comics, um, to an extent, the music, which I dabble in with the vinyl, um, there's certain genres or whatever that are super, super popular on there. And then there's other ones that aren't quite as popular. And it's not necessarily that the items aren't popular. It might be just a matter of um, knowing about them. So this is going to hopefully the plan was to kind of bring exposure to people over on whatnot to introduce them to the whole world of ephemera and maybe turn them on to some new things and new genres and new uh, things to collect. Again, I think most people that a lot of people that buy on whatnot are resellers themselves. So it's a great sourcing opportunity for sure to go out on whatnot. I think there's clothing. I think clothing might be number one, actually. There's a lot of clothing sellers even on whatnot. And what a great way to get rid of clothes. You know, throw them in a bundle. Let me catch up with some chat stuff. That's yeah, a lot of listings. Kitchen Freedom. Did we go through this already? I'm sorry. Uh, put some drafts. Yes, we did. We did. Um, Tommy mentioned before about people showing their goodies to sell. The oh, their goodies. Gotcha, gotcha. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, save up, Kelly. hundred thousand dollars i'll get out of here really ah see the idea is catching on 
<laughs> yeah, I know that's the, the downside is that for all of us, oop, hold on, I have to charge something really quick. It can become a very dangerous place to be without question, especially if you're interested in the stuff. And, you know, the, the, like I mentioned, the only, I've only bought three, three or four things, I think, so far, why not? And one was a couple of records from Don, auction professor, and one was, oh, I have to pick out what wider. Sorry, guys, my, remember this happened last time? My stupid keyboard ran out again. It has to be charged. So let me just plug it in so I can type. But um, I've only bought a couple of records from Auction Professor and a couple of lots of postcards from Popeye. But I definitely can I can see how it could become a problem. <laughs> I mean, I love records and I could, you know, I talk about reselling all the time. I would buy a ton of records for myself, especially at some of those prices, you know. If there's not a lot of people in the room and you're lucky, you can you can make a killing in some of these auctions, whether it's to resell or just for your own personal enjoyment. Like I would buy thousands of records if I if I stayed in there long enough. But I will tell you, just like anything else, like a real store, like your eBay store, your Etsy store, or um, Discogs, or anything else you sell on, or even to an extent your YouTube channel, I I personally would want it to be a welcoming, happy, pleasant experience, a pleasant place to be. If I got idiots screaming at me and cursing and all, I'm out of there. All right, only took 10 minutes, but yes, we got the keyboard plugged in. So we should be able to type for the next few minutes. What do you guys think about that? I think that's really important about presentation and professionalism and just being a good guy, gal. Don't be an idiot. What does HM mean? So many little abbreviations. HM, it won't let me look at, I guess, whatnot on my PC. It keeps redirecting me to download the app. Popeye's preview made you sad. That was like a 40-minute preview, wasn't it? John stands to make a couple million this weekend based on previous experience. Guy has some great stuff and lots and lots and lots of it. That's why we always mention on this show volume. How important volume is in general. Yes, jewelry. You're right, Susan. Absolutely. Jewelry, um, you know what does really well? And this tugs up my heart a little. My wife and I have fanatical, you, you don't know Susan because you're brand new, fanatical Disney fans. We go to Disney constantly. We're past holders. I worked there for a couple of years with Disney fanatics. I've seen a lot of people selling uh, pins, Disney pins that have like 150 people watch, which is obscene in an auction. That's a lot of people. You're lucky if you get 20 some, uh, you know, many nights. And the, these guys have like 100, 150 people, and they're selling pins from Disney. So all that kind of stuff does really well too. I don't even know what the category is called necessarily, but I've seen that. Thank God I haven't got sucked into buying that stuff. Dawn, I saw a post notification. He said, picking the players. You saw a post notification? What is MTG mortgage? <laughs> My God, I don't know. You guys are writing. Some in ads have shipping below two dollars. Is that normal? And include included? You mean delivery confirmation? Again, to each their own. You could do free shipping if you want. Um, I have a flat shipping rule for myself that applies to my ads, which I probably go into in one of the videos. I don't remember actually. But I have another video about setting up business policies for your store, Susan, if you want to check that out. But uh, you can shift for whatever you want. If you want to charge two bucks, um, I don't pay for delivery confirmation. My, mine all just go out first class, the ads. I haven't had any, again, knock on wood, I haven't had any problems with them. But you could set up shipping to suit your needs, you know. You could either factor shipping into your pricing structure and charge free shipping, which doesn't exist. Or you can charge reasonable shipping rates, or you could charge ridiculous shipping rates, and good luck selling anything if you do that. HM equals hmm, as in like hmm, as in hmm, I wonder. Do 
Dawn is my conduit between the youngsters and the crowd and all their catchphrases that I don't know about. <laughs> She's like, let me explain something to you, old man. I'm not even old. But I feel it more of a day. What is MTG? That's another one I need help with. MTG means mortgage in my industry. Disney pin says mom's mustache. Oh, get out. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to, I mean, I tell you what, having worked there, I could tell you if it's real or not. Did you really? I have a few up in my store, actually, my eBay store, but I, I don't have enough to warrant doing a whole auction, you know? Yeah, I think that's one of the channel names. Yep. Post Mal Malone. No, I didn't say you can. I'm sorry, Kelly. I just seriously, I, some of them, I just don't know what they mean. And I feel like an idiot. I'm like trying to, to read and it's like MTG. Here we go. MTG is Magic the Gathering. A fantasy strategy card game. Okay. Along the lines of like Dungeons and Dragons. I'm familiar with that. Disney stuff sells really well. Yes. Absolutely, Jody. And you'll sell them all year round, too. You don't need to just wait till Christmas to sell them. They'll sell in August. They'll sell in January right after Christmas. They'll sell in April. Until yesterday, you had no idea who Post Malone was. I still don't know what Post Malone is. Very true, Jody. Oh, the jazz, I thought, right? Calm alone. So <laughs> I got, hmm, like, hmm, hmm. Let me think. Hmm. That, that's self explained But HM, I thought it was like, you know, Henry Mancini. I thought it was just a two-letter thing. I would do a minimum of two M's if you wanted to go, hmm. HMM -M is acceptable. HM, don't know what that means. Her Majesty, Henry Mancini. Oh, okay, no problem. So it's a card game. Hey, Jeff, welcome, welcome. Jeff chiming in at 9 o'clock. We're still on. We actually listed a couple of ads tonight, Jeff. We have a, a bunch of new people, new subscribers. Very exciting um, to bring them on board. One who's made a big impact already tonight is Susan. Also, Kim, I think, is relatively new, if not brand new. And um, a lot of fun. We listed a few ads today, trying to kind of show them the ropes. Uh, but Jeff, Jeff can talk about whatnot. Jeff bought a bunch a bunch many ads from me over on whatnot and hopefully he could speak to the quality that they were received you know good condition apparently he's a rapper uh i don't know who rap is i don't know rap is mtg was released in 93 so it's a big thing there's okay cool my son would know about that probably one of my sons is into that stuff gotcha yeah, how does one misspell hmm? Just throw me, give me one more M, Kelly. I would have been right with you. But the HM makes it looks like it's a, an abbreviation for somebody's name. But feel free to use your little uh, two lot of things. I got to get up with the times with some of this stuff. I don't mind at all. I do write in the Queen's English, you know, and try to speak that way too. Good wife and one, my granddaughter. Hey, my own. I'm half Italian, baby. Manj. It's home loke. Yeah, sure. No, hardly. But he loves uh, all that kind of stuff. Fantasy games and all that. <laughs> come on. Just go two M's. Go that extra. I know it's another precious key punch or whatever, but come on. Hmm? HM? No. HMM. Minimal. And for more emphasis, you would place more M's in there. Like, hmm, I never thought of that. You want to go like five or six M's. Would you agree with that, Dawn? You're kind of on the fence here. You're not exactly a child anymore yourself. No offense. You know? A 20-year-old would think, oh my god, she's old. <laughs> Sandlot reference. You do not write the Queen's English if you don't spell color. It's a, ah, I love to and favorite with a U. 
And you being in uh, the poor man's London, I'm sure you do write all those things, don't you? Master the G? <laughs> Again, this is the point, folks, for you who are new, where we deteriorate. We start talking. Uh, eventually, like I said, the serial conversation should be starting anytime now. You know, the lull that usually comes into play at this hour. Down south, no. Down south, no. Hmm. We say well. Well, that yeah, that's acceptable too. Sure, like well. Dan, Dawn Alol. Poor man's London. That's right. The other London. Sugar Hill Gang. Sure, I know them. Uh, the name. Uh, hip hop, a hippity hop hop. All that nonsense, right? I just sold a Sugar Hill Gang uh, single, like a, a 12 inch single on one of my whatnots. But it wasn't that song, it was some other song. Do you really? A poor man's Thames? Or Thamus? The famous Thamus? Oh, man. You know, you get a guy like a Kelly, to an extent to Dawn, certainly my kids are 20s and early 30s. Like, if you grew up with the computers and the internet, right? Like, these things that, for those of us who were not kids <laughs> when this stuff started, this whole new language that has seriously evolved with these little LOLs and all these things that if you had said to somebody years ago, would be like, what, what, what are you talking? Like I do still with some of them, you know, I guess if you grew up with it, like a, a guy like Kelly, who probably only knows internet existing pretty much at most of his life, it's just like commonplace, right? Like, just like we would say, hello, you know what I mean? I think it's, a, it's amazing to see something in, in our lifetime that has like changed language, you know, and, and created a whole new vocabulary. Like there were always like little, cool words that kids use like cool or groovy or you know that were like kind of out for a little bit or you know don't be a square jive you know all that kind of stuff like a word or two but this stuff has literally created like a whole new vocabulary that never existed with these little three letter things that nobody knows what the heck they mean and then somebody decides yeah that's a new way to say i'm laughing like <laughs> it's just crazy very very weird to watch oh, i remember you're in maine you drop off a lot of letters. Oh, do you really? Born and raised there, Kelly? Means beautiful country up there. Any ways? That's funny. <laughs> What's up, CJ? We say what? I can't. Uh, oh, ah, uh, yup. Yeah, groovy. Groovy should be brought back. I love groovy. I write groovy a lot. Yeah, that's the thing. But again, I, I, I mean, I guess they. That's how they grew up with this stuff, and it's annoying when you, when you're older and you don't know what the heck they're trying to say. That's what's really annoying. I mean, far. I'm not a prude. Like I don't care about abbreviating certain things, but like at first, it's it's ridiculous. Like they can't write a sentence. It's really true. Everything is a, is a two or three letter acronym. Is that the word? Like everything, every single word. I'm like, you can't write the, you got to write T. Like, you know, they take a three letter word and turn it into two. Like, hmm. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. That's right, Dawn. Gotcha. Yeah, Maine is beautiful. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah, they talk in shorthand. That's hysterical. You do, actually, Dawn. But I said, you're kind of on the, you know, you're not. We, we all know how old you are. So, like, you you know, when would you declare Internet really starting? Like, 96-ish. I mean, it was I know it was around before that, but where it was actually becoming popular. So, you were like, you know, you were not grown, but you were 15 or whatever, 10, 12, 15. Whereas, like, if you were born in the 90s or the 80s, well, you were born in the 80s or the 90s, you know, that's all you know. And now you're 20 something years old. So that's crazy. I guess that's what happens with everything. Yeah. And then, then, then they make fun of us. Like we don't know what we're talking about. Like if I just create a new alphabet tomorrow and make fun of you for not knowing what my alphabet is, is that cool? I don't think so. 
that's kind of what it's like. And you guys will all get yours. The quote unquote kids today, they'll all, they'll get the same thing. In my day, we used to say, hmm. <laughs> of course. I love the record. Come on, Groovy's great. Groovy should be brought back. They only give you 200 characters? That might be true that maybe people had to adapt to this these restrictions. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's even a funny term, millennial. I always thought that meant if you were born after 2000, like millennial, but it, it turns out I'm completely wrong about that, that it means like grew up. What does it mean, Dawn? Explain your group to me. Your students talk you to text a brief. Now retired and driving siblings crazy who say I need to write like an adult. <laughs> even writing the LOL, which now, of course, I get. But the first few times, I'm like, I always thought it meant laugh out. No, lots of laughs. That's how we used to say it. Lots of laughs. Like, ha, 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 lots of laughs. And then they said it's laugh out loud. But whatever, man. How about just writing? That was funny. Late on me. That's funny. Dynamite, Rutan. That's a good point, too, Jeff. Thank you, Kelly. But what's the, uh, God, I sound so ignorant. I don't, I really don't, I don't think I'm a dope, but I generally don't know. You know, sometimes you just hear terms bandied about and you just kind of hear them, but you don't really dig into what it means. What is being born 81 to 96? Why is that millennial? Millennial was 2000, right? Don't I know it? Do you guys remember? Uh, I worked, you know, Trade Center and Wall Street, so I was still working in 2000. And uh, the big thing was, um, Y2K and that all the computers are going to explode on January 1st. And we had to, I was in Manhattan and I had to stay at work until midnight with a, a select group of idiots like me that had to stay there. Biggest New Year's Eve of anybody's life, right? And we had to all stay. And, and I was right in Manhattan. I'll never forget, we could see Times Square from our building, from the window. And everybody was afraid that 12 o'clock, you know, that all the computers wouldn't work and the world was going to shut down. It didn't. I'm not even going to try to pretend what that means, Susan. No, no, I'm not. What I'm saying, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is what what does the year 81 to 96 have to do with millenni the millennium? Like, I don't get it. That you grew up in the millennium or something? What does it mean? Oh, good one, Susan. Thank you. That's a new one. Yeah, that's, a, that's what, uh, didn't Kelly just write a 81 to 96 or whatever? Like, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Yeah, why is it called that? <laughs> Correct, Rutan. Sometimes you could be both. Yeah, that's a that's a great point too. Like when what does it really mean? Yeah, exactly. Right at midnight, like I said, at work, uh, Wall Street stuff, like everybody, I mean, it was every industry, airlines, they were afraid that the planes were going to fall out of the sky. It was just absolute overkill, obviously, but we had never, it, it was still a very new thing, sort of, and nobody knew. Supposedly computers were never made to accommodate that nobody thought about putting two zero. And uh, oh my God, but there was a lot of work for the year prior. The, all of 99 was, everything was a project called Y2K, Y2K. Your computer was Y2K compatible. They had to go in and make all these changes. And I can't deny, because of all the hype, I was nervous. I was sitting there, you know, I'd been through the 93 bombing at the trade center. I was worried that things were going to, like, start exploding. And Oh, my God. But nothing happened. 96. One of my boys was born in 96. My baby. My second baby. Looks like a fighter from Star Wars. Uh, so Susan's just showing off, absolutely showing off now. I, yeah, but, I, you know, I'm having a conversation with you people. Do I need to Google everything? You're here to Google for me. <laughs> Somebody has to do it. Yeah, see, Susan's just showing off at this point. You can just make stuff up, too. Hey, Swan Picker, what's going on, man? Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. 
we're at that point now, Swan Piccolo. We just thought, you know, chewing the fat. We tried to list for a couple of minutes, but we're back to chewing the fat. All right, Susan, I'll bite. What is J? What was it? JKG. That's a whole other topic, though, isn't it? Hey now, Steve Lassie see your jokes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, guys, anybody else have anything uh, going on this coming weekend? Any uh, events you want to talk about? Any plans? If any of you guys have channels on YouTube that you want to recommend to others, I'd be happy to uh, help you promote it. They call millennials because they became adults through time. Oh, okay. Well, if you're born in 96, you're not an adult when you're four, are you? There's a case of the Google being completely wrong. Yes, we laugh at the King's English. Your only trip to New York City was the bombing 90s? The small town girl. No, thank you to New York. Look at Susan dabbling in the whole TYs and stuff. I fancied you a sophisticated one, Susan. Yeah, born and raised, worked forever, survived two attacks, and now I do eBay. JKG is joking. Okay. Congratulations, Jeff. Have a great one. Happy birthday to the... Now, that would not be a millennial if he's only 12, right? Have a good night, Jeff. Thanks for chiming in. Looking for garage sales and trying to sell a birdcage. A birdcage? Talk to us, Swamp Picker. What do you got? So Swamp Picker's going out sourcing. Any big sourcing plans this weekend for anybody? Good night, Jeff. Yep. I was there every day for years and years. Most people do JK. <laughs> like, does that save that many? C-H-O-C-K. What does it save? Like three letters or something? That's what I'm saying. Some of these things. I mean, do you really need to abbreviate certain words? Come on. I haven't choked in a couple of shows, actually. There you go, Susan. Just hung upside down the inversion. Cheetah. Oh, really? That's pretty cool. Did the blood rush to you? HD? Uh, H E A D. I'm telling you, uh, despite some lousy results earlier, Whatnot's a great place for us to source on. If you guys, I mean, if you want postcards, you can go on Whatnot. If you want records, you can go on Whatnot. Gen Z. I've heard the term Gen Z, but again, I guess, is that what's after uh, millennial? Millenniums? Holy cow, that's awesome. So I'm picking finding stuff on the side of the road. Jody has plans. List a carload of books your mom dropped off while you have company. Oh, discreetly, right? Hey, everybody, want a cup of tea? <laughs> that's called multitasking. Yeah, see? HD. Yes, 191. Uh, thank God you wrote whoop, because I swear to God, if that was another one, it was going to be sayonara, everybody. What were you trying to say, Dawn? You know what I mean? I was going to get my notepad out and say, here's another one I got to learn. 191. Don't you know what 191 is? <laughs> now, I will say, what Ansley is employing here, the smiley face thing, that's brilliant. That's technology. You don't even have to write anything. You just put a laugh instead of writing LOL. Just put a big old smile or a big old laughing thing. That I like. But JK, PW, CD, blah, 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 you know, come on. 
She can't write thanks though. She's got to write THX. See? Susan's uh Susan's groovy. She speaks the kids' language. That's probably from teaching middle school as you learn all that stuff, right? My son is a, is a grammar school teacher for about two years now. Can't even type the abbreviations. Exactly. Correct. Welcome. And you know what? I, I don't want to shock your mother's mustache, but in about two and a half hours, it's going to be Saturday. <laughs> yeah, really. The days become irrelevant at a certain point, right? All right, so we know we have at least two people. We have uh, Jody is going to be trying to sneak book listings in while entertaining folks in her home. We have Swamp Pickers going out to do garage sales. Who else? What else you guys? What is Dawn Wright doing this weekend? She's listing. That's what she's doing. Uh, groovies, like I said, groovy should be, that's one that should be just omnipresent. Groovy is a great word. Kelly's printing his orders. Beautiful. You got 20 tonight? Not bad. While you did 20 while on the show, Kelly, while talking and stuff and interacting, that's impressive if you could bang out 20 listings while participating in this uh, highbrow discussion this evening. Good stuff. <laughs> yep. See the effective use of the multiple zeros there? Uh, excuse me, zeros, O's, long time. You need to organize your unlisted to list next week. There you go. Some call it a death pile. Some call to choose some choose to call it the unlisted. That that's a good word. Just simply the unlisted. Organizing the unlisted is crucial. That's a very good point. Or the death pile or the What's the other silly term people use? Um, opportunity pile or whatever they say. Yeah. One of the reasons it's a pile often is that it's not organized. That's a great, that's time well spent. Yes, you check those are complete words. Could probably capitalize that. All I should be capitalized. Oh, yes. Cool. Be careful on that venture. It should be fun. Yeah, I don't, I don't subscribe to that one at all. To me, that sounds like a Jeff Spicoli, California surf thing. I've never said dude in my life. Personally, just saying. Yep, no reason to capitalize the L unless it starts your sentence. <laughs> a debt pile, that's interesting. I like that. Paying, if anybody is in debt, it's a good way to get out of debt is to list your debt pile. That's good, Dawn. Right? To Exactly. It's like you're literally like, you know, convulsing at that point and can't breathe and you're on, you're on your knees most likely at that point, turning bright red, sweating. Yeah, it's just not a term I've ever used in my life. Like I said, it, it evokes an image of a Jeff Spicoli kind of guy. Like a surfer. <laughs> yep. You call yours the money wall? I scroll stuff away from it. That's not a bad move at all. Check out your files this weekend. I need. See, now she's just playing with us, folks. I need change, charge. <laughs> what are we laughing at? Yeah, like a dude ranch, right? Exactly. Cowboy. It's funny, isn't it? Some, like some things are just regional. You don't realize it if you grew up in a region. You think the way you say things are the things you do or the food you eat, which we learned. Remember we learned this was a Monday show? This was a real revelation to me. Uh, Hellman's mayonnaise, you know, which I thought was the most Americana thing you could possibly have, is actually, what was it called? Best Foods 
on the West Coast. I never knew that until last uh, until Monday night's listening show when we had produced a uh, best goods mayonnaise or something. I think it was CJ. Somebody wrote and said something like, uh, it's the equivalent of Hellman's. I'm like, oh, really? Like you'll often see when we do these ads, sometimes they're really old, like if it's from turn of the century or the teens or whatever, you'll see a product name and then somebody like CJ or somebody else will do a little um, stealth reporting and they'll say, oh, you know, whatever that name was is now known as uh, Hellman's or whatever, you know, a, a more popular brand, Nabisco or something like that. So I thought Best Foods might have evolved into Hellman's, but no, no, no. It turns out that the West Coast, at least that's what we learned on Monday, they call Hellman's, um, what was it called? Best Foods or something like that. That's crazy. Something I never knew in my life. Change no R. Okay. If you know, you know. Ooh. Yeah, we could make up a million of them. How you doing, buddy? It's a hey, Marie. What's going on? Welcome. Yeah, buddy. Well, I'm saying you could just make them up at this point. Anybody could just put any sentence together, any word, and just create a you know their own homemade, which is really how they all started, right? Let's make our own one. Right, I know, and Kelly, uh, your, uh, I don't want to give it away, but I know you have another handle which features that word. Hey. Yeah, that's like a southern thing, I guess. What do you think of San Francisco, Susan? You know, it's a town I have not been to. I talk about it often with all my travels with my shows. I have not been to San Francisco. I've been to Sacramento. I've been to San Diego. I've been to Los Angeles. I have not been to San Francisco. I would love to see it. We just in the last few years got Dorothy Lynch on the West Coast. Used to have it shipped to us. I don't even know what Dorothy Lynch is. Is that a brand of something? Again, I appreciate even in the joking section of the show where we're all tired and just kind of winding down. Somebody comes in with some knowledge. I love it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. You make up your own words anyway. Granular. <laughs> and if you say it with conviction, people will just believe it. And they'll be like, oh, and they'll, prop, they'll shake their heads like they know what you're talking about. That's always kind of funny to do. That's a great word. He who likes granola. Started with okay rather than spelling out okay. Okay, your son said in text shortened okay means you are angry. You don't say. I did not know that. I remember, I know with texting, the if you use all caps, you're supposed to be yelling or something silly. As long as you don't send any bad customers your way. That's for sure. Salad dressing is a Midwest thing. Uh, what was the word you used? Dorothy Lynch. Really? Salad dressing? Okay. I have not heard of that. I'm sure it's yummy. You have been a lot and you love loved it, but I you oh you grew up there. I had to deal with men women. Oh yeah, well it's a whole lot of that's not so groovy. Yeah, I can't believe I haven't been there. Really, it's almost astounding <laughs> with all the places I've been to. And that's such a you know huge major place to go to San Francisco. Yeah, laid back people, right? That's cool. I dig it, Daddy O. How about that? The best cityscape you've seen? Yeah, it looks it looks really I mean, not to mention just the, the cityscape and then the landscape, you know, the, the combination of like mountainous terrain and the water and all that. It looks beautiful. I don't know how I haven't been there. That has to happen sometime. Need to make it out there. Uh, 
people sending me messages. How dare they? After I say, hey, send me a message, they actually do. No, that's awesome. Jive Turkey. Yeah, I just went to, uh, what was it, three or four years ago, um, a friend of, it's going to sound silly, but basically, long story short, my wife's mom used to uh, do like in-home babysitting. And one of the uh, kids that she babysat had a wedding a couple years ago. We went out to Pittsburgh. It was very nice. Yep, the bee's knees. Oh, yeah, that's that's sweet. They treated you well. The cat's me. The cat's me out, yep. Bee's knees is a very British thing. I thought they were the bee's knees. Learned how to ride the rails. And where is here now, Susan? If you don't mind, you don't have to give details, but just whereabouts would Susan Arlington, uh, Arrington, excuse me, be? I got a uh, city. I, I first looked over, I looked at Arlington. I was like, <laughs> Arrington. Why is it raining outside of my house? I just pulled up a little weather. I heard some pitter patter going on. I'm in a basement. Uh, we have a nice finished basement where I do all this stuff and uh, I can't see anything, no windows. I heard the pitter patter on the window and sure enough, I pull up the weather app and it is 80 degrees and raining at 20 to 10 at night. Not good. But thankfully tomorrow is supposed to be beautiful down at the beach where we are playing. Oh, Mississippi. Okay, cool. And you're from New Orleans, New Orleans, right? Or New Orleans. That's a interesting area in New Orleans. I have been to New Orleans many times and they're big on like, like everybody is, right? Like people say that their own town names differently maybe than other people might say them. And that's one of the Nolans. I always said New Orleans. City of New Orleans. Michelle Trout, welcome, welcome. Glad you made it just in time. We're, we're just chewing the fat, as they say. Feel free to chime in on any topic. <laughs> it's, it's a potpourri tonight. We started off with an agenda and got a couple of listings done, but... That was oh so long ago. Now we're talking about different cities. and You're not sure you ever want to live with this humidity again. Oh, yeah? It's definitely humid here in the summertime. I lived in Florida for a few years. That's a humid place, being surrounded by water. Who would have thunk that? <laughs> yeah. You came in on cross. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's all about timing, Michelle. <laughs> you never know when you chime into this station what you're going to, first words out of somebody's mouth is going to be. That's one of the fun things about it. I enjoy the conversation a lot. Elvis Week in Memphis, the locals say Death Week. Yeah, 816. Remember that well on the news? Oh, get out of here. Yeah, that's certainly a drought. You know how you're going to get out of the drought, Kelly? When the snow starts in October up there. Yeah, I would imagine if you're in a swampy area or bayou area, there's going to be humidity. Yep. I definitely get that. Hundred and fifteen is hot. Yeah, that definitely is hot. Oh, uh, because that's dry heat, as they say, right? I remember when I used to go to Vegas, they tell you it's dry heat. And the second you get off the plane, I, I went in uh, summertime several times. And you literally feel it hit you when you get off the plane, you know, like the little runway thing, not runway. What do they call it? The little thing that pulls up to the plane. <laughs> Isn't it funny how certain things I do? It's probably because I'm tired, but I can't think of the word. There's a word for that. That thing that pulls up to the plane and everybody gets off. Well, I felt it was like people had hair dryers blown in your face. The, sec the first time I went there, I was like, oh, my God. 
but it's dry heat. It's only 115. You see, I'm thinking if it's 115, I don't care if it's dry or humid, it's hot. Might be wrong. 40s at night now? Holy cow. Yeah, it's crazy. Tom Hanks Elvis movie. You know, I, I was talking with some people around here. I, I'm in Pennsylvania. I grew up in New York, but I live in Pennsylvania now. It's basically the same weather. It's not that it's like a hundred miles away. But um I literally, you know, I told you I sit down in this uh I work down here in my basement most of the day. And in the wintertime, I have like a little portable heater that I keep next to my desk just because it gets chilly down. It's a basement, even though it's finished, it's still a basement. Well, anyway, the last time or when I finally turned off the portable heater, it was the middle of May. It was still cold enough down here. There was still mornings where it was like 38 degrees on May 10th or something. It's so like to think that it's only what, two months, three months later, and in another month, it's going to be fall already is absolutely obscene. Like I have this stupid heater running nine months of the year. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. Like we're just warming up and it's almost over already. Even though really, you know, we say that it's actually only the middle of summer, almost exactly the middle of summer right now. September 21st is fall. And June 21st is summer. So we're only like a month and month and a half, right? Which is basically exactly in the middle. But it's just ridiculous how long we get stuck in this cloudy, cold nonsense. Oh, sure. In Arizona, yeah. It's a different kind of... The desert heat is a different kind of heat. That's for sure. One month of cold. <laughs> wow. You know, you say that, but again, I lived in Florida, cool, uh, cool, a few years, and it's like anything else. You get it, no matter where you live, you get accustomed to the weather patterns in the area you live, right? And your blood thins and all that stuff as you get older, which is really true. And if you get used to temperatures being within a certain range and they deviate from that. Like people in Florida, when it was, we used to joke, you know, it was like 59 degrees and they're freezing and they're wearing parkas. But, and to us, we're like, what are you crazy? It's almost 60 degrees in December. You should be doing a jig. But if you're not used to that, that feels cold to you, you know? And um, in Florida, excuse me, a couple of years when I lived there, I mean, it did get in the 30s a few times and that's not frigid or anything, but it's, you know, cold for down there. So it's all relative. Everything's relative. Or as they say in Yellow Submarine, it's all in the mind. Because Southern Heat is soupy. The Humidex. Really? Yeah, I thought it was... That's exactly... Uh, Kelly, you know, I used to think it's, it's summer, but it really isn't. If It depends on where you live in Florida, I guess. But I was in the you know greater Orlando area for several years, and it definitely wasn't summer 12 months a year. I mean, like I said, it, especially like from middle of December until early February, you could definitely have 30s several times. You had frost and stuff, which would kill all the plants. So that's not summertime. But you're right. As a general rule, of course, it's 10 times warmer than the Northeast. Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. Just like the poor Brits. Yeah, you can. Mosquitoes are the size of uh, elephants. Yeah, they say San Diego has like perfect weather for this country. The greatest number of days with sunshine, I do believe. Is that true, Memphis Blazer? Hello, Stephen. Welcome. Everybody chiming in really late. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Appreciate you coming on. We uh, came out at 6 o'clock with uh, great intent to do some listing. We did do a couple of listings. Had a lot of new people on tonight, which, again, I really appreciate all you guys showing up. I was on um, a little while this morning with Johnny on his channel and uh, gained some subscribers from that, which was really cool. And they all came over and had nice things to say. Oh, you live by the Mall of Millennia. I know exactly where that is. Very well. Right on 54. I lived in Claremont, if you know where that is, Kelly which is just west on 50, Colonial Drive. Like 20 minutes from Orlando, maybe. 
I was there when they built the Mall of Millennia. Bright and crispy. That's a cool way to put it. I can't believe I didn't know it was that cold in, in August during the 40s. That's crazy, though. Thank you, Dawn. Yes, please. Please hit the like button, guys. Just got back from Route 127 garage sales. And that would be Ohio, right, Stephen? Oh, you're very welcome, Susan. I appreciate you uh, subscribing and being part of the family here on our show. Um, yeah, have, have a ball with them. If you, do you have a bunch of magazines, I think you said you had some magazines. So now you know what to do with them. Cut them up. Check out the video series. It'll really walk you through pretty much everything you need to do. At least everything I do, which works. And um, again, if you have any questions or comments or thoughts, just let me know. Just comment in the video. And it's a pleasure to have you. Mall, mall of Millennial. When they built, uh, it's a big mall in Orlando right off of I-4. And I don't know when it was built exactly. 2002, something like that, I think. Maybe a little before that. And um, it was the bee's knees when they built it. Let me just tell you, it was the most modern looking, incredible structure. And I don't know what it's like now. I haven't been in there in years. It was probably deteriorated. But it was a co-tour mall. They had some really good stores, for, especially for Florida. Uh, Susan, if you know anybody else, please spread the word about my channel. I'm still trying to get to the lousy thousand here. We'll get to it. I'm just excited about it. About three quarters of the way there. Hope to get there soon. From Michigan to Alabama on Route 127. Cool. Elevation, yep. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it is. The humor well is definitely uh, running dry. Groovy. Not is you calling us the lousy. No, 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 no. I don't know what not is you. Not is you meaning you're not. No, not hardly, hardly. I just, I'm saying I want to get to the thousand, like the stupid number that's been staring me in the face since I started this thing. You got to get to a thousand subscribers to start getting paid on YouTube. Basically. I just want to get to that threshold. Nope. You are my beloved 738 or whatever it is. And I definitely mean that very sincerely. Love chatting with everybody. Not if, Oh, misspell. Okay. No problem. Yeah. I'm just, uh, you know, at a certain point, if you do this a while, it's like, you just want to get that over with you know it's so funny if you guys have youtube channels or even if you don't they have a series of benchmarks you have to, this for them that you have to reach to get monetized i probably said this before and the one i thought was going to kill me was um watch hours or something i forgot exactly how they word, word it but uh the the cumul cumulative amount of hours that people have spent watching your videos has to exceed four thousand hours and when i started that i used to tell uh um travis all the time when we started doing the chat shows i'm like 4,000, you know, you divide that up and you realize how many hours that really is like half a year of people watching stuff. And I was like, I'm never going to get to that, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and that I, I, I steamed past that. Like I thought that would be the one that would, you know, catch me. And I've steamed past that. And, um, it's the thousand subscribers. That's, uh, that's the last remaining hurdle for me. So hopefully I'll get there soon. Yeah, it, is. it seems like a ton of hours, doesn't it, Susan? But um, I don't know if it was by doing... It wasn't intentional doing shows to try to get hours. I mean, it doesn't always correlate to... Just because you're on for two or three hours doesn't mean people are actually watching you the whole time, right? But um, yeah, I, I smoked past that. that. That was the one I really thought would, would hang me up. And it turns out it is the lousy thousand. <laughs> Not thousand people. The number, the threshold on YouTube. Thank you, thank you, Moses. I appreciate it. Yeah, it looks like I got a, plenty of likes. I appreciate that. A thumbs ups. Of course, we can't spell mountains, so we got to go M T N S, and we can't even put Smoky. We got to take out the E. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Susan. I'm playing around. I think at this point you're doing it on purpose. Seven three six. Oh, is that my number? Thank you, thank you. Four thousand watch hour in a year. Yet, yeah, um, no, it's like um, you just have to cross over that threshold that you've. Again, cum, cum, I stumble over this word. 
the cumulative amount of hours watched on your show. Once you hit the good thing is once you hit them, you've hit them and you don't go back. Like if God, I'm sure this happens to people cause it, it does happen. Like let's say uh, that last threshold is a thousand subs, right? Let's say tomorrow, wouldn't that be nice? But let's say tomorrow, all of a sudden I wake up and I have a thousand on the button. Yeah. Hey, you're going to pop the champagne. Don't do it because you can go down a like somebody might drop off the next day and you're at nine ninety nine. But anyway, my understanding is once you've crossed that line, like you've made it, that's it. So if you drop to nine ninety three two days later, it doesn't matter. You hit the thousand. You got the ball across the goal line in the end zone. So if they push you back and you land on the five yard line, doesn't matter. You cross the end zone. So you just have to get to that. You have to get to that thousand. It is lots of hours, but like again, I've, I've smoked past that, which is cool. I know, right, Jody? It sounds like an insurmountable feat, but then I'm looking at everybody that's my, you know, look at all these people that have, you know, a hundred thousand subscribers and and do all this stuff. So I'm like, they obviously must have crossed that. But at first, it does seem like impossible. I thought I definitely thought that was going to be the one that caught me. Oh, absolutely, Kelly. Me too. I mean, I'm when I'm working, I always have something on on YouTube too. YouTube is my television. I don't have, I don't even watch television at all, like zero. Matt, live in nine minutes. Dawn with this crafty thingy. Oh, Matt's live. It's entertainment. It's the it's TV of today. You have to maintain over, yeah, right, over 365 day period, right? Over a floating 365 day period. Some kind of collage for Burning Man. <laughs> Omnipresent Dawn. She'll take care of uh, half of those 4,000. Yeah, it's like a rolling, right? Yeah. And again, I thought that was what was going to hang me up, but thankfully it hasn't. That's a good thing. But no, I just, uh, like I said, about three quarters of the way, which I'm very happy about. When you come from nothing, everybody starts at zero. So that's pretty cool. That in, it's been a little less than six months. And I certainly didn't have any time frame in mind either. So it's, I'm very, very, very happy. When you think about, like, again, starting from zero, nobody knows you, at least in this arena, let's say, right? Um, to suddenly have whatever the 736 people, it's a lot of people following you, or for, you know, for whatever reason, or watching your videos and liking your stuff. That's an honor. Like, that's a lot of people. I think sometimes it's uh, people forget that, you know, that's a 736 complete strangers at the time anyway, right? Chose to, to hit subscribe. I think that's a wonderful thing, so... Like all jokes aside, what Memphis is saying, if you call, I wasn't calling the people the lousy thousand, that's for sure. Um, I really appreciate the 736 of you who have chosen to subscribe. It's it's a it's an amazing thing. Marty, here we go with another explanation. Like I'm, uh, He's talking about Jackass Retro. He's going to the Burning Man Festival in a couple of weeks. That's cool. Dawn needs to advertise, need a moderator. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Dawn. Dawn has been a, a godsend from day one. So don't rip on Dawn. Between TV and hubby and dog snoring and me redoing titles. Now this show. Uh-oh, you're hooked. And, it, you know, <laughs> it's also funny how when people come in, you know, first impressions, they say, right? So here's Susan, brand new to the channel. And she sees this show, again, devolve to this, what we're just literally just chatting. It's not always like this, Susan. I promise you. It actually has some structure. We usually have, especially if, you, you know, you can go back and look at all the shows. They're all out there. There's a lot of them now, a lot of live shows. I never dreamed I would do so many live shows. I thought I was just going to do regular videos. But, um, you know... The, it's only fairly recently that um, we, we've started to just kind of hang out and chit-chat, which is a byproduct of having a really cool group. That's what I think. A bunch of people that just like to talk. And obviously, we do a lot of reselling talk. But we also, you know, wind up uh, we wind up going in down the road like this, talking about geography and vacation spots and food and cars and pretty much anything goes. 
Oh, did you really? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, they're funny. They were on my show. It's a great show. Had those boys on. And uh, one of those boys, paper, paper Goy. I don't even know what Goy means. I always thought it was Paper Boy, but it's Paper Goy, G-O-I, is uh, going to be participating with me and a bunch of others this coming, well, not this coming weekend, a week from, from tomorrow, August 13th, August 14th, 14th, August 14th on um, whatnot, Paper Palooza. It's true, Don. Yeah, they're good guys. Thank you, Don. It is. It really, it's a lot of fun. And now you're part of it, so have fun. Pull up a chair, Susan. We'll leave the light on for you. Has went the past 20 plus or minus years. I'm so dang happy for him. It's a wonderful gathering of mostly like minded people. It could be dangerous. Can you subscribe what this event is called? What it is? Yeah, that's exactly. On a Friday night, it's kind of like a kick your feet up and hang out thing. Oh, no problem, Swamp Picker. Thanks for chiming in. I appreciate it. Hopefully, you'll check us out on whatnot next week. Paper Palooza. But thanks for stopping in, Swamp Picker. I appreciate it. It's supposed to mean paper guy. So, is it just a misprint that he went with? I always thought it was Paper Boy, which would have been a cool name, actually. The auto, you know, guy sells paper, he's a paper boy. Paper Goy because he's a Catholic non Jewish person. Oh, does Goy have a meaning? Is that what it means? I'm sorry, I don't know. My God. And this is another funny thing. When you get into these sporadic conversations, like just look as I, I'm going to pull up a couple of comments in an, in order. Okay. Had to Google Catholic something, Glenn, Goy, Burning Man, auto incorrect. Like doesn't exactly flow. <laughs> and then I go back and I'm trying to trying to remember what we were talking about and what the corresponding comment means. Auto incorrect. He wanted to use Paper Boy, but it was taken. Then Paper Guy. Is that right, Don? Did he explain that on one of the shows? So that, that makes it kind of funny. And he's a funny guy. Music, drugs, artists, amazing light shows at the end of the nine days. Okay. There is a burn. Look at this. Goy is a Jewish name for a non-Jewish person. A structure that represents the year's gathering is set afire. Man, oh man. That's funny. You missed that show, I think. You love them. Yeah, but that's it's good to know because I never got that. I'll, uh, you know, first time I met them, uh, was was actually on auction professor's site. They, they were guests on his site, on his uh, page, excuse me. And then I met uh, Dave, Paper Guy, Paper Boy, Paper Goy, on the show too. And then we started chatting and stuff. And then they were on my show. And uh, you know, it took me a long time to realize he wasn't saying Paper Boy. I'm like Paper Goy. What is that? So that's cool to know that there's actually a uh, a reason, a rationale behind it. You wonder what Catholic meant there. Again, we have a, a combination. We have Mother's Mustache singing the this, this song of whatever this fire event is. <laughs> and then we're talking Jewish names and we're talking. Yeah, so I'm saying we're going back. <laughs> Hold on. And then we got Michelle chiming in with her love for the peddlers, which I understand totally. A structure, yeah, that's what I'm trying. What is a structure that represents something is on fire? Great food, music, attire, a lot of super fine sugar sand. Man, it sounds confusing. Where is this held? What what state of the union would this be in? I gotta keep up. It's tough. You gotta multitask in this chair. Let me just tell you. I think Michelle's on to something. Let's just go. I don't even remember talking about how did what did that even when did we talk about cross dressing? Michelle chimed in with and said, Hey, I entered a cross dressing. I don't even remember that coming up. 
man, I got to watch my own replays. God, I wish Memphis plays. That'd be awesome. Put them into category. That's a great suggestion, actually. Drag and drop. I could build my own thing, you know. Uh, Paper Goy, check. Name for Jews, check. Burning stuff in Nevada, check. Canada, just a, a zone category. Canada. Black Rock, Nevada. See, envy is unacceptable because I know that means Nevada. <laughs> San Fran, remember? Yes. Kelly with a now a, a, a succinct. Of course, he's got to abbreviate YouTube though. Burning Man is a big festival thing in the desert. YouTube has some videos on previous years. It's interesting. Are you, are you being polite there, Kelly? I'm intrigued enough that I will probably go to YouTube. I don't know if I should. Or never mind, what, NV? <laughs> Wouldn't that be NM, if anything? Interesting is a word. YouTube G's. Oh, my own. That's a regional expression. Look that up on YouTube. My own. Me too, Michelle. I'm gonna have to check out what this uh what's this all about. Nevada, you say, huh? You said and um Timon's mustache, music. Is it like concerts, like actual famous people go there, or is it just like you know, new age hippies all hanging out with their acoustic guitar singing songs? There you go. Mad Max attire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is it like a Woodstock sort of thing like that's repeated? Yeah. Is it a gig? Right. Is it like a big... Uh... I'm just asking. I'm. A, I'm. A, I don't know anything about it, Memphis Blaze. I'm just saying. Seriously, is it like a concert? Like a, because I you said music and drugs. I mean, that's Woodstock. Is it like a festival? Is that the word? Is it like a a concert festival? Yeah. See, I'm not alone in my thinking. P H S. Some known DJs bands definitely perform. Okay. Cool. Cultural appropriation in their attire. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's just like a music festival. In Nevada. Sounds good to me. But everybody's saying it's interesting, so it must be... Uh, must be very interesting. Naked people, sure. There you go. California, uh, what was the concert that they used to have in California? Susan, who's a groovy person. Remember the California Jam, right? They used to have the Eagles were on California Jam and Heart and the Us Festival. I remember the Us Festival. You guys ever see? I saw Van Halen on the Us Festival. Diver Down era, Van Halen. But what they are wearing is usually very call. Just kidding. I'm sure that's just a simple little misspell. Well, I'll tell you what. If I didn't have a show to get up and do, fully clothed, by the way, in multiple costumes, I'd probably spend some time tonight checking out this uh, freaky little gathering. I'll save that for a rainy day, though. To be honest, I never thought Matt was into that, but good for him, I guess. Oh, Kelly also, and look at this. I appreciate that, man. He's educating as well, see? And not in a Weisenheimer sort of way either. 
Anyone that goes should drink or eat anything that's offered to them. Uh-oh, really? A couple years ago, I went back and watched the complete live eat. Oh, sure. I can't believe how long ago live aid was now. That really feels eerily recent sometimes, you know? Ah, gotcha. This is a thing called California Jam. You could look that up on YouTube probably too. Sure, live aid was cool. Oh, we got a Weisenheimer. You loved it, Michelle? What'd you love? Again, because we're all over the place. Love Live Aid. Loved California Jam. Love Sunfest or whatever this thing was called in Nevada. The Queen movie made you interested. Yeah, it was cool. I videotaped the whole, well, at least what they televised. I have on video. I remember that. I taped them all with all commercials and everything. Yes, good point. California was always jamming. Yeah, Live Aid was good. I was let down being... Uh, everybody knows I love the Beatles, of course, but Zeppelin is my number two. And that was the first reunion after Bottom died only a few years before, and it was atrocious. They were uh, nervous, and Mr. Page was not in a, a great form. And you had Phil Collins and the guy from... Uh, who was the other drama? Who sings Ghostbusters, the song? <laughs> I can't remember anybody's name anymore. Uh... The drummer from his band, anyway, played drums with Phil Collins, and it was a train wreck. So that's a kind of embarrassing moment for me. Even though it was great to see them come out, it was embarrassing. The performance itself was awful. Plus, the TV feed, audio-wise, was terrible in a lot of the performances. But yeah, Queen obviously put on a spectacle. Oh, you had a Live Aid shirt? That's cool. Blue Kool-Aid. My defense, I'm using working when he does his ship, so now I have it on mute, so I just rely on the comment section. Yep, I taped it too. <laughs> you got California Jam, and you got Hansley Jam. Doom, do, 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 do. Ray Parker Jr., thank you very much. Yeah, but, uh, and what was his band called? Radio or something? Uh, the drummer from his band plays with Phil Collins during Live Aid, during the Zeppelin thing. And they're like, and Phil Collins is a heck of a drama. Anybody like early Genesis? I'm talking Peter Gabriel Genesis. Phenomenal stuff. If you guys haven't heard, unbelievably good. So different than the Genesis that they became later. Poppy. Yes, Justin, Ray Parker Jr. Was he in a band called Radio? He was in a band before he was Ray Parker Jr. And the drummer for that band <laughs> played with Phil Collins. Turns out, but I just can't remember the name of the, I thought it was called Radio, maybe something like that. Everybody chime in with Ray Parker Jr. Thank you. Doesn't he seem... Oh, no. Uh, God, it's going to kill me. And I'm not Googling anything because I'm performing right now. No, I have like three different computers going. And um, what the heck is the guy's name? I'm sure you can find it. Anyway, look at who the drummer was for uh, with Phil Collins during the Zeppelin reunion. At Live Aid. Radio. Yes, it was radio. Yep. Thank you. I don't know what the drama's name is, but you could look that up too. Who's the drama for radio? What happened to Ray Parker Jr.? Isn't it amazing how certain people are like a flame and they just burn out? Had his moment in the sun.
We have breaking, well, potentially breaking news in the uh, Palooza world, but I'm not going to say anything yet. That's good news. Phyllis Lita has just chimed in with some information, which I am not at liberty to uh, reveal yet, but we will. It should be fun. Even my wife is ripping on me at this point. You know, it, it's so funny. Uh, my wife is nine years younger than me, right? So as you get older, it's not that big of a deal. But, you know, when you're kids, obviously, if like you think that, you know, when you were 20, she was 11, you know, something like that. So like when we talk about things from years ago, she'll, being a Weisenheimer, she'll say something like, I was 12. And, I'm, you know, it's just like a funny thing that we have going back and forth. She literally just put um, one of those little, uh, again, I'm sorry about names, but on Facebook, when you put those little like sayings and stuff, they have a word for that. Well, she just put, this is scary, folks. Ready for this? Do you realize that 1970 and 2022 are as far apart as 1970 and 1918? Think about that a minute. It really is messed up. So she like, and like she's like, sorry, my old man, with a little wink. <clears throat> that is scary, though. You have coffee at your grandpa and his brother every Saturday morning. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Google is a crutch, man. Let me just tell you. Again, for those of us who remember very well pre-Google, pre-internet, it's a crutch, but it's also an incredible tool. You know, you didn't, when we would have these moments when we said, what do you call that? There wasn't an easy way to just go, you have to go to the encyclopedia or, you know, or actually remember things. Remember those days? It's crazy. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Hansel. It's a pleasure to have you on. A lot of fun. Philip Bailey. Yes. Yeah, he did. Uh, Easy Lover, right? They're still using track phones, so they rely on my technology. There you go. They go to the kid for the info. That's a good thing. You're in a privileged spot, actually, to help him out, to navigate these new waters. And who knows, Kelly, when you're a grandfather, you might have, God only knows what's going to be around then, right? And you'll be relying on your grandkids to help you. When they say, Grandpa, you just get in this pod and you go to Mars. What's the big deal? And they call you know it a glues blap. Don't you know what a glues blap is? You'll see. That's what happens, unfortunately. It's crazy. Yeah, he's he's hurting now. Poor guy. Don't be surprised. God forbid. But one morning we're gonna hear pretty soon that he's probably no longer here. Hip problems and nerve damage, and my God, he's a disaster. Did you guys? Any of you guys watch the videos of those last few shows? It's just they tuned all the songs down. He couldn't sing, and he had a really good voice. Yeah, isn't that sick, Michelle? Absolutely crazy. Yeah, it was a couple of years before that. So I understand. Oh, yeah, she loves that. You like the little, uh, the dig, huh? I know, right, Susan? Your boyfriend's five years young, yeah. Like I said, it's no big deal when you're, you know, 40s and 50s. Who, who cares? Nine years, not. But it does come into play with recollect, like, you know, it's a perfect example. Live Aid. We've talked about that. Uh, we just passed July 13th was the anniversary. And I said something like, oh, my God, it's over 30 years since Live Aid. And then she chimes in with I was in fourth grade Live Aid. And you're like, what? You know, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that, where the nine year thing becomes big. When you think of something that to you seems, you know, pretty recent or whatever. And she says, I was in diapers when you did this. Or I was 11 when you, uh, you know, it's crazy. Ollie Brown, good work, Stephen. Stephen. Yeah, I know that. I know how that goes. Because again, it's something that's really new in the grand scheme of things, especially when you're older like that. It's it's. And uh, I I hope that we all don't get stubborn. I'm, I guess it's just a, a byproduct of aging. But you might get stubborn to a certain extent and not even want to learn about this stuff because it has no bearing in your life. Never has for eighty years. Why now? Am I going to pick up an iPad? You know what I mean? I can understand that philosophy to an extent. And maybe we'll all be there too one day. So I don't want to disparage anybody. I don't even know that you song Jack and Joe. Or if we just pull up the simple, there's got to be a Google for this. Put up Zeppelin Reunion 1985, a Live Aid Led Zeppelin Reunion drummers. Phil Collins and that's what we need to do. 
Right, Jody? You just keep laughing. And then Jody's always there smiling and laughing. He's an old man and watching. Do you have the same, uh, do you have a similar, a similar age gap? Oh, see, that's awesome. And then you got people like that, right? That dive into it. That's cool. Yeah, it could be a very liberating thing when you, if you're older and you get into internet stuff at this age, it's a, you know, that's what they sell it on. Anyway, you can, you could sell it to grandmas. Hey, it's a great way to keep in touch with me when I'm not home, or it's a great way to say hi to your daughter. You know, it really is. So I think if they get past that initial, it's not really stubbornness. It's probably uh, fear. They don't want to feel stupid learning some new thing that, you know, taking over the, the world. Yeah. Oh, no, I am quite technical. I'm actually an IT pro. I really am. I got paid good money to do IT stuff for a long time. I build computers. I fix computers. I help everybody. I'm extremely savvy. I just don't know acronyms for things. <laughs> oh, my God. You're almost exactly like me and my wife. That's hysterical. She's 45, I'm 54. But she's going to be 56, and I'm going to be 55. Still winds up being nine years. Whose channel? Again, I'm missing something. Or vice versa, right? A big reason I don't add peeps, I guess that means people, is because she decided to tag me in hundreds of baby photos. Ah, uh, yeah, that could be a bit much. You know, it's a fun, just uh, Kelly, again, I'm not, like you said, don't plead God Almighty, don't compare me with a kid in the 2000. But uh, my youngest baby just turned 19, so she was born in 03. And uh, when she was born, like was basically exactly when like the new digital cameras came into play and everything. So she's always upset because there's no pictures of her. And it's really because, well, you know, I'm saying a real photograph, not the millions of pictures that everybody takes with phones nowadays. Even, even that, just to get off on a, to get up on a soapbox one more time. People that can't appreciate the value of a photograph, right? Like we used to take a photograph, you'd pose for a photograph. It was a scarce thing. You'd take like, and nowadays with the phones and everything, we could take millions and millions of meaningless pictures. Well, anyway, my youngest daughter being only 19, she's always like, uh, she feels put off slightly because we have baby books and all the stuff with the kids when they were little and it's photographs. But my little girl was born kind of right when we started getting into the digital camera stuff. And also like, she has almost no actual pictures and she's always down about that. And I said, it's because you were born right when they kind of, Went out of fashion, if you will, you know. You probably could, Dawn. Yep, even Dawn laughs at that. You are three months older, hubby. My first husband was 15 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, a little closer, right? I mean, nine isn't 15. It's enough to be a, it's a difference, you know, again, only when you think about you know, relativity, like when you go back to things like that. But on a day-to-day -day basis, we're not walking around saying, do you realize you're nine years young? No, absolutely not. Kill us. She's a big girl. But she's still my baby. All on iPad. Yeah, and isn't that crazy? Twinst, what? Oh, it's the name of a YouTube channel. They grew up in a strict church background and did listen to rock and pop music. Fun to watch their reactions. Okay. My grandma's had well over 100K actual photographs of the family, but she won't let anyone see them until she dies. We've managed to see a few. Oh, my God. What? She's holding the all the photos hostage? That's messed up. Yeah, that's actually a really cute idea, Dawn. That's what uh that's kind of what Dawn said too. Yeah, I have a uh, 
trying to think exactly. Uh, probably an endless amount of the digital pictures, you know, but even then not so many when she was little, little, like a baby, baby, because I didn't even, I mean, I didn't even get a cell phone until Oh five. And the only reason I got a cell phone was because we moved to Florida and I needed one for a job. I had started, I didn't need one, but I, it would be convenient to have one. And then actually surprisingly, I did a lot of weird things. I worked in Disney in Florida. I worked at sprint in Florida briefly. And it was right before it was in 05, 06. So it was right before the iPhone came out. It was just regular phones, but people were texting already. But I remember thinking at the time, like, who wants to text? It was like, it took 25 minutes to write the, you know, hi, how are you doing? I'm like, just pick up the phone and say, hi, Ma, how are you doing? Why are you texting? And then when the iPhone stuff came out, it was a lot easier to, to use the, the screen or whatever. But I remember thinking texting was like going backwards. Like, how stupid is this? And, uh, well, my point was going to be, so I didn't get a cell phone till 05 and, um, and you really couldn't do pictures. Could you do pictures? I don't even remember, but until the iPhone esque stuff came out or seven or eight or nine is when we started getting phones that had, you know, decent cameras and all. So by that time she was already, you know, five or six or seven. So there, there is definitely, I, I, I hate to admit it, but there is a gap with my one baby girl because she just was born right at that transitional period where I don't, I don't remember where the heck I have, like whatever digital camera I had when she was little, no idea. So that's kind of a sin. That's technology gone awry right there. <laughs> that's a really good idea though. Yep. I used to take typewriting lessons in school. My mom was a great typewriter. She used to use a dictaphone. She was a secretary. She could type up a storm. Oh, she doesn't want anybody to steal them. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I gotcha. Yep. My grandparents grew up. Um, well, my grew up. My my dad's parents raised kids during the Great Depression and World War II and everything. So they're of a generation. I mean, they both passed, unfortunately, now. But um, my grandfather was still around. Didn't die till 03. And he was in as well into his 90s. So I remember him talking all about that. It's true. You, you really do learn to appreciate things a lot more and take care of things. And another little factoid here. My dad is one of 15 children. So my poor grandparents, uh, again, raised kids during the heart, like before the Depression, during the Depression, and into World War II. 15 of them. And my grandmother stayed at home. As you would have to have somebody stay at home with 15 kids. You know, it was over a period of 20 years or whatever, but still during some a very rough 20-year period. Genealogy, tons of research, but won't share it with anyone until it's finished. <laughs> Genea yeah, let's hope not. Genealogy is a rolling uh, thing. Uh, don't even talk about arthritis, Susan. That's my thing. I have, uh, and I'm a musician, as we talk about, and I play guitar all the time, and I play keyboards, and uh, I'm getting really bad. I have, I've had arthritis in my back for years, unfortunately, and I'm starting to get it really badly in my fingers and my hands. And I got sciatica, which kills when you do long drives. And all I do is drive. So falling apart, no doubt about it. It's awful. So now we're into the woe is me segment of this, of the show where we all complain about our various ailments and maladies. That's, that's natural and normal. I led the pack already, whining about arthritis. Not fun. And literally nothing you could do about arthritis. That's the devastating part. There's nothing you could do. I take a leave. Um, there's a little plug for a leave. Um, for like muscle, um, again, with the shows and stuff, it's probably the most strenuous thing I do. But it is strenuous, believe it or not. All the setting up. I take a leave for that because my back is just crippled from arthritis. And... Um, but there's really nothing you could do for arthritis. It might numb the effects slightly for a abbreviated period of time, but it's, and it also only gets worse. It's not going to ever reverse. It just keeps getting worse and worse. So F arthritis hard. Yeah, it's definitely a variety show, Susan. Again, this is, you're, you're witnessing a one of a kind tonight. We're shattering records. First of all, we have shattered the record. We are now at four hours and 26 minutes on, on, TV, I was going to say, on uh, this show. The previous record was just a couple weeks old. was four hours. And we are at a solid four hours and 26 minutes. So thanks to all of you for hanging in. 
all night. I agree, Don. But it's another one of those things where you can't keep using it because it has long-term damaging effects to your liver and all this. It's like there's a gotcha in everything. Isn't there? It's a sin. Why can't somebody come up with something that actually makes arthritis go away or makes it and doesn't, you know, cripple you or kill an organ in doing so? Say is an say say I is that a real word or I'm misspelling something again? Is an evolutionary change happening? Oh, get out, really, Don? Really? A leave? I rarely ever share anything that's ailing me physically or mentally. I do not share too much about me personally. I'm God. Oh, I understand. I'm fooling around. I'm just saying I'm whining about, you know, pain. Pain stinks. You never feel we were on that long. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, Jody. And it's so funny. I told my wife, I said, you know, because, again, we have a big show tomorrow. Uh, it's not that big. But the good news is it's only like an hour and a half ride, which is really nothing. I drove uh, – I even talk about, did I talk about this on Monday? Did a show in, uh, down in Virginia last weekend took, it was 16 hours of driving round trip. It should not have been 16 hours. It's, it really is about a six hour ride each way, but due to traffic, uh, disasters and all that stuff, it took 16 hours of driving. And I'm, I was reeling from that for a couple of days, but, uh, I'm just whining about my own physical maladies. Like I said, arthritis stinks. Oh yeah. Cool. Cool. Susan, um, you, you chose a great night to come in. No, no, no. I'm not asking for anybody's personal details. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I think we're just kind of as a group saying, you know, don't, don't these things stink and it, it stinks to hurt and arthritis stinks. And, you know, see above text. You missed it. Oh, uh, Memphis. A text from you or a post from you, whatever the word is, a comment from you. Someone did a study. Oh, I got you. Are you talking about this? Someone did a study due to texting old people use their index finger to push a button. Young people, it's their thumb. Okay. Is that what you're referring to? Some people say alfalfa, alfalfa tablets. Don't You don't say. Man, I can appreciate that. Yeah, it, it just shouldn't have been that long, Susan. That was, you know, I talked about this on Monday. It's about expectations, sort of, right? If I do this for a living, you know, for many years, I love travel. I actually love traveling. My wife and I drive to Florida, which is about 18 hours from my house to Disney, many, many times a year, right? Have been doing for, for decades. Not a problem because it's about the expectation. I'm driving to Disney. It's going to take 18 hours. You kind of gear up for it. You sleep previously, hopefully. You take some leave uh, proactively, you know, to avoid paralyzation while driving and i drive straight through i don't stop so we're driving 18 straight hours down to disney right but i'm i'm expecting that but when you know you do your googling and whatnot and your uh, map questing or whatever about how far does it take to get from my house to uh williamsburg virginia well you don't say it's supposed to be a five hour and 37 minute ride like okay so my expectation is somewhere between five and a half and six hours but when that's five and a half six turns to eight or nine oh my god it just makes it so much worse because you're expecting a six hour drive and kind of, um, you know, preparing yourself accordingly for that. So it's a lesson I should have learned long ago, but you can never account for traffic and construction. And Virginia is just a train wreck of a state to get through every single time. Northern Virginia, DC area until you get to like Fayetteville, not Fayetteville. Um, that's North Carolina until you get to Fredericksburg, I should say, sorry then it usually clears up a little and we went down to Richmond and then we had to make a head out East to the coast. Almost. It's like equidistant between um, Richmond and uh, Virginia beach. Ansley naproxen wasn't available until Oh nine. Wow. Over the counter. Oh, now we're talking thunderstorm. Sure. Right. Bird finger. <laughs> You drove straight through from here to San Fran in 30 hours. Holy cow. Yeah. You can type with both thumbs on your phone. Mom uses her index finger. Sure. <laughs> because you're all thumbs, right? Sorry, I'm all thumbs.
Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing either. And that's what matters, isn't it? 18 hours from here to Disney, you're dreading that drive next year when we move there. When you move there. Oh, but at least that's a one and done, right? You're going to move there. Yeah, when I moved to Florida, my God, I and I drove. I was the only driver. I had to drive a U-Haul or whatever. We had a um, Ryder or something like that truck. What's the yellow truck? Was it Ryder? I forgot. But um, man, oh, man. And the trucks, they put a speed cap on them of like 55 miles an hour. You can't exceed that. So it just made a long ride. It probably took me like literally like 28 hours to get there or something. Awful. You used your phone. You used your thumbs to text when phones had buttons. When phones had buttons? Oh, you mean like a, a keypad, right? Kelly relies heavily on autocorrect, and he can't spell rely. No, I'm only kidding, man. And he doesn't capitalize his eyes. <laughs> no. No more grammar police stuff. Just having fun. Your above was a voice to text. Was it garbled? Dawn properly using a comma before addressing the name. I like that. You knew phobe. Penske, correct, Kelly. Thank you. It was a Penske truck, yes. Yellow and black and blue or something like that. Yeah, that phobe will get you every time. <laughs> See, sometimes, sometimes you come up with new words. CJ, you still with us. What's up, man? Penske. I think it's an E at the end, but whatever. With with she cabin full with she cabin full inventory could never move. Yes, I got you, Dawn. The storms didn't get to us, but it's raining here, if anybody cares. You can see the lightning in the distance. Not one drop of rain. Oh, that's crazy. Rely. Uh, oh, uh, who, Kelly? I rely heavily on autocorrect. Gotcha. He did, he did. When I write for when I write an email for work, I have to reread it several times to make sure I didn't leave out any words. Oh yeah. Yeah, don't don't be don't be. That that's really good English. Here I am, you know, evoking the king's English, queen's English. I said, don't be. Uh it's frowned upon in business, certainly. If you write an email, I wouldn't be writing GTG, you know. You gotta write, you gotta write. You had a little thunder the other day with a few drops of rain. Are you guys experiencing some drought uh, conditions, Justin? No, nobody is, Kelly. You do wonderfully. 28,000 listings. Yeah, that is a good idea. You have a shed cabin she... Oh, I got you. Okay. They say she shed or whatever. Yeah, that's another new thing. A she cabin of inventory. Yeah. That would be, uh, you'd need a couple of Penske's, right, to fit all that. Yeah, moving. What do they say? It's one of the most traumatic events, supposedly, that you could possibly go through. Divorce, uh, um, something else horrible, and moving. I suppose they like some of the most strenuous, emotionally and physically strenuous things you could possibly do. It rains October to July 5th. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. And where are you, Justin? I don't know. Have we, we, we've pretty much nailed down most everybody's location in this chat. I don't remember if, and I apologize if you mentioned it, I forgot, but we got Pacific Northwest. We got Mississippi. We got Canada. Oh, Canada. We got, who else we got? Those are the ones that, that come off the top of my head. Oh my God! Of course, yeah. Memphis Blazer with the yeah that that goes without saying. But isn't moving supposedly one of the? It's up there. I think it's like up there in the most traumatic things or something. About an hour north of Portland. Oh, very cool. Oh, so it's still early over there. My goodness, it's twenty to eleven at night over here, and I went on at six o'clock. <laughs> we are pushing five hours. 
three and a half of which have been complete nonsense, but the first couple are fairly constructive. You filled all available space. Yeah. Deep in the heart. That's right. She's in Texas. Michelle's in Texas. Two, a perfect two acres house about PD off paid off, I guess, cheap count county instead of country. No reason to ever move. Awesome. Susan has found Nirvana. Kelly is in Canada. It's up to her if she wants to reveal. 737. 737. No, Jody, it will never get that. And I'm like, him. Dawn is in southwestern Ontario. Carl is near Ottawa. Is it Ottawa? Or o yeah, it's Ottawa, right? It's not Ottawa. Is Ottawa the... Here's a naive question. That's the capital of uh, your fine country, Ottawa? Not if you keep uh, listening to this nonsense, Jody. Carl. Carl was on earlier. He might still be lurking, as they say. If you look at a map of where Dawn lives, it's basically the United States. Like it's it's such a joke the way that they uh, cut off countries sometimes, like the the borders and stuff. She's she's like right there. <laughs> Dawn, you're actually very close to uh, Million Dollar Peddlers, aren't you? You're really like a close ride. I saw the map. I couldn't believe it when you had said we were joking. She said something about the weather conditions or something and. I said, oh, no, we're not getting any rain. And she says, oh, well, Million Dollars Peddlers is. And I looked at the map, and they're like practically neighbors, but it's a different country. It's crazy. If you want to get a dose of that, go to Europe. What well, countries are the size of our states? <laughs> I said Ottawa Collect. Okay. Yeah, what a, what a naive. I knew it was. I don't even know why I asked that. I sound like a fool. The sun doesn't fully set until 945. Wow. Time for a night snack, Cajun coffee, and good Hallmark movie. Uh, thank you so much for joining, Susan. And despite the shenanigans, I've said shenanigans like 18 times. I'm tired. Um, last couple hours are just fun, but... I really appreciate you uh, subscribing. I hope you see some value in this channel. Hope you check out, get into your print ads, check out the videos. Um, I'd be delighted if you want to show up next week on the uh, whatnot auctions. You could definitely, if you're interested in this, pick up some really good ads on the cheap and uh, get yourself started. So thanks again, Susan. It's been a pleasure. Hope you had fun. You have colleagues on your team in Montreal and Quebec. Cool. I've been to Montreal. I've been to, um, what was the town out west? I mentioned it once. Uh, Montreal, Toronto, we played, which is really near Dawn. And um, oh my God, there's a really pretty Edmonton. I think it was Edmonton. I was out west. Or was that Midwest? I don't remember. I don't know that much about Canada, but it's interesting when you learn. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's all right. Canada provides a shade for the U.S. Yeah, I, I left that one slide, too. I don't know, but it's probably... Uh, I don't know. Got something in it? <laughs> okay. Very good, Susan. Yeah, how have you not been to Quebec? Come on. Good night. Have a great night. Thanks again. We'll be back on a Monday, 7 o'clock. America's hat. That's a good way to look at it. Susan's still with us. Good. What, I'm glad you're here. Um, is there, how would you describe the flavor of Cajun coffee? What what distinguishes it? I fancy myself a, a coffee connoisseur of, of sorts. Big fan. I'm just, I've never heard of that either. Like, what makes it Cajun? Is it spicy coffee? 
Does it have catfish in it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Funny thing, it's only an hour less when it drops Toronto. That's the Rochester. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that is crazy. So I'm saying, I couldn't believe how close you were. I didn't realize that until I saw the map. I was like, holy cow. You're in Maine. It still takes you six hours to get up there. Are you in Southern Maine? A spoon stands up. Oh, strong. Okay, cool. I like that. We drink espresso. Um, I don't even. I say coffee, but it really technically it's espresso. Every single day. Otherwise, I'd never be up at ten forty-two p.m. But I don't sleep much, unfortunately. <laughs> It's mud, huh? Really strong. Black tar with uh, milk in it. And how does one, Susan, don't mean to keep you from your uh, your coffee, but how does one serve a Cajun coffee? Do we put cream and sugar in it? Do we just black? What do we do? What's the move to properly drink a cup of Cajun coffee? <laughs> oh, very Southern. Okay. Old Orchard Beach. Very nice. I am not familiar with Old Orchard. Where do we go in um, Portland? Portland, Maine. Yeah, me too. Kawawa fee. I'm not sure if the strange look was. Strange look by who? Me? No, those, those are uh, abbreviations. For, I was trying to, in my head, say, what does NS mean? Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is beautiful really beautiful coastal you get it your son dates a girl just over the border in canada awful during lockdown oh my god yeah that must have been terrible <laughs> oh no Use cream, but some black coffee or with sugar. With beignets. Oh, my God. Those little donuts. Yeah, I know. She was about to go the way of uh, somebody else. <laughs> uh, anybody else feeling punch drunk at this point? Hope there were some positive takeaways from tonight. Um like I said, we started off with a really good show, believe it or not. We did get a couple listings up. And um, I think Susan was the only one that was at least admitted to be brand new to it. So uh, <laughs> you're welcome. All right. Have a good night, Susan. Thank you very much. So for Susan's benefit, I'm glad we got those couple of listings up. I know it's a, a drop in the bucket, but we do have a whole video series about it. Pretty extensive one. Yeah, I really do need to get to bed. I don't know what I'm thinking here. The good news is, you know why? Because I'm laughing at it. Because I don't have a six-hour ride tomorrow, thank God, or an eight-hour drive. I only have an hour and a half. And even if with traffic it's two hours, it's okay. Now, we talked about expectations. If my hour and a half ride turns into a five-hour ride, we got problems. We got problems. Good night, Susan. Dawn, I, I think I'm going to listen to you. Four hours to Holton. <laughs> That's still it's healthy hike, though. There is a positive. You have to sift for it. <laughs> if my only my kid would give me a shout out. We only have one main highway in the state. Wow. What was the thing we got? Uh, is a caribou that are, that are kind of indigenous to there? It was a caribou. We got it like a uh, a sticker, like not a bumper sticker, but like a magnetic thing. I think it's a caribou on there. And it says M-E. So that was kind of funny. Big creatures, if I'm saying the right word. Or a moose, big old moose. I had never seen one in my life until Maine. Yes, that's what I said. Is it a moose or a caribou? What's a caribou? Don't write. You're from Canada. What's a caribou? 
even though you're probably closer to Florida than uh, Edmonton. A bigger moose. Bigger than a caught. Yeah, big old creatures. Absolutely. I thought it was a caribou, but it probably is a moose. <laughs> is that right? Okay, cool. Like we're talking like Alaska for uh, a caribou? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think Dawn's right. And uh, I'm sure at this point, everybody could probably do something else with their time than sit here and talk, just, you know, distinguishing the difference between caribous and uh, mooses. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming in tonight. It's been a lot of fun. Hopefully, like I said, all kidding aside, hopefully uh, we learned a little something at least the first hour or so. I'll be back on Monday with Travis. Thank goodness. I'm excited about that. 7 p.m. on Monday. And then a special Thursday edition next week. Time, we will figure out. 6 or 7 o'clock with uh, John, Popeye's Postcards, and at least four or five other guests. That should be a lot of fun talking about the big event over on uh, whatnot, Paperpalooza. Take a place Saturday and Sunday. Shattered the record putting. Uh, putting. See, when you, when you start saying putting instead of putting, it's time to go to bed. But, um, yeah, uh, the previous record has been shattered by some 48 minutes. Thank you very much. Last uh, week ago or two weeks ago, we did four hours. We are only 12 minutes, which is tempting for me to stay to five, but I'm not going to do it. 12 more minutes, we would be at the five-hour mark. So that's that's uh, crazy. Good night, CJ. Good night, Jody. Good night, Mother's Mustache. Yes, it's a new record. Yeah, don't, thank you. Whoever remains, whoever's still conscious at this point, Please do hit that like button. I will see everybody Monday night. I can't wait uh, to get started. Next week's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see Travis. We're going to finally talk about his first uh, whatnot experience a couple weeks ago now. We'll be talking up Paper Palooza a lot next week, so look for a lot of um, marketing material going out around that. And uh, hope everybody has a really good weekend, a safe weekend, a fun weekend. Enjoy the summer. We still have a whole month of summer, a month and a half of summer, actually. That's not to say the heat might not be on another month, but we still have a month and a half of summer. So enjoy your time, everybody. It's been a lot of fun for me, too. Have a great night, everybody, and I will see you on Monday.